jokes uh, someday. I'm already annoyed. I'm in I've a, been I'm here in a bad three mood. minutes and I'm already annoyed. Yeah. Oh, I, oh. I'll bring back Claire, I tell you. No, it's not his fault. It it's is. the whole place. The library's shite. I tried to go. Oh, God. I had to go, I had to, go chill, to Capital chill, chill. Library. Uh, Oh, chill, 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 that, chill. I had to go to Capital Library to get a couple of records I wanted, right? Place is falling apart, the email's not working. It's so shoddy, he's had two weeks off. Oh, my God, they. I mean, it, they, I really, they might as well bulldoze this, honestly, because mm. for all the, you know. It is ludicrous. And uh, we get paid peanuts. You get paid, do you? <laughs> 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 oh, and it really annoys me, they have to fight, oh, anyway. Anyway, just calm down. 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant Hello. and Carl Pilgerson. Carl, you're back. All right. How was it? What, the holiday? Yeah. Uh, well, it wasn't our form, was it? Because my dad was in, uh, was in hospital. Oh, but he wasn't- He wasn't during the holiday. Not during the holiday, though, was he? You came back from holiday and then found that out, didn't you? Yeah, but it happened when I was on holiday. Did yeah. you know that, though, when you are on holiday? No. Because I didn't take my phone with me. Well, that's well, the weird question. thing is, yeah. I got- I got a feeling. Okay. When I was sat there, because it normally happens last What was the nudie speech, was it? When I first went away to- You saw that old fellow with his packet out. When I went to Ibiza, right, I, uh, I had a feeling, and I called home, my dad had punched the lung. When and you say you had a feeling, what do you mean, a feeling? Just like, oh, I should call home, there's something not right. Mm. But this <laughs> time- a very specific <laughs> feeling. <laughs> how did that- <laughs> how did that manifest itself? <laughs> Oh, I just, how did you get that? What kind of oh, feeling? I'm, is that tingling I'm getting, thing? I'm getting a bit of a lung feeling. <laughs> yeah, mm, a bit of a dad lung that feeling. Like, that feels like a punctured lung. Mm. <laughs> well done. But anyway. No, but anyway, the holiday was good. We talked about it last week. Well, let's, let's probe Carl about his holiday later, because, okay. you know, that's the sort of thing that audiences will stay tuned for, Rick, I'm pretty certain. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Find out about you know more about this radio uh, business than me. You know, you've enough. hooked them already. Indeed, yeah. Um, well, also, yeah. I'm thinking we've got nothing. <laughs> Ever so now. We've as well say that. No, I resent it. I used to put a lot of work in, but no, I, you know, I, I think of the money, which is, you know, for me, pretty shoddy. <laughs> well, yeah, you know I, mean? I mean, you, I don't usually you get make an awful lot of cash. Well, exactly, yeah. And, uh, you know, the whole thing is, the whole setup. it was raining today, I thought, I should have a cabin. Mm. You know, mm, then mm, the mm. sun came out, so I walked in again. Ah, mm, mm. <laughs> <sighs> dear. How are you? But, um, I'll tell you what, I got a bit criticised last week as well, that I, I only played ballads and same songs, so I'm, I'm gonna rock out this week. Oh, I'm I've been down to the Capitol Library right. to get some good tunes, and, uh, what about a little bit of ACDC? Oh. Trick me all night long! Let's hear it. Well, that's cheered me up. In a better mood now? Yeah. Good. That's great, that's three, three rock out today. Yeah, well, yeah. Bit of Led Zeppelin, maybe Stones. Brilliant, yeah, some of the classics, no Yeah. Doubt. When are we gonna talk about Carl? Have we run out of stuff yeah. already? Oh, okay, really? let's go. Okay, now, uh, yeah. So uh, where did you go, Carl? What was the story? Um, it was my birthday, mm -hmm. right? Um, went home after doing, working with you a couple of Saturdays ago, mm -hmm. right? Uh, girlfriend was like, open your card, open your card, and I said, no, it's my birthday on, on Monday, I'll open it <laughs> You then, obey right? by the rules, <laughs> don't you, on <laughs> birthdays? Uh, birthday yeah. rules. Well, there's no point. Well, exactly, <laughs> chaos leads that way. Yeah, <laughs> right, so, uh. Not an anarchist, never has been. So yeah. anyway. She, she was kept going on and I, it was doing me head in, so I said, all right, I'll open it. Yeah. So I opened it, ticket fell out, uh, surprise holiday to one of the Canary Islands. So... And what was your reaction? I mean... First one was we haven't got enough money. Right. For this. But I didn't want to ruin it, so... No. <laughs> no, no. So I didn't, I didn't go on about that and I said, oh, it'd be great. <laughs> so I can't wait. <laughs> so, Did you uh, say it in that tone of voice? <laughs> well, it was good timing because I was tired and everything. Mm. And uh, I'm not a big holiday fan. No, but the timing was right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's the same as last night. I don't always like a curry, but last night- You're in the yeah. mood. You get that sort of, oh, yeah. Curry feel- you had a, you had a you got a feeling. feeling. Yeah. You had a feeling. You thought, oh, and, and then, lo and behold, like, you were eating the curry. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's weird, isn't it? Isn't it weird, the paranormal? Is, isn't it, it weird? Isn't it weird? They- they work in mysterious ways, Yeah, ghosts. yeah. So yeah. anyway, right, um, yeah. the island, um, if I was on once you were here, I'd probably say it's a bit barren. Okay. Um, not much there, mm -hmm. but if you get a hotel, you guarantee good weather, right? Are you? No, what I mean is, <laughs> it'll be a good <laughs> holiday. If you get a hotel, right, the, the weather's always good, so, you're, so you'll have a nice yeah, time. Yeah, it was a comma, yeah, it was a, yeah, go Um, and all that, and the food was alright, and, uh, and everything was going alright, I was just having a nice relaxing time. And how do you sort of spend your time on a holiday? You just lie around, does that, that mean That sort anything? of holiday, just lying around, yeah. I, I, I bought a book. You bought a book? Yeah. Okay, ghosts? No, it was, it was short stories, right? It about was like, ghosts? No, it was about like, uh, like special days in our time, and um, time oh. before me and stuff. Oh, yeah. And it was like, uh, it was telling you about how in, I think it was 1814, the Thames frozen up. Yeah. And all these stories are told by eye eyewitnesses. Yeah, yeah. Right? So there's some fella who was around in 1814, 
and uh, the Thames was frozen, and people used to uh, put market stalls on there, uh, and they'd yeah. do the shopping. It was like a, sh it was like like an Oxford Street. Was that Mad Liar Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> no, because he's famous for that. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm sure. You know, yeah, I think that was Mad Liar Charlie. Right. Yeah. So I was reading that, and then after a couple of days, was a bit like, oh, boring. Yeah, you can do, you can only do sort of so much lying around and so much reading. So, uh, Suzanne said, let's go on the beach, yeah. have a walk. You ain't gone on the beach? Where had you I been the the, up to this point then, in the, in your room? No, just like, round the pool, just, mm, just sure. relaxing and yeah. having yeah. a swim and that. Yeah. Um, so she said, let's go on the beach. I said, all right then, yeah. So, uh, wandered down to the beach and, uh, first impressions are, yeah, it's all right, it's clean. <laughs> Uh, Your criteria good. is so basic, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Hotel, yes. Roof, good. <laughs> Food, adequate. <laughs> beach, clean. Next. So, I'm walking along and everything's good and, uh, you know, there's a woman, uh, feeding fish bread, which I uh, thought that's different. <laughs> He loves a bit of originality. <laughs> he was feeding <laughs> fish bread. This woman was there, like up to her, up to her knees in water. Yeah, and she was stood was there. Was that a sea? Chucking, yeah. Oh, right, good. Chuck, chucking this bread, and I thought, what's she doing? And I stood there and watched for a minute, and there was little fish coming up. I mean, the bread. I thought, oh. so we carried on, <laughs> carried on walking, and uh, everything's going well. And then this fella comes towards me. Everything's going well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I original. haven't fallen over. A clean, clean feeding bread. Mm. Yeah. Two points for originality. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fella comes walking towards me. Oi, oi. He's only got no pants on. Oh. So I said, Suzanne, what's going on? <laughs> Why did he turn to her? <laughs> like she knows more so than she him. Said, so she said, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, she said, yeah, it's a nudist. It's going to be a long story. Could you, could you pour that coffee? Could you give me that coffee over? Um, Sorry. Sorry, this is really bad. Yeah, because he's pouring... Thank you. Just amuse yourselves while we uh, talk the coffee. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll have a cup of coffee, Carl. Right. Thanks. Yeah. Cheers. Mm. <laughs> Cold. Right. Good. Yeah. Okay. Right. So. Great. <laughs> thank you. So she said, "Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a nudist yeah. speech." So I said, "Well, why? What?" I said, "We're all mixed. Mi it's all mixed up. Normally, on a nudist speech, it's a nudist speech. You don't go wandering on there when you get your clothes on and that." Mm. So it annoyed me a bit. Because there wasn't any signs. So this fella's getting closer. Well, the knob out was a sign. Yeah. Right, so he's getting closer. And he walked past me, it was an old fella. Uh, and he walked past me, he had a hat on and a, and a little pipe. <laughs> and a big rucksack on his back. <laughs> right, so he got me thinking- not strictly naked. I'm walking along and mm. I'm thinking, <laughs> right, why do people want to do this? So straight away, it, it was, I wasn't on holiday anymore, because most of the time when I'm on holiday I don't think about anything. <laughs> right? <laughs> Your just, mind's a blank. I just switch <laughs> off. <laughs> right? But all, all of a sudden, this this has got in my head now, and I turn around <laughs> to, to look at him <laughs> and- Check out his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and the bag, and this bag, right, I swear, it was, it was massive, right? What? You had a massive bag? The, the bag. The <laughs> his rucksack. <laughs> his rucksack. Oh, right, okay. Because so. when I said, he said there was an old couple coming towards me, and I said, what was lower, the bloke's bollocks or the woman's tits? And he said, well, that was another point, she might as well have worn knickers. Because <laughs> he said, so naked, that's what he said to me. So, so, you, so you saw the bag. So it annoyed me, yeah, because the whole idea, innit, uh, this is what I think, I mean, I might be wrong, right? Might be wrong. <laughs> Chances are you never have been, you never have been before. Being nudist, right? Mm. What's it all about? <laughs> so I'll tell you, on that, on that point, Carl, let's play a tune, let's come back and we'll discuss- <laughs> What are we gonna play? We'll discuss uh, that very oh. issue. We have, we've got some ideas, we did chat about this last week, Carl, in your absence. Alright. Well, we'll play the Coral. Okay. It's yeah. a good one, this. Yeah. Coral, dreaming of you. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. If you've just joined us, Carl is walking down the beach yeah. and a man has just passed him with his knob out. Yeah, his testicles out and his, his a uh, huge, huge bag, apparently. Right. Now, we're gonna, we'll sum this up, you know, quick, because we did talk about it last week, you know, you did, you did call me and tell me some of these things and we, we sort of, uh, mentioned it last week, but, um, you just wanna say your, th just give us your thoughts on nudity. Well, what I don't understand is, right, nudity, I thought it was all about, you know, sort of being free. Yeah. Natural, letting the breeze, you know, blow around you and that. Uh, that's, that's all I can think is of, of like the bonus of doing it. Mm. But, you can get that by just having a pair of shorts on, right? Because mm. I'm not one for getting my kit off. It's just something a bit weird about it, isn't it? Normally, if I go for a walk on the beach, I'll, I'll put a shirt on. Sure. But leave it unbuttoned. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah, 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 ye
it just feels a bit weird. Mm. So it's best to cover your back anyway, cause the sun- Yeah. You know, good advice, yeah. But when I saw him, and I thought, well, right, is he doing it to sort of be free and be comfy and all that? And then I thought, but he's carrying a big bag, yeah. right? I've got a pair of shorts on, and I'm not looking at him thinking, I bet he's really comfy. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I yeah. wasn't going, I can't wait to get home and get my shorts off. These, <laughs> they're really annoying me, these. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that, that, that's just it. I don't get what it's all about. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, um, okay. Well, uh, my, my advice to you is don't, don't go, don't go to nudist speeches again. Well, I didn't, I didn't go again. Do I you said, play, do you play volleyball? Nope. Well, there's, no, there's nothing in it for you, to be honest, Carl. <laughs> do you ever walk around the house nude? Not really, only if, like, it's quickly to sort of jump out of bed and go and get a glass of orange. But I've got to be <laughs> careful, because living on a high street, this flat's right across the way looking in. Yeah. And the thing the is, it's Chinese all like- fella. There's a little Chinese exactly. fella. Exactly. And who's the other one? The, when, is he the there's one the old woman, reading a book. Yeah, yeah, it could be dead for all yeah. we know. Um, it hasn't moved. There's some bouncers and I- Some bouncers? I think so, yeah. <laughs> is that a euphemism? There is. <laughs> There's always, uh, Her name's Carol. <laughs> 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 but, uh, yeah, the only time, if I nip out, sort of get out of bed at night, go and get an orange, I've still got to be careful, because if they're awake and I open the fridge door- Oh. And the light comes up- yeah. Yeah. They'll, they'll sort of see the light. And the shadow. Turn round. And, and the weird, long, stretchy shadow. Yeah. Um, yeah. what, what, what did you get, you get up and got orange juice or orange squash? You know, Robinson's. <laughs> You can't advertise on Why don't you take a glass of that to bed with? Why are you getting up? Yeah. Cause uh, whenever I do that, I normally don't wake up and it's a waste, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the man is a genius! <laughs> and he, look, well, continuing our, 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 our rocking out thing. Yeah, we're in a rock mood. Well, I think this sums up rock and roll, doesn't it? It's not called rock and roll, is it? <laughs> Textbook. Coldplay, The Scientist. Do you think that's about you, Carl? What happened there with all that? Rubbish, pressing the wrong thing, going out and out. Don't, don't want to go. I've, I've sorted it now. Doesn't matter. Right. S You've come back. On. You're not focused, Carl. That's what concerns me. Your mind's on other things. I'm all right now, though. You're ready right? to go. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is. Oh, I. I just. I'll tell you what. Right. I'll tell you how focused I am. What? Got some new ideas for you. Go on. Well, then. They've all been blinders in the past. Go right. on. Did you do any competitions when I was away? Uh, did we? I think we did, didn't we? Didn't we give away a DVD? Did we? Yeah, we did, we did. Well, yeah, go on, yeah, right. go on, anyway. Well, I've thought of some, uh... This isn't like radio, is it, as we know it? This is just people talking. Mm. If the mic's on, it's luck. <laughs> yeah. If anyone's listening, I've, I've, you know, I've no idea what they think mm -hmm. of this show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not a show. Not in the <laughs> traditional sense. No. Okay, no. then, you're gonna change with that kind of Because a show to... suggests a certain form of presentation. Yeah. A certain pride. And when we do present and it... And dare I say it, some planning. Yeah, and when we do, it's ruined by impressing the wrong button. Yeah. yeah but I've got some planning here. Go on, then. Uh... Courses. Is, what I did was, when I was on holiday, yeah. right, I, I, you, you said, you know, come up with a new idea, right? Mm. So the best way of coming up with ideas is sort of, um... <laughs> Thinking. Sort of nicking a, a TV show name and then twisting it a bit. Yeah. So... Yeah. Or just rip off Simon, Ma Simon Mayo's idea completely. That's well, good I advice did, for anyone out there. I didn't... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're interested in, in ideas. See, uh, Carl is presently, uh, um, running a course, writing for TV. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that, that's the lesson one, isn't it? Just that's rip something else off. Just, just, just do it. And change the title slightly. Yeah, well, go this, on. This one, I haven't really got, I, I don't know what to do on the game, but I'm thinking, uh, <laughs> st strike it Ricky. <laughs> that's all you've got? That's, uh, that's that, what you've come up I with. How long did that, that take? What is that? I just thought it sounded a bit like Lucky. <laughs> forget that one then. <laughs> yeah, forget that one. Okay, yeah. well, no, right. no, no, good. No, no, we all have, we all have hits of this. Don't we? Even Spielberg's, not all his films, you know, can hit the. Uh, go on. Right. No, okay, no, it's a good. Uh, go on. Yeah. Do you remember Big Brother? Yeah. Do I remember Big Brother? No, go on. <laughs> Big Mother, right? You call in. <laughs> if your mum's ever, you win a CD. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what do you mean? How can you, how can you prove that? <laughs> all right, forget that. <laughs> Right, ER. Here's one. Right, ER. Good one, no, ER. No, no, no. Yeah, no. The price is right, remember that? Yeah. yeah. Right. The price is Ricky? No. The rice is right. <laughs> and what I do, I read from an Indian menu and a Chinese menu, you tell me whether you have pilau or egg fried. <laughs> <laughs> He's a genius, isn't he? He really is a right. modern- I that one. Let, go on then. Go into the, let's, let's go into this one. Let's not cross this off right away. Go on then. What do, you read from what? Well, I've got, I, I get a couple of menus from like an Indian or a, and a Chinese takeaway. Yeah. yeah. And I'll go like, uh, 
Right, um, oh, chicken korma. Well, could I just suggest that as it's an Indian, it'll be pilau and anything you read out that is- Yeah, but you don't know which one I'm reading from. What the chicken korma's Indian, isn't it? Yeah, so you go pilau. <laughs> but then, but then- Well, you, then you might as well say Indian or Chinese. <laughs> no, because then the, the name wouldn't work. The rice is right. <laughs> okay, yeah, I forgot you're working for the title backwards, aren't you? Okay, yeah. Okay. I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> I don't right. know where I am or what, what uh, day it is. A, pro a program that they've been in on Channel 4, right? Can you cross that out? We're not doing the rice is right either. I don't understand no. the rice is right. No, go I'll on. I'll tell you that later. We'll have a game in the office, right? <laughs> um, a, a game that they've been in on Channel 4 but has got really big viewing figures. Well, obviously not. Right. Or they wouldn't be binning it. Go on. Do you know 15 to 1? Yeah. They're getting rid of that, right? Are they? I'm thinking 15 Taiwan. <laughs> get some items that are made in Taiwan, right? Get 15 items and y and I say what they are and then you go, oh, I bet it's the vase or something. That's the one that's made in Taiwan? Yeah. <laughs> Just explain that again very quickly. <laughs> no, don't go. Oh, right, forget it that. Out. Forget that. Cross it out. <laughs> 15 Taiwan. <laughs> right. Go on. This is the one that I've prepared for because I think this is, this, this is isn't daft, this is good. Let's Go play on. a tune in this here after that. <laughs> oh, God. I'm you very sure? excited. <laughs> are we gonna play it after that, or are we gonna say no, it's No, you can explain no, it it's after it. I'm oh. very excited. <laughs> Could you hear that again? It's oh, oh, fantastic. Waiting on a Friend by the Rolling Stones. Yeah? Go on then, Carl. On XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Hilton. Go on. Right, this one. Um, remember Blockbusters? Uh-huh. Right, this one, this one is good and we'll do this one. Uh, Rockbusters. And remember how Bob Olness used to give you a letter? Yeah. And, uh, um, it'd give you a question and the answer to that question is that letter. Yes. Yeah. Right, well it works like that. So if I said to you, um, yeah, I'll test it out on you, Steve, right? Um, right, welcome to the show on that. Hello. Um, let's, let's play, right? Okay. And I say, right, your first one is W. Mm-hmm. Um, and the cryptic clue, because it's done like crosswords. Okay. Um. So not quite like blockbusters. Well. Um, this young man prepared for his death. And right. it's a W, so the answer. And it's not always going to be like our sort of music, it can be any sort of music that's out there. So the W is the name of? Of the answer. I understand that, but is the answer always the band name, or is it, is yeah. it, it it's always the band name, is it, or the artist? Yeah. And, it, and so would the W be the surname, or would you have both the initials if it was someone's name? <laughs> Would Elvis Presley be EP? Don't no. get annoyed, Carl. No. These are these, these, <laughs> these are questions, questions that I knew would be asked. I know this. He tested it on me, so you've got to tell him. We well, need the, the rules. If if it was Elvis, I'd probably do uh, a do E. No, no, no. Give him the answer. Give him the answer. Right, did you hear the clue? No, give me the clue again. Then. So the the, the letter is. It w. is a cryptic clue. And the w. clue's fine. Listen, but, and the clue on. is: this young man prepared for his death. This young man prepared for his death. Yeah. This young man prepared for his death. And it's a W. And it's his first name. That's what he needs well, to Well, see, know. that's the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I don't- Well, shouldn't we have the initials? Wouldn't that make it easier? I mean, yeah, but they didn't do that on Blockbusters, it just had one letter. Yeah, they did. No, they did, they, they did. did if it was, uh, if- The gold one they often had a th three or four. Did they? Letters, yeah. Well, it was normally just one word. It wouldn't have been a name or something. Mm. All right, then. W- W, uh, Y. W, Y. Will Young. Excellent. Right, I didn't so understand it. What was the young will man, prepared young for? This young man. So he's sort of mi mixed, sort of cryptic. Yeah. But I mean, you know, is that, that's yeah, a good effort. That's better than yeah. usual. No, it's that is better than it's usual. It's not bad, is it? So should we, do you want to play, let's play Rockbusters. Yeah, Rockbusters. Uh, yeah. So how many of these have you got? No, because no, just, 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 wait, 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 wait. let's just clarify a couple of rules here, Carl. Let's just make sure we thought everything through, because I'm pretty certain when they get these things on TV, they at least have a go at them in the office first, <laughs> before they put them straight on there. I'm sure that's how it works. I'm sure Bob Ornish just didn't turn up the first day. <laughs> and he goes, up, we're all wingy, it'll be fine. Bring <laughs> the students in, let's have a go. <laughs> I'm sure they did uh, a bit of preparation. So let's just check, <sighs> we've got everything, every base covered. Yeah, I've Firstly, got... how many questions have they got I'll to get I'll tell you right? what, let's do this off air then. Should we play a great, a great tune? Well, yeah. Well, people need to call in, don't they? Because we're doing it, aren't we? Yeah. It'll be alright. And there's, there's good stuff. I've got a, a CDs, right? I've got, um, some compilation stuff and a couple of videos and that, so that's what they're playing for. Uh-huh. Um, Call up now, 08 700 800 1234. Get them on the air, play the game. Brilliant. Yeah? Yeah. <sighs> Is that oh, what we're doing? Bit of the cure. Right. Oh, 
That's from that uh, Cure Greatest Hits compilation. Uh, I'm gonna compilation. have a heart attack. I you really get uh, am. an extra it's bonus CD on certain copies, and that's uh, an acoustic version of Just Like Heaven. Fantastic. He hasn't thought it through. I know. We've just right, spent we've three of three and a half minutes trying to figure out the rules. Yeah, of this game. right. We've got it now. I'm sorry for people to call in. The, the lines are going mental. Right, so hold on, everybody. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do an ad break. We're just we're gonna, gonna figure out how to play the game. <laughs> no, we're Enjoy gonna get two people on there and we're gonna play it. So, uh, XFM and that. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? I don't know. The adverts aren't working today, and I don't. I'll have to get an engineer in as well. Wait, so don't play the adverts. I don't want to play them anyway. Don't play them. It's not our fault if it doesn't work. It's. Uh, Why? Do you realise if we were like live, we'd be hackled off the stage? <laughs> Right, wait, wait, don't play the adverts. We no, wouldn't survive in the real I'll world. I'll sort that out. Right. right, right, get the people on the air now. Just No, oh. Rick, calm down. Play a record then! Do something, for Christ's sake! Brilliant, Pulp. Good news and bad news. Bad news is we have got enough callers to play Carl's game. <laughs> the good news is we don't have to play any more adverts. Yeah. In this show. So, uh, if it doesn't work, sod it. Right, who have you got on the line, Carl? Sam. Now, let's just remind ourselves, what's the game? It's Rockbusters. Okay, now calm down, Carl. I know you're a bit stressed. You've got a lot to do, but don't worry, you've just had a holiday. Throw this desk out. Just throw- let's throw it out and start again. Rick, don't get stressed. Go on, then. People- it, people wouldn't think it was us if this show wasn't, you know, half-baked and <laughs> ill-formed and- <laughs> and generally shoddy. That's right. what they've grown to love. <laughs> okay. All right. Sam? Hello? Is it sounding all right today? It is. It's just about. All right. Cheers. That is worse. All right, then. Yeah. Well, and, uh, <laughs> so we've got Sam on the line. Who else have we got there? So we've got, uh, we've got Tim as well, haven't we? Hello. All right, Tim. Yeah, Tim and Sam. Tim. Right, you, okay. you sound quite similar, lads. Could one of you affect an accent or something? Um... Which one's Tim? Yeah, it's me. Okay, which one's Sam? It's Sam. No, it's slightly deeper, slightly deeper, deeper, deeper yeah, yeah. And they're not okay. against the clock anyway, are they? So it doesn't really matter. I suppose not. So... No, I think Steve just wanted a bit of variety. Yeah. You, uh... <laughs> okay. You, you understand the rule, lads? <laughs> Could you explain them to us? <laughs> <laughs> right, play it. Okay, right, hang on, wait, 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 let me, let me explain, cos, I mean, life is too short. Now, Carl's gonna read out, um, uh, say three clues, yeah, and, um, just, just shout your own name and answer it, or shout the answer. Shout your own name, then the answer, if you know, and it's the person who gets the most right. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, um... Here we go, then. Okay, then. So, so... Shouldn't it be the first of three? Well, yeah, but then yeah. he yeah. hasn't got... Yeah, yeah, he's he's got, got I've got enough, it's fine. He's got enough clues for that. Mm. Right then, here we go. Welcome oh. to the show. Uh, oh, God. Right, uh, <laughs> first initials, S, T, right? Is that right? S well, I don't know. Oh, we don't know, do we? How do we know? Here we go. S, T, and the cryptic clue is better than the average homeless person. Okay? Sorry, I, th I think, is that a band? Yeah. Is it an old band? Yeah. I think that's one word. All right, then, S. S, it's an old 70s band, uh, better than the average homeless Tim. person. Tim? Go on. Super Tramp. Super yes. Tramp well it is. Yeah. Well yeah. done, one point well, to you, Tim. I have no idea why that's right, by the way. You don't know, you don't understand why it's a right? Soup, it's a super tramp. Oh, right. Better than okay. the average oh, homeless cryptic, person. Cryptic, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah cryptic. Yeah. Okay, second one. Come on, Sam, you've got a- That's actually quite good for Carl. Trust me, Tim, that's- I mean, take that. Take that as a good clue, cos- <laughs> yeah, okay. We won't do this again. Right, one nil right, to here two. we go. Right. F. The letter is F. That's the next one we're moving on to. And the cryptic clue is, the little girl is hungry, what shall we do? The S or F? I've F. got it. F. 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 Freddy. Sam. Feed her. Yes. One all. Feed her. He's pulled out Feed of her. Yeah. <laughs> Feed her. Feed okay. her. Yeah. So that's one each, so this is the decider, isn't it? Wait a minute, ITV are on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said first to three, so no, it's not, is it? That's what I said. Just do the three clues, and yep. who gets the most? Okay, well, we can do that now. So, <laughs> here we go. I love this. This is rubbish. Go on. So, here's, here's, here's the last one. The initials are A K, right? And the cryptic clue is exploding pet. Say, shout out your name if you know it. <laughs> <laughs> Last orders at the bar, please. Last <laughs> orders at the bar. <laughs> Exploding pet. A K. You're tuned to XFM 104.9, Carl Perkinson's Quiz, Rockbusters. The format is still available. <laughs> the highest bidder, please give us a call or you can email ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Is it a band or a singer? It's, I'll give you a bit more of a clue. It's, it's a, a pop band, okay? We, we wouldn't no, have... Tommy Kitten. <laughs> 
Excellent. Yes. Hey. Oh, this is amazing radio. Oh. So who was that that won? That was Sam who won. So it's 2-1 to Sam, so he wins... What does he win, Carl? He wins some CDs and some videos. No, he's got a, and, uh, what, uh, and, uh, obviously now, Sam, if you're ready, take the spot, you're gonna do the gold run. <laughs> <laughs> Away you go, Carl. I haven't got any more. You're a fool. Right, right, stay on the line, we're giving both some presents. Play a record for, I uh, just- Rick, I'm gonna shoot off. <laughs> Not go! <laughs> <laughs> Feeder. Come back around. He's getting all stressed again. You know, we've only done an hour. I know. It's. I'll tell you what. This you know, seems like another free. hour to go. I know. I can't. I don't know what it seems like to the, you know, the listeners. <laughs> I say. I'll tell listeners. you this. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, Carl, but I think maybe someone else should come in and press the buttons. Because I'm not sure you're across it. I don't think you can concentrate on talking and working at the same time. I'm not walking, sure you can walking. Yeah, and I, it's, for you it seems as a oh, bit no, like. Don't say that. Look, he's gutted. No, it's, there's a lot of gone wrong here. I say, I say, throw this desk out and get a real one. Seriously. Well, I think there's a Fisher, there's a Fisher Price one you can buy in uh, well, Argos the, that might be. Yeah, worth no, but yeah, in. we got there. But we were stunned because it was second hand. This one, but um, uh, this is like the mere space station. I mean, it really is falling apart. Get a new one in. Let's not, you know. Oh, I can't believe it. Get the. I mean, look at the look at that. Look at the library. Look gap. Look at the gaps in yeah, the right, library. Let's not go on about this because this isn't this isn't good. <sighs> what? Whereas that quiz was. <laughs> Whereas that was good radio. You can join in and stuff. But the that. problem yeah, okay. is, Carl, you, why do you rush to do it? We, I told you before we should practice these things. That's Although, to be done. fair, Steve, I can't. I haven't got time to do anything, so at least Carl's coming up with stuff. But I don't mind, you know, running what through other ideas with it while you're having a kip outside. Really? What other ideas have you got? Have you got any other ideas, Carl? Because we're really. You've got another hour of it. Have you got well, anything we, at we, all? We, I've got that feature educating Ricky, which is a bit of a play on words as well. Right. Do you know the, do you know the film, Steve? Educating Rita. Yeah. I'll well see what you've done. done. I'll see what you've done. <laughs> Go on. I'm doing that and I teach Ricky stuff. Uh, <laughs> okay. what, 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 what do you teach me, Carl? Well, I've got a few different topics. Um, Go on. Do you know like how you taught me about Hitler and Che Guevara and Winston Churchill? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna come in with topics every week and this week I've got, uh, Ghosts? No. Hanging Bacon is one of the topics. Say that again? Hanging Bacon. Hanging bacon. All, all the titles. Francis Bacon. No, all the titles are sort of named to sort of make, sort of tease you and get you more interested in it. Hanging bacon? Well, you've right. certainly intrigued Go me. on, what's another title one? Uh, Hairy Chinese Kid. <laughs> 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 Could I, I can no. go for that one. Could if, I, there I mean, a, if there was a university degree yeah, with that yeah. title. Yeah, no, I'm gonna go for Hairy Chinese Kid, and I think. And the final one. Yeah. A alien Gives Man a Beard. <laughs> Alien gives burst. man a beer. I am gonna burst. Right, listen, Carl, you've gotta tell me. Right, to first, right, let's do it in reverse. No, we're order. not, we're not gonna do it now anyway. What do you mean? You, we've got to do it now. But, I mean, that's, this is the first interesting thing you've said in an hour, okay? The listeners have just, uh, been subjected to rubbish and, uh, oh, and mistakes and everything for the last <laughs> six months. Please, we've got to do Alien gives man a beard. What is that? Tell us that. Right. Um, sorry, this is just you telling me something, is it? <laughs> well, this feature is you telling me something. Well, teaching you something, educating Ricky. Right? So, are we playing it now? We're already into this feature. <laughs> well, into this feature, are we? Yeah, I suppose we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should there not be a jingle or something? Yeah, can we have a well, jingle? There's no point because look, I come up with ideas and you dismiss them straight away. So I'm not wasting my time making stuff. Right. If you don't like well, okay. It. Let's play. Let's play educating Ricky. Right. Brilliant. Go right. Wah 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 Ding a ling a ling a ling a ling. Educating Ricky. Right. What are we going for then? Hanging the bacon. Airy Chinese kid. Alien gives man a beard. I think Alien gives man a beard. I'd like to do that. Right. There's this fellow. I think it happened in America. Uh, and he saw a bright light in the sky. And uh. God, if you're bored. And he stood there. This is a true story, is it? Yeah. He stood there. <laughs> yeah, it's cause it isn't, Steve. <laughs> and he saw this bright light and it came closer and closer and it was a UFO, right? <laughs> yep. And he looked at it and it disappeared, right? And he gets back in his car. <laughs> he looks in the mirror. And he looks in the mirror. Yep. He's only got a beard. He has. <laughs> you sure it wasn't it. someone else who got in the car? And he was still standing out there? No, right. What? And it turned out, yeah. he got home and said to his wife or, or his girlfriend, uh, it's a bit weird. <laughs> so I just got out of the car to look at a bright light, and I, gr I, I got back in the car and grew a beard and she said, never mind your beard, where have you been for three days? <laughs> and what had happened is- He the, passed out cause he was pissed. No. <laughs> ah! 
<laughs> the, the UFO had uh, taken him for three days. Yeah. But he'd only thought that he'd, he'd only looked at it and it went away. Yeah. But what had yeah, happened is yeah, he yeah. took him and yeah. he grew a beard because he hasn't had a shave. Um. So, right. Okay. D d I mean, was Will Smith or Tommy Lee Jones anything to do with this at all? Did, uh, were you, did you see this on a video maybe and thought it was an educational film? No, it's from a book that some kind person sent in to me. Here. Yeah. Um, Can I just ask again? Just, just again. I'm just throwing this right back at you. Um, do you think there's any other possible answer here? Right? A man is absent for three days from home. He's the, grown the a beard. The length of time that it could take to grow a beard, lest we forget. Um, what if he hadn't actually <coughs> seen a bright light in the sky? What, what if, if he, he was lying? Drunk? What if he was lying? He got knocked unconscious. Mm. He would had a car crash. Just lying. No, things. just lying. Or he it's, was just lying. Yeah, he'd, he'd been on a bender, getting pissed for three yeah, days. And that with was his, his mates. excuse to his wife. And they went, what are you gonna, what, Dennis, what are you gonna tell your wife? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, wait a minute. Wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. She's not gonna believe I was out with you, lads. Uh, yeah. uh, Just say you're only away for a minute. No, she didn't know I wasn't away for a minute because of the beard. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, look, it looks like you've been out for three days. Well, we have, that's, <laughs> exactly. right, okay, we've got to cover that then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, alien abduction. Great one. Okay, let's try that. Do you see? That's a little scenario there that could have been played. So out. when you say educating Ricky, what have I learned from this? Never listen to you again. That's all I've learned so far. Never listen well, to yeah, you. Yeah, we'll add a little bit more in here, right? To well, no. Uh, what do you mean, add a little bit more? We'll add a bit more to this. To this, what I'm educating you about. Go on. Right. Um, there's only a law in America that says <laughs> if you touch a UFO, you're going to get done. Now, why would they make a rule? I don't know that. Do you know, like all our rules have a code. Uh, Carl, I, I, I g genuinely do not know what you're talking about. Right? Do you know, like how here? Do, do you know? I have no idea. Right. Okay. Do you know, like over <laughs> Rick, here? I'm listening to Capital on these headphones. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got Foxy on <laughs> yesterday. Uh, right, let's let's bend that. <laughs> no way, it's great. No, I, I want to hear about airy Chinese kid. <laughs> let's play a tune. Okay, let's play a tune. Come back with airy Chinese, Chinese kid. Definitely. Some, some doors. Yeah, I yeah. just thought uh, I'd go oh. back. Uh, take it back to the sixties. Uh, this is a tune that a friend of mine sent. If me. you touch a UFO, you get done. Soul Kitchen from the Doors. Shambles for like this. Dave Bowie, Slow Burn. Yeah, quite a quite a Eno trilogy yeah, feel about it. Lodger yeah. and sort of low type. Yeah, but uh, yeah, mm, enjoyable. Um, now, okay. That's stressful, isn't it? We've, I think we've got things working now. We've had people coming in and out, just shaking their head, going, "Shouldn't have bought that desk." <laughs> but it's all sorted now, I think. And uh, oh, I'm you notice how it I'm took um, about what? twenty-five minutes for them to come down as well, though. Do you feel like we're maybe quite low in the pecking order in the building? Definitely. You know, it's like Capital First, Capital Gold. They can shoot off to other sort of pirate stations, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> people's yeah. car radios, then they come back here. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, I had a job at Richard Sounds. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Light fitting was uh, zzz, buzzing. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, <laughs> but we've got, um, thanks for staying, listening. Um, right, okay, educating Ricky. What have we got? Every Chinese kid, go on. Right, yeah. This is the, uh, I didn't want to do this. Really. You didn't want to do it? Well, I wanted to give you three and I, I, and I gave you one. It was like the alien uh, man gets a beard or whatever. Yeah. And Which was total rubbish, so uh, this one should be better, maybe. Hairy Chinese kid. Right, well, yeah. we've talked about hairy people in the past. <laughs> 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 True enough. Can't we? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the, the little kids who grew up in woods and hung around with wolves and that. Yeah, again, you're confusing it. Yeah, they're not, they're not, there were some people that were born a, a very hirsute. They were not the yeah. people who were brought up with wolves. Yeah. You just put that together in your <laughs> Homer Simpson type mind. Right, well, this is like a sort of, sort of close to that sort of story. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the weird thing is, right, Chinese people <laughs> aren't that hairy. As a, as a nation. <laughs> No, seriously, that's that's a well-known fact. <laughs> oh my God. You, they don't they don't have that much body hair and right. stuff. Okay. So this little kid who was born over there, um, he was like covered in stuff. Was he? And it was only his nose that wasn't hairy. The rest of his body was caked in hair, right? Mm. Um, and his hair sort of. What grew. sort of hair was it? Was thick, it thick hair? <laughs> 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 no, what I mean is, was it sort of uh, uh, like a pony's mane? So he just looked like an Ewok. You know what I mean? Just like hanging down, sort of straight, dark well, it hair. Looked, in the picture, it looked like uh, it grows <laughs> it from downy? his eyebrow. It grows from his eyebrows quite thick, and then it just goes all the way over. You his don't head. think it was just really long eyebrows that he'd done a comb over? No, th it was all over his body. It had a picture of like his back and that. Yeah. And um, had he styled it? Had he styled it at all? Did he, did he have it a quiff or? No, it was just it was just, just hanging all over him. Yeah. And um, 
And they were like, you know, this is a bit weird. Happening, uh, happening in China, mm. where, where we're not normally that airy. <laughs> The scientists speaking <laughs> there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the press, the local press, and that were getting him down, calling him Monkey Boy and all this. Oh. And uh, um, thinking Chinese press. But the doctor, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, they're cruel, aren't they? The it's doctor, like those game shows. <laughs> well, That's Japanese, isn't it? Yeah, That's what, like, yeah. And the doctor said, um, I was Carl talking through all that time where we were just like talking <laughs> to each other then. Because I turned around and I still <laughs> saw he was talking. <laughs> Go so on. anyway, the local press came in to see the hairy boy, the monkey yeah, boy. And they were like being tight and taking the mickey out of him and the doctor said, uh Throwing him nuts. Said he's only he's only airy. Said, um he's a healthy young kid. The only faults he's got is he's got a little bit of eczema and a boil. <laughs> 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 and he said everybody should just treat him the same and <laughs> I think he grew up a healthy healthy kid. Um yeah, so that's, that's the, uh... That's, that's the end of the story. That's not a story. Why? Well, I, but I've got nothing, I don't know what to say to that. So someone was, someone in China was born slightly hairier than the rest, and he was normal apart from eczema and a boil. That to me isn't a story. <laughs> but that, I, that I, if it is, I've got a million. I mean, it, it's sort of like, bloke from Manchester, went a bit bolder than the rest, got a job on radio. He was normal. I mean, that's not a story, is it? Do you know what I mean? All right then. Hang on, hang oh, on. Oh god, he's got the big guns. You're not going to give us hanging bacon, are you? Yeah. <laughs> come on then. Come on then. Right, come on. We've been come on. To. This, this is it. No, this is a good one. This is the one. And this is a story, right? Um, do you know the saying, uh, chewing the fat? Good one. It's one of my favourites. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what it means? Talking. Right. Well, do you know where it came from? No. Right. What they used to do years ago. When people didn't have much money. Is this the same as the ba throwing the baby out of the bathwater? No, it's not the s- well, it's not the same saying, but it's- No, but I mean, is it as wrong as uh, that was? Well, let me tell you, we'll go see. On. Okay. Um, like, people go out to work, and with the money, they'd buy food. Oh, yeah, go on. <laughs> this is a good system. What, what, go on, what do you- what do you- what do you mean? People go out to work and with the system- And if, if, you, if you were quite well off, you might treat your family to some bacon, right? But do you know, like, in these days, if people earn a lot of money, they might buy a nice suit or, or oh, a car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what, what, what are you saying? You're saying, <laughs> wait, 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 let me get this straight. You're saying that it, you go out to work and get money to, to buy things to, to live, and if you get sort of enough money to live and you've got some left over, you might treat yourself on, like, a suit or a car or something. Is that yeah, what you're- Yeah, yeah. Oh, but back on. then, back then, if yeah. you earned money, they'd say- This is olden times. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's get some bacon in, right? <laughs> and what they'd do, they'd hang it in the kitchen. Or to show it off. To show it off right. to all the neighbours and friends. Because if you were, if you had hanging bacon, it was like, he's doing alright for himself. Yeah. yeah. Some lovely bacon. So he had loads of bacon hanging up, and people would come round, right? And whilst they stood in the kitchen talking about whatever they were talking about- In olden times. They'd say, uh, do you want a bit of rind? And they'd, and they'd rip a little bit of rind off, and whilst they're having a, having a chit chat- Chewing the chew on the rind. Well, I think that's probably true. And I say, haven't heard that, but that one to me sounds true. Do you see the difference between that one and- a man was abducted and grew a beard. Do, do, do can you see the difference in yeah, why I accept that different, story? Different stories for different things. <laughs> different stories for different things. <laughs> so, see, that's a nice, that's a nice story. If it's true, I don't know if it's true. I mean, but it seems totally possible, viable, quite interesting. I won't be quoting that myself until I've verified it. But that's, you know, I won't be telling anyone the bloke got in the car and he had a full face beard. <laughs> <laughs> Why has car been towed away? Because it was a quiet road. It was it? It wasn't in the way. <laughs> Sorry. Are okay. you filling in the blanks again? <laughs> that wasn't in the book, was it, that you read? <laughs> See, that's yeah. the thing. Sometimes I think you make up bits of the story <laughs> as though they were fact. <laughs> that doesn't seem right. Well, that's all you can do, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's educating Ricky, will we? Brilliant. Do that next week. That is brilliant. No, I think Carl. that was good. I, I, I did. I mean, I enjoyed that. I learned something from there. I mean, well, just, just. I, I want to get. A, I mean, this is all from one book, is it? Yeah. That's an interesting book. Um, with the, with the. I, I don't want to dwell on it, but with the, uh, with the hairy Chinese kid. What, what, what did they say about that? What did they? What was the? I mean, was it once there was born a kid who was slightly more hairy than everyone else? But yeah, it's all right. He only had a boil. Oh, how did they word it? How did they? How did this capture your imagination? There was well, a it was a picture that grabbed me, first yeah. of all. Yeah. Sure. And uh, it was like, God, what, what's up with him? And that's when I read it. <laughs> Did you see said, the boil in the XML or just the hair? 
th no, you see, because his face is like, just under his eyes is sort of nice and smooth and his nose is sticking out and uh, that's not hairy, but the rest of him, it looked like he had the sort of a balaclava on or something. <laughs> and then, and then I read on and it's like, this was a hairy kid in China. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's... good. Anything else in there? Because, I mean, I like, I like that. No, I like we'll, that. we'll do more of that next week. How, how is that alongside, um, hanging bacon? Alien abduction, abduction, um, uh, a, a hairy Chinese kid and, uh, a little interesting fact about the derivation of a phrase. What do you mean? He didn't understand a word of that. <laughs> 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 I knew the word derivation was going to cause problems. <laughs> I thought derivation shouldn't have come out. <laughs> no, I'm not, I wasn't disputing. He's all, he's all smug because he's had a phone call. That was um, back lost cause. Go on, tell tell him why you're all smug. Because Adrian just called up. Yeah. After hearing the story about the Chinese kid. Yeah. And he said, yeah, that's true. He said that there was a TV program on it. Yeah. He had a uh, a chromosome defect. Yeah. And it made him hairy. And his mum and dad used to have to shave him. That wasn't in the book. But, um, thinking about it, that's not a good move anyway, is it? Because they say that for women, if you get a few hairs on your top lip, don't shave it because it'll grow back thicker and faster. So... Right. They should've just, what, let him be They should've just said, well, let's see how, how bad it gets. But yeah. if they, if they went in there straight away as a, if he came out as a baby and a little bit hairy, they should've left it <laughs> for a little bit. But Adrian called up and said, um... Yeah, he was hairy, he was Yeah, but right. we weren't disputing there was a, 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 a Chinese kid born slightly hairier than the rest. We were disputing the fact that you didn't actually tell us a story. You and, just told us a story. And what we are disputing effect. is that that man was abducted by his for three days and grew a beard. Yeah. That's definitely not true. No. We don't know about chewing the fat, but it sounds quite viable. Yeah. You see, the difference is between me and Steve and you is that uh, what we believe isn't random. Do you know what I mean? It's not random, the things we, that- We don't believe stuff just because it's interesting. It's not every other thing we believe and every other thing we don't. We well, sort I of Well, I think like Carl believes stuff if it's interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. If he thinks, oh, intriguing. <laughs> and he said, uh, he said to me on the, um, w before you got a minute, he said, uh, that Ollie's record, Ian Evie's my brother, what's that about then? And I went, oh, I don't know, I, I, I heard, um, it was about someone who had a disabled brother and, um, it was lifting him in and out of a car or something and someone said, oh, do you want a hand? And he went, no, yeah, he's not heavy, he's my brother. I.e., mm -hmm. this isn't a burden for me. Yes, yes. Right? Yes. Carl, what did you say? Uh, I'd say... No, I'll tell you what he said. He went, well, that's ridiculous, he was still heavy. <laughs> and he said, don't turn down help. <laughs> <laughs> Which... We were talking about that because a new feature we're starting about this time every week. Oh, yeah. Uh, Are we start about this time every week? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll do, um, that song's got a good story. Okay. I mm, love, love it, snappy. <laughs> go on, go and, on, um, go on. there's loads of songs out there, isn't there, with, uh, with songs that you couldn't fade out. When you hear them on the radio and that, you don't want anyone to talk over the start or the end. Uh, yeah. Because oh, it's but remember we did this one before with, um, Killing a Georgie by, um, Rod Stewart. Yeah. And I was a bit worried that it might have been a true story, because mm. we were, you know, joking about it. And, uh, he went, oh, you know that Killing a Georgie? He went, I think it is a true story. I went, why? He went, I listened to it again, and Rod Stewart at the beginning says, this is a, uh, one of my best friends. It's brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> it's genius. So there's loads of songs out there, and what I want to do, we want to get the audience involved in this, so mm. if you've got, like, a favourite song, that's got a really good story. you've got story. an audience. Well, yeah, yeah, go on. Uh, and they email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk and they say what the song is now. What would examples be then? Examples, ones that jump to mind straight away for me. Elvis, In the Ghetto. Yeah, good one. Brilliant. Andrew Gold, Lonely Boy. <laughs> Absolutely. Don't know that one. Eminem, Stan. Right. Yeah, yeah. Good one. You couldn't fade it out, could you, because you go, well, what happened? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> and that's, that's what I'm saying, not just any sort of pop song that keeps repeating itself and, you know, it's like, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if it skips or, you know what I mean, if you turn the radio off. Yeah. But I'm talking Ernie, about songs. the fastest milk <laughs> in the world. <laughs> yeah, that is a good story, that is a good story. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Do you know that one? Yeah. Yeah, Two it's, well, it's a story, yeah. Ted from Teddington, he drove the baker's van. Well, oh. uh, so what, what have we got then? Have we got one So we're gonna kick on? it off today with, uh, Stevie Wonder. Living just enough for the city. Okay. And, uh, just, just briefly. Sum it up. Right, yeah. if you haven't, if you, if, if you are nipping out, maybe you're in the car and you're about to pull up somewhere and get out, what it's all about is, is a lad who's, who's growing up in, like, America in some rough area, right? 
and uh, he's trying his best to do well and get a job and everything, but because of where he's from, he's stopping him doing that, right? It's like how I grew up on an estate in Manchester, mm. I had to leave there and come to London to mm. do all right for myself, yeah. right? Uh, and it's his whole family and it's a tale of like, how like his, how his man works dead hard and works loads of hours, but the kids are always well dressed and cleaned. It doesn't mean just because you haven't got a good job you let your house run down. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? She's looking after it. The, the sister, you know, she hasn't got new clothes, but they're always clean, and her knees are clean, I think it says in one point. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Excellent. Clean uh, knees, always so, important. So, will we give it a listen? Let, let Brilliant, it's it. a well, great track. I don't track. think Stevie can do it justice. <laughs> <laughs> After that explanation, right, so... <laughs> oh, oh, I'm not sure oh, he's going to the top of that. I like, some sort of, like, backing tune to try and, uh, <laughs> Try and pep it up a bit, because yeah. you have really knocked it so, the socks off so it. Brilliant. I'm, I'm looking forward right, to the clean knees. It's a new feature. Uh, <laughs> what is it called again? The, the story in that song's really good. Here's Stevie Wonder. Go on then, Carl. Back announce that. It's your, it's your choice, that. Right, songs with good stories that you can't fade out. Yeah. Uh, Although you can heavily edit them for Yeah, them. I noticed you didn't, you, you didn't play the, uh, the full version, which has no, obviously radio, got eh? the complete story in. You've, um, you've just played a, uh... I haven't heard the other single That's all version. I know. Well, in the album version, uh, he, he gets abducted. To jail. He gets abducted as well, and he comes back with a big beard. Yeah, and he's no. covered in hair. No, yeah. he goes to, he gets, uh, arrested and goes to jail. But, uh, it's, he's, it's just, you know, it's just because he gets picked up because he's black. And he hasn't done anything wrong. There's a whole <laughs> other, there's a whole other sort one. of section. Maybe we should change this section. No, what we'll do, right? Abridged versions of songs. <laughs> yeah. No, next week we'll play the second bit and it'll be like, uh, like Star Wars or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Doves. Caught by the River on XFM 104.9. Well, it's been a good show, hasn't it? There's been sort of like a, what, quite a rock and roll 70s feel to it, mainly the equipment. Um, but, uh, we got through it. Carl's been telling us some great insights into his, his mind, mm. really. We've had a few laughs, a few tears. A bit stressful. What were you telling me in the week about when you went to visit your dad in hospital? Oh, we're talking about, um, yeah, me, me, when I got back off holiday, my dad was, was in hospital. I shot back to see him, see how he's getting on, and uh, hospitals are depressing places, aren't they? Mm, yeah, yeah. Really, like, pff, God, you know, they, 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 you know, if, even if you're not that ill, it makes you feel worse. Yeah. Because it's really, like, drags you down, there's people walking around moaning, and, you know. You, <laughs> mainly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nurses. And, uh, yeah. my dad Ooh, was like, cool. it, Yeah. It's, it's uh, a high five. Satire. Satire. Yeah. yeah. I would like to be the one that paid enough and all that, and I oh. do, like. No, well, that's. Tony Blair, I mean. are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't want to look like I'm moaning about the people working because they all work really hard. Yeah, of course they do, yeah. But it's just hard, hard, depressing places. High five. Nice one, Go nice on. one. Yeah. Right, so, um, so I'm sat there, and my dad's, uh, getting fed up. And, uh. <laughs> Is that because you're visiting? <laughs> Just, just, he's quite an active bloke, yeah. and all of a sudden he's got to stay in bed and, yeah. you know, it's like sit down, stop moving about and all this. Mm. So, um, so he's sat there, and there's an old woman in the bed next door, right? And, uh, she's, I mean, she's in, she's in a bad way anyway. Yeah. Right? She must have been, she'd looked about, I'd say she looked about 98 or something like that. Okay, good. Right. Now, I don't know what was wrong with her, but she was always constantly moaning, and you could see that the nurses were trying their best to keep her happy, and she wasn't having any of it. And, uh, you know, it's, she was moaning because cause her hands had gone blue. <laughs> well, that is a worry, to be honest. Well, it's not, because she's 98. Does that what happens? But why, why doesn't the doctor, if I was a doctor, and I'm not one, but, uh, no, no, C Carl, don't be modest. Are you a doctor? Yes or no? But if I, was I think there, he's let it slip. Are you, Carl, are you a doctor? No, listen. Look me in the eye. Right. Yeah. right so Carl, this woman had blue hands. Had she, she had, seen, um, a spacecraft? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, <laughs> go on. She had blue hands. Now, she's 98. If I was a doctor, I'd No, be she's not 98. You said, you said earlier on she looked about 98. So you're making that up. <laughs> it's just shifted from speculation to fact. <laughs> yeah, absolute fact now. Yeah. Yeah. Right, she's 98. <laughs> it is fact now! <laughs> There's a hundred year old woman. Yeah, yeah, go on, yeah. If I was a doctor, I'd be thinking. You're not, are you? <laughs> you <laughs> you honestly, you think, how would I con them? <laughs> <laughs> I'd, how would I get away with this? <laughs> I'd be thinking. <laughs> right. She's 98. Um, she hasn't got long left. Why not just let her be at home and be happy in With her, her own hands. in her own space? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
you know, and let her, let her have a, a nice life, whatever's left. Because she may hurt herself, so you may have falls, some people have to go in there for their own protection, she might not have immediate more family. Than that, she may not have been dragged in against her will. No. She no. may have come to hospital because she was worried yeah. about her blue hands. Yeah. Yeah, but I, when I was talking to Ricky, he said, oh, what it would have been is, uh, Probably a bit of, did you say it's rheumatism or something? No, I said it might, I mean, a, a blueness can be through, uh, lack of circulation. Right. Yeah. So, just- And so I'm right, definitely you've got, not a doctor. You've got, you've got blue hands, bad circulation, we're gonna send you home, we'll give you a Rubik's Cube, um, play around with that with your hands, get, get the blood- <laughs> the Rubik's yeah. Cube! Sure. Get, get the blood pumping. Yeah. Um, and don't worry, I don't say, oh, it's really bad, just think she's 98, yeah. let her have a nice rest of the life. Yeah. But instead, she was there, and the annoying thing was, and they do this with a lot of people in hospital, they pump you with drugs, uh -huh. try to sort it out. They don't, you know, there's probably a bit of guesswork going on, maybe, a little well, bit. Not as much as <laughs> you, but go on. Right? And because of that, they sort of break wind a lot. So I'm sat there with my dad talking. Whoa, 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 Drugs do that, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if there's a doctor listening or a nurse, they will clarify <laughs> right. that if they pump you with all sorts of stuff, um, it wants to come out. <laughs> right. So you're sat there having a serious chat. It's a quiet hospital. <laughs> the woman next door with the blue hands suddenly starts seeping gas, right? Well, I start laughing. Because <laughs> if there's one thing that makes you laugh, it's like, it's it? a, a 98 year old woman with blue hands fine. So you try to hold it in because it's a really quiet hospital and it's, it'd be obvious that we were, uh, that I was laughing at her and I, I didn't want to be mean, but <laughs> it was funny. And then it got me t talking about my auntie because my auntie Nora, um, she, uh, she, same thing, pumped her with loads of drugs. She used to, a, a, a cabinet next to the bed is like boots. She's got <laughs> loads of stuff, right, for all sorts of stuff. And I mean, she's not that old, but she's on loads of stuff, right? She's and a bit coked up if she's she, uh, <laughs> she called up my man once. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, you told us this, go on, tell it again. And, uh, she said, oh, how are you doing and that? She said, alright. Uh, bit worried though, my mum said, wow, what's up? She said, I've, uh, been breaking wind. So she goes, well, you yeah. know. She says, no, but this one is going on and on and on. And she was <laughs> like, she was, she was like, what, 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 what do you say, what's, like passing wind, farting, for five minutes. <laughs> one, one thing, not like, you know, trumping and then nothing. Yeah. Continuous. Continuous drone of a fart. Yeah. I don't think she had- how big was she? She must be the size of a barn. No, she's not that big. She's, you know, she's good for age. No, quite but I mean- that. Quite slim. No, it's but just... buying for five minutes. Uh, where's all the guy- was she circular breathing? Was she sucking it in with her mouth? It was just- <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that much about it. But she called up my mum. About two and a half minutes in- Could you hear <laughs> it in the background? <laughs> Two and a half minutes in, she called me <laughs> up, and it went, it went on for a further two and a half minutes. Oh. And she just stayed on the phone, did you? Where was- phone? Uh, Going, well, can you hear that? Well, <laughs> yeah, did she hold the phone next to her ass? <laughs> Listen to she, that. She was off the ground. I'm trying to work a tune down. <laughs> she, she was, she was actually hovering, she was four yeah. foot off the ground yeah. when they found her, the ambulance yeah. men. The cat's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Don't light a match! <laughs> Don't light that cigarette! <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, that advert. The kids come home from school, switch on the light. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> there they see Granny yeah. hovering, <laughs> doing the light on. <laughs> Be careful if you have an elderly woman at home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Drugs so, make you fart. So that's, that's what I'm saying, you know, just let these people- What, what are you saying? No, wait a minute, what are you saying? I'm saying let people enjoy the life they've got left. No, you're not. You're saying don't put them in hospital, leave them at home to die. No, I'm not. Give them a Rubik's Cube right. and let them die. That's what you're saying. Yeah, I'll tell you something now, right? <laughs> Steve, right. I'll tell you something. I didn't want to do it because it brings the show down. But she did die. Who, the blue-handed lady? Yeah. How do you know? Because I said to me dad, how's the, uh, Woman next door. She, said, oh, she went. She went last night. They've got an old fella oh in there now. God. So there you go. So wouldn't it have been better to leave her at home, where her friends and family can call and speak to her, even nip that round if they want, you know, with a cat. I think I imagine. <laughs> no, it's definitely a cat now. What uh, was that cat's called? Do you imagine? Probably. I'm seeing like a big ginger one. So I don't know. Something <laughs> like, I don't know. Maybe ginger or whatever. <laughs> Um, maybe I'd a budgie. But that's what I'm saying, just let them enjoy this life, because dying in hospital, I wouldn't like to do it. If if I went to the doctors and they said, you haven't got long life left, I'd say, well, I'll, I'll stay at home. Yeah. And that's, that's the point I'm getting at. Yeah. Right? If you can't do anything for them, let them enjoy their life. Yeah, a Rubik's Cube. <sighs> right, well, um, good. Backfired. Now, uh, let's play 
the second uh, of the Rolling Stones tra tra I try and do this every week. It's a feature called Two Lazy to Go and Get Another Album. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about a classic bit of rock and roll? Yeah? I'd love to hear Brown it. Brown Sugar. Do you know what this is about, Carl? Touched. Maybe, I'll tell you later. Well, Stones, Brown Sugar. Uh, Steve thinks I can't tell you what this is about because it's too rude for radio. Um, but you've done it again, haven't you? You've said another call, haven't you? Yeah, just that, uh, drugs do make you have wind, morphine especially, uh, especially. That's, that's the, uh, the bad one to have. And that was from a medical student, wasn't it? Yeah. Up in yeah. Leeds, so cheers for that. Haven't had any calls about the alien abduction funnily <laughs> enough. <laughs> no clarification on that no, so far. No. Keep you posted, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if anything happens, we in. will let you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it. We got through it with all these mistakes. They've got to get this equipment fixed and get- they've got to go to HMV Monday and buy about, f I'd say, five to ten thousand pounds worth <laughs> of new albums. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely, yeah. definitely. It's gonna be good Get this week. fixed. No, get this yeah, fixed. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't go on about that. Next week, though, we'll have more educating that's Ricky. That's the phone. Look, that's yeah, the phone. Yeah, don't do that. What? Educating Ricky. We'll do the quiz. Rock busters. Do that again. <laughs> right. Yeah. I might not songs. be here. <laughs> If that's the case. And Steve. <laughs> what? What have you got? What, next week? No. No. I'm, I'm just gonna bring some sandwiches. I, do, do you notice I was quite quiet for the last 20 minutes? Yeah. Just dozed off. Yeah, well, the air conditioning's, um, <laughs> exactly. I'm feeling quite muggy. It's too, that's, that, that doesn't work like that. And this is, uh, I'm totally serious, I'm not joking for <sighs> the, it's, I mean, it's ridiculous. So. Right, a song for the ladies to end with as ever. Uh, Sly and the Family Stone, it's always a favourite. Yes. If you want me to stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See you next time. Cheers. Sweet. Doves, caught by the river on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Hello, Carl there. Pilkerson and everything. <laughs> no, I'm gonna be honest with you. Go on. A little bit hungover, yeah. didn't feel very well. Yeah. I don't know if I'm hungover or still a bit drunk, but I don't feel- You sound like you're still a bit drunk. Yeah, so but what I'm worried about- you do every week, so. But okay, what I'm worried about is that the standard will slip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. I'm not right on the ball. Um, and uh, the other thing is, I haven't had a, a lot of time to prepare the show today, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't. And I and I, I don't really, I, I don't feel, you know, hundred percent. Yeah, I haven't done the Carl. Right. Look, have you finished that sentence? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I don't make me laugh because it, it hurts as well. Sure. And uh, the other, the other, there's another side effect to me being a little bit hungover and and. Um, or, or drunk, or whatever, is that I can be annoying. Right, yes, yes. Because I just to amuse myself, I sort of like turn my body off a little bit and just poke and uh, like that and annoy people and that. I want to, mm. I want to sort of like. Well, climb. you do the physical equivalent of freewheeling. <laughs> yeah, don't yeah. You? You just I, let... sort of, uh, I sort of want to climb on Carl and go to sleep on him. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yes. They, they, they both annoy him and it'd be comfortable. Yes. yes. Which is. Uh, you know, can be annoying. Could, uh, uh, quick, just a little thing, just to make this show a bit easier. If you'd put your hand up when you went want one of us to speak, because it's not quite. I'm not quite sure when um, when the sentences are finished. The hands are up. Okay, good. So um, the hands are up. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. Okay. Are you going to just keep them up the rest of the show, or no? Uh -huh. yeah, that, like uh, Carl, do what you've what you. Huh? <laughs> good. All right. Do you want to? I mean, is there an excuse as to why you're a bit hungover? Too much drunk? wine. Okay. All right. Last night, yeah. Yeah. Good, good. Thanks okay. Because this is the only, I mean, this is the only work you've got to do all week, isn't it? <laughs> like, unless I'm very much mistaken. You don't have to do anything. You just uh, sit at home eating, eating cheese. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then occasionally you do a bit of sort of shadow boxing. <laughs> and that's exercise. <laughs> and then you sit out, uh, sit and watch TV. Yeah. Is that roughly what you did this week? Yeah. Uh huh. So this is the only two hours you had to do anything for all week. This is the only you had to prepare for yeah, this. Yeah, but the, who, who can plan a hangover? <laughs> right. You know, you'd think, uh, Carl, you said you had some stuff. Yeah. What have you got? <laughs> yeah, I, le Carl, I, le I love the fact that, whereas I was a little bit slow, Carl there leapt into action <laughs> to keep this show afloat. Keep the pace up. Go on. Right, well, uh, <laughs> Carl, are you hungover as well, or? <laughs> I'm, ju I'm just a bit annoyed because I'm with you. Do you know sure. what I mean? Yeah. He hasn't got much to do all week. You're having a laugh. What? What angers me is that I, I kind of hope that maybe I could have quite a long career in radio and I sort of feel like I'm, yeah. I don't know, the word sinking ship. <laughs> yeah. Those words spring to mind. But. Cause it feels like, I mean, Carl, you're, you're just a chancer anyway. You weren't even supposed to be on air and you, we've made you into something of a household name and that's cool. Household <laughs> name. And Ricky's already a celebrity. He's got it stitched up. He's got corporates. He's got, yeah. you know, voiceover work. But I've got nothing. I'm running on empty. I've got, I, you know, yeah. I'm not, uh, nothing. I've got nothing. I'm sort of dependent a bit on this. Yeah. Financially. 
and Go on, then. What and you, you two are sort of bringing it down, really. Right. Do you reckon I can get my own show, Carl? Carl. Yeah. Carl. Tell them what I did out there with a bit. No, Carl. Carl, tell them how funny I was out there with a bit in that a minute ago. So anyway, come on, I'm bored of this. I'll tell you what. Will we, will we tease them with what we've got coming up next? Yeah, Carl, yeah. tease us after the next Cause record. Cause I think we've already got them for yeah. two hours. Yeah, we've got them. We've hooked them, Carl, don't worry, this is textbook radio. Is it, what's this? Badly drawn boy. Yeah. Badly drawn boy. You were right. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Carl, you were saying what's coming up? Right, over the next two hours then, last week, uh, <sighs> was a bit of a mess. Don't be silly. So I've sorted it out. Uh, We'll be doing the same features. Right. <laughs> we've got, uh, I think that was the reason it was a mess, <laughs> if I'm honest. Well, uh, You've we've tightened, it, you tightened, you've tightened it, it, you tightened it you tightened the ship. Tightened it up, and okay. also keeping people for longer. Okay. Right, so tell me, tell me your plans. What, what, what have you come up tell with? Tell me then? your th ethos behind this, then. Right. Always show your workings, Carl. Always show your workings, Carl. All right, then. So, last week we started good sort of play on words that we had going. Go on. Um, the well-known film educating Rita. Yeah. <laughs> Right. <laughs> That's become, thanks to Carl Pilkington's brain, it's I've become- I've tweaked it a bit and now it's educating Ricky. Brilliant. Right? And that was a new feature we started last week, if you weren't listening, where I teach Ricky stuff. What did you teach me? Uh, taught, taught you about that little Chinese hairy kid. Yeah, you yeah. didn't teach me anything. You said there was a kid that was born that was slightly hairy as another Chinese you people. I where the saying chewing the fat came from. I enjoyed that. was that. good. That, that was, was interesting. Good. And, uh, and a man who had a beard because he was man, being abducted for yeah. three days. <laughs> yeah. Again, that was rubbish. <laughs> lest, that did that, <laughs> lest we forget. That taught me more about you than about alien abduction. But what happened last week is, go on. Uh, we sort of talked about it all in one go. And you can't. Where is this? Where you've done what? You've spread it out <laughs> over the show. Well, I spread it across the two hours because I Brilliant. always found that if you try to be taught too much in one go, you just can't take it in and it'll be wasted. <laughs> <laughs> so is that your experience of school? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They taught you in three minute bursts. Yeah, and, and not every day. Yeah. Every other when month. When you felt like it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's what we're gonna do. Right. Uh, so also, we've got educating Ricky coming up. That's educating Ricky stuff. across the two hours. Okay, look. And, and what I do is I've made little headlines again and you decide which story you wanna go All for of them. first. Well, give me the first yeah. headline. No, 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 not yet. We'll do that in Well, a give bit. me a teaser. Hang on a minute, I'm telling you what else. Oh, right? yeah. We've I'm also problem. got, uh, we've also got, we started it last week, yeah. rock, rock Busters. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that was a triumph. Yeah. yeah. I think we went wrong there. Why? By letting you do it? Doing it on air? Uh Not thinking it through. Yeah. Bit of that. Okay, so what's the rules on Rockbusters? We're gonna do Rockbusters, okay. but, but you email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk when you know the answers, okay. right? And sort of round near the end of the show, right, yep. we'll give out the answers then. So if they think they know the answers, they've got to hang about. Rick, I should tell you now, um, I'm don't not, think- I'm, I'm not hanging about. <laughs> 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 don't think that, um, don't, don't think that the listeners are gonna go away empty handed uh, cause there's I, I some was worried about that. I was worried about that. <laughs> I can tell you where, like, don't worry because, um, Carl has sorted out some top quality prizes. Good, good. Um, first up, this is stuff that people can win and yeah. be excited about this. First up, it's a DVD of The Office. I don't Whoa. know how he got hold of it. I don't know how he got hold of it. Go Cause on. they are like gold dust. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, um, this is the second gift. Now, bear in mind, this is, I, I don't know where he's rummaged that from. This is an XFM compilation album. Oh, He's yeah. managed to sort that out somehow. Excellent. I don't know how he's sorted that out. Yeah. There's another compilation album which has got, uh, some sort of, uh, indie type hits of yeah. these. But this oh, is but, possibly- Have you got a film to give away? <laughs> well, I'm glad you've asked. What film though? Cause I know you're a big fan of DVDs. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, It's yeah, one yeah, of the yeah. big yeah. hot releases that everyone's <laughs> keen to get their hands yeah. on. Not like, arbitrary, is it? It's not the only <laughs> one that- this, this film title will don't be an arbitrary film, will it? It'll be a big- Rick, I don't want you thinking that the film that Khan has sorted out here is that he's sourced for it's just an arbitrary thing that Go you on. that you wouldn't get. You could buy for three ninety nine <laughs> in H and V. Yeah, right. They're yeah. giving these away big, with those big baskets. Exactly. I don't know who is phoning up to try and win this, okay. but you can be. Uh, if lucky this winner. is your favourite film, it's yours. Exactly. Okay. Um, but this is yeah. This is the big um, the big star prize. <laughs> this is, is the it? one you're all playing for. It's Children of the Corn. <laughs> Stephen King's Children of the Corn. <laughs> it's a widescreen, a widescreen presentation on DVD. Uh, imagine getting that and going, excellent. <laughs> we can watch this now. But Rick, I mean, uh, let me just run through some of the cast. Peter Horton. <laughs> <laughs> Pete Horton's in it, and, ah. uh, and that's about I, I'll it. I'll tell you what, I don't want to give it away if Hort is in it. <laughs> exactly. I'd love to see his performance Hort again. Is in it. Uh, also he, Linda Hamilton, I know you're all- Linda Hamilton, all of, she, of, pays, Linda she plays a uh, piece of corn. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and um, I don't know what- I don't, I've not seen Children of the Corn, I could be wrong, but yeah. um, yeah. it but says- uh, it, it Carl, says when you were around the office, why don't you start like, throwing <laughs> like a mouse mat and a pair of scissors and a pencil? Because that yeah. is just arbitrary. That's that. an arbitrary selection That's next week's stuff. 
<laughs> but, uh, right. but also, I should say, we also have some, uh, this is a little bit more exciting, we've also got some tickets for, uh, DJ Shadow. Yeah. Who's performing at the Brixton Academy this he's evening. Good, he's good uh, at DJing. So he's very good at DJing and plays scratching all the, and the Plays like. all the records that you want. <laughs> exactly. Plays all the records that you want. Don't, don't, uh, don't bring your own, he's got them all. He's <laughs> yeah. got them all. He's, I've seen him arrive, he's got two big bags of them. Yeah. So there's, uh, there's three pairs oh, of, uh, DJ sick. Shadow tickets. We'll give those away later as well. Is don't, there any just, don't just start phoning arbitrarily now. No. We'll give those away in our Is own there any time. lemonade? <laughs> Sorry? I need some lemonade. Okay, well, while we sort out some lemonade, let's play a tune. <laughs> Come on, Cut, don't, what's wrong? Whoa, Carl! Ryan Adams from, uh, his new album, Demolition. Brilliant. A track called Nuclear. Yeah. I've just, I've, um, found a new way of making it more exciting. When it, when you're talking about something, I'll go, yeah, brilliant, <laughs> agreeing with you. Okay. Making it all interesting. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, I can see that, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, it's a really good album, that. Yeah. And, brilliant. um, yeah, it's brilliant. apparently just a collection of sort of demos and songs you had lying around. Oh, I wish I had that. Yeah. Um, you know we're giving away those DVDs and Children Look of the Corn. Look forward to Children of the Corn. I've got an interesting anecdote about, um, the, uh, The Office. Carl, we, we, me and Carl went out, right? Um, and, uh, with, um, me and Jane, Carl and Johnny and Gigi, wasn't it? Carl, no, I'm talking no. to you. Wasn't G it? No. Wasn't- uh, Gigi was Is it important to win? No. Okay. But we're walking down the street. Carl was there, though, and you can back me up on this. Um, we had a curry. We were walking back. And, uh, this little funny homeless fella, didn't he? Mm. He, uh, oh, I've got to tell it before, before I go, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> he, 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 uh, he came up to me, right? And he recognised it. Uh, 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 talking's more difficult than you think. Right? Um, and he came up to me and he went, he went, oh, he said, I've just nicked five of your DVDs from HMV. <laughs> and he shook my hand. He was so happy with it. And I went, right, excellent. He went, all I do is I just swing the bag over the top, like that, <laughs> when, when I'm going out. And he had a bag full of DVDs, didn't he? And what? he was, he was so pleased to tell me that he'd <laughs> stolen. <laughs> that great. He said, that he said they're going like hot cakes. <laughs> yeah, he said they're going like, of course they are! Yeah, <laughs> you're looking them. Yeah. I know. We get paid yeah. for them though, don't we? So we, not the stolen ones. Don't we? No. What do you mean? Did you sign them for him? I <laughs> <laughs> know you were, you idiot. <laughs> what, so, um, he just nicked five- Yeah. Well, yeah. you say he was homeless, was he? Well, I, I, he, I don't know, maybe. No. Surely, how would he have seen the show? He just walked past Curry's one, one, one morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the Teddy idea. Seen a trailer for it, thought, hmm, interesting. I don't know if he was homeless, I didn't, I didn't go into his home sure. life. But he shook his hand though and- But he's, he made Carl look smart, do you know what I mean? Mm. Mm. So, uh, but he wasn't, he wasn't Northern, was he? No, he was like, um, do you know in the, in the fast show with Paul Whitehouse, when he did that character, that shady character? Yes. The spit of that, you know, was like it? a ponytail, t-shirt on, a bit too big for him, and just the movement and everything really like a, you know, a cockney little cheeky chap type yeah, person. Yeah, a little cockney cheeky chap. And, uh, yeah, he just said, oh, he said, oh, it's you. He said, uh, yeah. you you got your DVDs, got six of them from HMV, going like hot cakes they are. And then off he went, whistling. Yeah. Well chuffed with himself. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Going like hot cakes. What, what, what's he gonna do with them then? Probably sell them. Yeah. How does he sell them? Where does he sell them? Does he go up to people and go, do you want an office DVD? They're not nicked. <laughs> yeah. Four quid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Are they stolen? No. No, 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 no. They've still got the tags on them. Well, yeah. it's like those people who, um, you're, you're those cab drivers that you'll meet at sort of three in the morning who've just got a car. Yeah. And just went out with a car. Yeah. And just, I'll, I'll, I'll pick people up and charge them. Yeah. I got in one once, I said to him, uh, the guy just pulled up, I said, uh, he said, I was in like, uh, East London, I'm going back to, uh, North London. I said, uh, yeah, going to, uh, Swiss Cottage. He went, sure, hop in. <laughs> we set off. He went, do you know the way? <laughs> I said, well, not really, no, I, th I thought you'd know the way, you're in a cabbie, aren't you? He went, no, I don't really know the way there. I, don't, I, said, I said, have you got an A to Z? He went, no. I thought, well, if you're gonna go out just on the, w you know, just winging it as a cab driver, yeah. two things, take a map and a torch. He didn't have yeah. either. He said, uh, well, I'll probably get to Camden. I said, well, I'll direct you from there. Drove on for about five minutes, making conversation. About five minutes later, he went, do you know the way to Camden? <laughs> I thought you knew the way to Camden. I don't really know the way. I thought <laughs> oh, it was loot. I mean, let I, me out. You know, four yeah, quid. Exactly. And that's I, I can't. I don't know who's got that sort of time on their hands that they just think it's three in the morning. I'm, I'm at a loose end. Mm. I think I'll go out doing a bit of cabbing. Wow. Well, yeah. Because your dad was a cabbie, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Yeah, couldn't stand it, but it's, it's good money. He was a prof He wasn't like a chancer though. Black what cow. was Black what cow. was he what was he doing when he put that little Forrest Gump in a in a weedy bin? That was uh, that was part of the cab company thing. They had to do like a charity event. Once a year, and he did it one year. Never asked him again. Tell the story again. I I no, I'd rather not because we, we got a few sort of uh, complaints about it. 
Why? Why do you get complaints about it? Because it's because he put a kid in a bin and it's not the thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> so. But we could use it as a sort of sobering lesson for people. <laughs> yeah, tell it like a, tell it like a, you know, don't, yeah. you shouldn't do it. No, it's, it's I, yeah, but that's how I did it last time, but people still didn't like it. All the stuff I tell you, I don't, you know, we don't take the mickey out of people on purpose. No. We, it's real life, innit? And mm. that goes on in life. Yeah. My dad I, was saying that in hospital, though. Do you know how he was in hospital? Yeah. You know, he did some jokes about old people and that. And he said, at the end of the day, if something makes you laugh, it's funny. Mm. And if it makes you laugh, you can't help laughing, can you? Do you True know what enough. I mean? So, what are you meant to do? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. laughing's good for you. Yeah. So, even But being laughed at isn't as good for you, is it? No, but there's probably more people laughing at one person, so if you balance it out, <laughs> there's only one person who's upset and there's a bunch of people laughing. <laughs> so, it's, it's- That's genius! Give me an example of that, give me an example. Well, for instance, Carl Pilkington as he talks and the people listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, give me an example of like, so, uh, uh, you know. I can't, well I can't because again, that's what I'm saying, I can't tell you the story. Because yeah. there might be someone out there who, this person might even be listening and think, I forgot about that and you brought it all back to me. <laughs> Yeah. So, so I, I prefer to leave it, but I think people know- <laughs> Why did he put him in the bin in the first place? Because he was getting out of hand. What was he doing though? You see, I can't explain- He can! Don't be silly! I prefer to- to leave it, honestly. What, what, what was he doing? Was he annoying him? He was annoying me dad and the other people in the cab. Right. And he thought, how can I deal with this mm -hmm. before it gets too out of hand? Yeah. He pulled over and put the lad in a wheelie bin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna burst. So we'll, we'll leave that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. How old was the kid? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure, but I mean, it was a trip to sort of Blackpool. So <laughs> I'm guessing. <laughs> Do you think it was one of the rides? 17. This is rubbish. Right. 17? Yeah. Oh, he's quite an old lad then. So, so a big lad. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's. let's and uh, did he pick him up? He picks him up and put him in a wheelie bin. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the way back, he got him back again. He said, "Right, you won't do that again." On the way back, yeah, he left him there for a bit. He left him there. What? They went to Blackpool yeah. and he left the kid in the wheelie bin. Yeah. Did but, he? Yeah. What was the kid in the wheelie bin when he drove back? Yeah. Did he not get out? No, because how do you get out? It's tricky, isn't it? And <laughs> he wasn't a normal kid, was he? Let's let's leave it. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't a normal kid. Right, right then. So uh... is your father in prison? <laughs> Oh, I God. think he should be. Can we oh. put a song on? Yeah, go on then. Be there. Come back around. XFM. 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkerton. I asked Carl in the week, right, what animal would he never trust? <laughs> Even if he, he got to know it and it was a pet and everything, what animal would he never trust? What was it? Was this, uh, a wasp? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Why wouldn't you trust a wasp, Carl? I just think that, uh um, shifty? All, all other animals, if you get them at an early age, <laughs> you can sort of <laughs> make them like you. You can that. train them, <laughs> A wasp. Nothing. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything, you, do you think there's anything you could do that would kind of, uh, win the favour and win the trust of a wasp? What would you have to do, do you think? Well, if you had it from a little grub. Yeah. And you fed it, he had his favourite marmalade. It doesn't affect it though, does it? A bee <laughs> dies, doesn't it, if it does it, so it's not gonna like use it willy nilly. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy for you to say. But a wasp. <laughs> I, 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 I Do you, what they, you think they sting arbitrarily? They just sting for the fun of it. They're like, like sort of like delinquent insects. Like delinquent I think so, because last yeah. night, right, I mean, this is part of educating Ricky in a way, but something I learned last night mm. was that tarantulas only bite you if you annoy it. Right. They don't, they don't, mm. do you know how people say, oh, if you're in a sleeping bag living in a jungle, a spider will get in there and it'll bite you. Yeah, Apparently yeah. not, you've got to really annoy it. The thing that it really hates is having its leg sort of twisted. <laughs> it hates having its leg <laughs> twisted. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. But, but that's more for- Is that what they said in the documentary? <laughs> no, no, no actually said, almost certainly not, Steve. <laughs> almost certainly not. Were you watching not. the documentary? No, 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 I was reading it. Oh, you are reading it? And, um, it was this guy- Was it scrawled on the wall scene <laughs> like a public toilet? No, I'll tell <laughs> no, you, no. I'll, I'll tell you more about that later. Oh, it's right, part of the, the uh, thing. Okay. So, uh, if you don't trust the, the evil wasp, what uh, animal do you trust? What's your favourite? Well, I, I also, uh, I said to him, right, supposing your, your mind, right, was put, your mind got put into any animal, right, and you've got to get from where you are now, right, to Glasgow, right, as an animal, right, but 
the authorities will be looking out for it. <laughs> okay. And it's shooting you, right? And, uh, what, what, you went through loads, didn't you? I was thinking about it for, t it must have took me about an hour. So your yeah. mind, sorry, your mind has been put into an animal. And then, yeah, so it's you and, and you, this animal thinking right, yeah. you've got to get to somewhere. But the, but the maybe, maybe know you're in the animal? Yeah, maybe your body is in Glasgow or something and you've got to get this animal to get to you so it can transfer its mind back into your body. But yeah. the but government knows that I'm- oh, <laughs> we've all had that conversation. <laughs> So the government, the government's going, Carl can't have his own brain back. <laughs> I only have it with Carl, don't yeah, I? These conversations yeah. go on, yeah. So yeah, so you're, you're on the way. So think about it, you, you think about it just for a second, so, let's recap. <laughs> your, your body's in Scotland. <laughs> right. He's the only one that takes my question seriously. Your, your brain is in London. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. And there's like loads of security and stuff looking out in the sky for animals or looking on, on the field seeing what's trying- looking a bit suspicious. <laughs> yeah. Trying- trying to get to your body- And they're shooting the brain, them. And they're shooting everything and killing all the animals. What thing would you pick to get your brain to Scotland that wouldn't get caught? And I reckon I- I've, I've got the answer. A wasp? No, cos think about it, a lot of people get irritated if it sort of wanted to get a lift <laughs> in a car going down the motorway, if someone's driving it's a, it's a wasp yeah. in the car, it's a yeah. nightmare. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. <laughs> cause a right accident. Yeah. So think of something that people wouldn't, you know. And the clock's ticking as well. You're you know, taking you this really very seriously, yeah. aren't you, Carl? You've only got a couple you have of thought, You've given this a lot of thought, haven't you? You have. Yeah. Um, so, uh, something with speed. Yeah, it's something got that can travel quite speedily. Well, well that's, yeah. well, And something that's also inconspicuous. Yeah. 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 Is that the sort of thing you're- you're- well, that's what you're doing? Yeah. Um, and is it a- is it a creature that's, uh, that's native to this country? Yeah. Right. Yeah, it is. I've got no idea, Carl, what are you think? Tell him. A flea. A flea? Think Tell him why. It. Think about it. Um, right, this flea, it's got my brain. <laughs> it's dead small, the flea. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks right. for clearing that up. <laughs> yeah. And it's- it- so it goes, right, I've got to get to Scotland. So it jumps on someone who's going to Euston Station. Right. They- they don't know it's there. No. The government can't see it. Government <laughs> 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 can't see it! Steve! Get think of that <laughs> then! Think of you just tuned in! Yeah. Now, uh, People get on the train, goes to Glasgow or Edinburgh, wherever in Scotland mm. it is. It jumps off, it goes right, uh, jumps on someone else who's going the way it needs to go. Gets there, still no one's seen it. Jumps on me, I get me brain back. Yeah. The government are like, Phew. But, and you feel confident that your brain would fit in that of a fleas? Well, you said there was no problem with the size of it. You said you could- That certainly wouldn't be. So. No. <laughs> no. You, I, I pretty much you could download everything you know into a flea. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, that's genius. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, What would you thinking. rather have, right? Um, roller skate feet, and there's little wheels, right? Uh, chopstick hands. Yeah? Mm. Instead of hands, chopsticks instead of hands. Wheels instead of feet. Yeah. Right? Or acne? Uh, How big are the wheels? <laughs> <laughs> Can I take you guys back to the old school? Do you mind if we take, take it back to the old school? Well, yeah, what are you gonna do? What are you uh, gonna lay on me? No, I just- maybe a bit of a Del Sol. Yeah, 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 Is that yeah. a Is it problem yeah. going back to the old school? No, 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 We don't need to go to the old school. As long as it's vinyl shit. <laughs> it is indeed. Slam it on. Oh, I don't know, wait. There we go. Del Sol. Old school. Brilliant, uh, brilliant, school brilliant. Jam name Saturday. Brilliant. Yeah. Good stuff. Carl, so, um, educating Ricky. You were gonna tease us now with some of the big headlines. He's dancing. He really is dancing there. Yeah. Right. Right. So. Okay. The way this works is. What would you rather be, Carl? I teach you. Superheroes. Three things. A frog boy. Right. Yeah, that you could leap. You could leap onto a house, but you had to go to frog, you had to go bleh, first and leap onto a house. You're, 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 you're this frog boy. Right, and, th and that, that could be useful, couldn't it? That's very useful, yeah. Right, um, amploid, where you've got your, your hands and microphones, and you can just talk into your hand and your whole body. You can, it's like 100 decibels. You can go, Oi! Come here! And you, people can hear you from a miles away. Amploid. Right? <laughs> right? Or, or Sado, right? And that means that you can go up to anyone and go, all right? And they just, they don't know why, they just get fed up for the whole day. <laughs> Which of those would you prefer? <laughs> don't answer now, have a think about it, have a think about it. The frog thing, do I look like one or? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're just you and your little Ben Sherman shirt and everything. And they go, and people walk along and they go, oh look at that young child! From, on that roof! He's gonna fall, which frog boy was here? And you go, and you go down, you go, and they go, here's, here's him! And they don't recognise you when you're squatting, they go, oh, I don't know who you are. Mm. And you leap up there and say, but you come back and they go, where's Frogboy? And you're standing up and you go, I don't know, he went that way. 
Yeah, I'll probably have that one. Would probably you? go with Fogboy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, go on. Right, so, uh, <laughs> did that just go out? <laughs> All that. <laughs> <laughs> go on, I've got a bad. Hey, look, Rick, Carl's really planned this show. He's, yeah. he's really worked out. He yeah. came in early, he was writing things down. And this lady's just coming up with rubbish. And like you're just talking rubbish. So, Carl, I know you've right. been thinking this through. What have you got? So, educating Ricky, we did it last week. It's where I teach you some stuff. But rather <laughs> than just teach you something, a tease you, so you want to know more, so you want to yeah. take in information, <laughs> right? So <laughs> if only people had taught you like that. Carl. So and also, it's the name of a film, sort yeah, of, yeah, nearly yeah. coming up soon. Henry the Eighth and his well, how many wives? <laughs> Come back tomorrow, Carl, to find out. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> well, the little the little uh, <laughs> headlines have got to sort of tease you with the story. Yeah, this is gonna hurt me, and I'm not very well. Go on. Right, we've got, uh, <laughs> so, so this is what, sorry, I'm, I, I've just got lost for a minute there. It's Educating Ricky. This is Educating Ricky. Yeah. And these are the stories that you're, these are the things you're gonna tell him. Yeah. But these are just headline versions. These are headlines this because not the actual then I think people will remember things. Okay, alright, so you, yeah, you know, yeah. Sort of bullet points. Who can forget points. hairy Chinese boy? <laughs> Indeed, mm. I shall never forget that. Yeah. So, <laughs> first <laughs> headline, yeah. uh, Ooh. don't do that to it, you know it can't live without an head. <laughs> I've got no idea. It could be about the French Revolution, it could be about anything. I know what it is! <laughs> you, no, you think you do. But no, no, it's, it's not what I taught you! Is it, is it the fact that cockroaches can live for nine days without a head? That's part of it, but it's something different as well. That's oh, I thought we'd bring okay. Up. Okay, brilliant. So uh, that's something to Next do one, do you won't work it out. Um, if only it was raining. <laughs> brilliant. Okay. Brilliant. And the last one, uh, what's tomato with you? <laughs> <laughs> What tomato with you? Yeah. <laughs> Look how pleased he is. You so you're you're obsessed with puns, aren't you? At the moment, Kay? You, you, it you just works. It. I think it works. Yeah. <laughs> we love puns. So there you go. So okay. which of those are you going to choose, right? Oh, well, I'm going to have to choose. Don't do that. You know, it can't live without it. <laughs> Can we oh. play a tune and we'll come back with yeah, that? Yeah, I can find out what that is. <laughs> yeah. Wow, what a history lesson that's going to be. Andy Warhols and Bohemian Like You on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl, what's the story then? Right, so what, what did you say you're going for? You've got your three titles, your three teasers. Well, I think I'm gonna go for Don't Do That To It. You know it can't live without an edge. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> right. Right. So this is uh, educating Ricky for those yeah. that have just tuned in. Now, something that Ricky told me about when he was educating me was that a cockroach, if he cut his head off, um, it lives for a week. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And the only reason it dies is it can't take on water. Sure. It, it doesn't have a great time in that week though, does no. it? I mean, it doesn't no. get much done, I don't know. It just, it just needs water and cause it can't find any, uh -huh. like its eyes, it eventually dies. Yeah. Right? No. So, so it what- No, it's not, that's not, it's, it's anyway. it can't drink. Anyway. So, with the, have you heard that one about worms? <laughs> okay. All right, I've gone. If you cut a worm in half, yeah. um, a lot of people have said in the past that It'll turn into two worms. <laughs> right. But that isn't actually true. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> no, it's a, it used to be like, you know, uh, kids, kids at school said, said that. it on, yeah, kids at school and stuff. You yeah. So that, you know, a lot of people think that. Don't pick him up on stuff, Steve. It's bad enough. Sure. So, but what they can do, if you get a worm, right, and you find out which end its head's at. Right. <laughs> If you sort of, you've got its head there on the left hand side, right? And if you sort of cut it in half, right? But not in half. So there's more of its neck than the tail, if you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. The bit that you've cut off will sort of die, and the rest of the worm will get better. So in a way, you can cut it in half and it'll survive, but only one half will survive. Okay. Yeah? What have you learned now? I wish you hadn't chosen that one. <laughs> <laughs> what, <to be> <laughs> I know, I know, I Because it's not, it's nothing, is it? <laughs> yeah, you know that joke, you know that joke, um, how do you tell a worm's head from its eye? You put, put it in a bowl of flour and wait till it farts. Yes. Right? I told my mate that, right, and he went, what if it coughs? <laughs> yeah? Yeah? Yeah. You, yeah? So, it is, there is a bit of truth in, in that myth of cutting one in half. Where did you get this information? I don't understand where you get this that, information from. That was from, from the Fatian Times. 
<laughs> it was right. like the myth, the myth about worms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the big, that was the big article that week. Did it take you as long to read that article? <laughs> As it took me to tell us just then. <laughs> I like the fact that it starts off debunking a myth yeah. that we had not heard of anyway. <laughs> exactly. You know the the big the big thing about cutting a worm in half and making two worms. <laughs> no. no. Yeah. What's the other one? What's I the mean, other one? It's not like? the thing to do either. By the way, don't don't go doing it. No. Cool. It's not very nice. But, it's cool. But it can get bad. And it's pointless. Do. Yeah. There's no scientific worth. Yeah. In that. Well, there you go. Okay then. So the others now, you what see what I do. What's no, I'll tell you the other titles, you're not having them yet. That's that's the whole idea of this. People will be driving or about to go out doing the shopping, they'll think about that now. What was the other two? Well the other two They were... won't think about that, they've forgotten <laughs> no, that. No, they will, they will. <laughs> no, they've forgotten that already. <laughs> if only it was raining and what's tomato with you. Right, that, you've I'm looking forward to that one. No, you've got a town no, tomato no, with no, you. <laughs> look look what's happening, you see, you already want more of education. And this is what listeners will be doing. You, I tell you, you, I wish you were a teacher. I so <laughs> wish you were a teacher. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? And kids would be saying, I know it's half past three, but I don't want to go home, I want more. Yeah. And that's, that's what I'm doing with you. I'm teaching you. Why are you teaching me <laughs> things about not to cut worms in half and what's tomato with you? Please tell me what's tomato with you, Carl. In a bit. In a, no. bit, in a bit. Rick, what? I'd say he, he's, he's thought the show through, he's yeah. teasing the audience, you're excited, they're listening. <laughs> yeah, maybe. W yeah. So listen, I think we should all- cause we got your competition to squeeze in. We got all these great good goodies. Let's not this forget- Hello, children of the corn! I do feel we slightly guilty that- But, but, but now, this is Carl Pilberton show. I, d I don't think we should have our names involved. <laughs> no. It's not fair, is it? And I think we should give Carl the money. I don't want my yeah. name to this. <laughs> it's a Ricky Gervais show. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> right, the quiz. Yeah. We'll, uh, well, we get that out of the way because they've only got an hour to start. Don't you worry about that, Carl. I've already got this one. I'm thinking, I'm thinking on your terms now. Let's play a tune. We'll come back with the, with the big competition information. All right? Money Mark. We've got a, a classic from Money Mark from his album Push the Button. Play that, Carl. And afterwards. Are you excited? You got the competition? Look at his face. He's so excited yeah, now. He's, he's thought this through. He's loving it. Rock busters. <laughs> Rock busters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Agreed. Yeah. 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 Should we do that? Yeah. Brilliant. Go on. You're rejuvenated, are you? Yeah. Let's go for it. Let's take an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Hangover yeah. finished with? Yeah. It's yeah. all done. Done. Good. Done. Add some water. Excellent. <laughs> That'll often sort it out. Yeah. Flea, well done. Flea is the best way. He's just had an argument with a punter. Someone mm. called up and said, I don't think a flea's very good. How would the flea uh, know? Tell him, tell him what you said. He said, how would the flea know what train to get on? He went, he gets to Houston and look at the timetable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he, he went, he went, we're not gonna agree on this. He got annoyed at him, cause the bloke said he'd be better to be a wasp. <laughs> yeah. A wasp would not survive, would it, on, you know, a virgin train or something. <laughs> so. Why, why wouldn't it? It just wouldn't because people really don't like wasps, so somebody sure. would end up clouting it and killing it and that yeah. brain would never get to his body, yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, it is quiz time. Three. <laughs> this is what, this is the moment we've uh, all been looking forward to. Uh, <laughs> do you want to, do you want to, uh, do you want to tease them with the prizes? <laughs> no. <laughs> not really, because they no. might not bother phoning in. Or, <laughs> or it's not a phone, or is it? It's an email. Alright. Okay, yeah. well, let me, a quick reminder then, we've got to the office. I don't want people to think that we'll just keep plugging the office DVD. <laughs> we've got nothing else to give away. No, no one gives anything away. No, no that's why. hanging around in Carl's little room. Did you get a guy from HMV just to nick- did you get a guy just nick these from HMV? Did you get a guy the ponytail? Was that yeah. the story? Right. So we got the Office uh, DVD, obviously. Uh, we got uh, the remix, uh, XFM's remix album, uh, Volume Two. That's uh, sort of remixes of various tunes. Quite a good little compilation album here. One of those kind of the best Coldplay, Travis, Oasis, blah 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 albums in the world Excellent. ever. Excellent. Uh, some of them because yeah. nothing in the library. <laughs> exactly. Have a look on there. Four Alanis Morissette, nine Catatonia. <laughs> I just counted that. But I think. Uh, the big one, the big star prize that you're all playing for is, of course, the DVD <laughs> widescreen version of Children of the Corn, <laughs> Stephen King's horror film. Lest we forget, it's got Peter Horton. <laughs> as the star. <laughs> so, so look forward to that. Um, are we g we're gonna uh, give Shadow away separately, are we? We're gonna uh, do that separately? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll give away the, sh the DJ Shadow tickets at a separate Right, so we're playing for those DVDs and CDs. And what and we're it's an email do, competition, don't bother e phoning Email, in. yeah, the phone lines are lighting up a bit, so put the phone down, get the computer started up, yep. and it's ricky.gervais at xfn.co.uk if you know the answers to these, right? And the way it works, we did it last week, but if you didn't hear it, I'll give you some initials and like a bit of a cryptic clue. So, and, uh, you work out who the band is or the artist, okay. right? It's always, it's always a band or an artist, it's not any TV programs and that. Uh -huh. So, uh, say like last week we had, um, uh, we had S, didn't we? And it was, uh, better than the average homeless person and that was Supertramp, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not always XFM music, it can be anything. And there's three of them. Um, they've got to get all three of them. They've got to get all three and email in. Show. 
Oh, yeah. how, how long this intro so far has taken. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but, but, but here we go then. Right. right. First initials, L R. L R. L R. Okay. Right? Yeah. And the cryptic clue is, uh, I'll You should have thought it through. You should have thought it out before you came in. Yeah, yeah. cryptic clue. You've got it. Yeah. Um, I'll take that book to the toilet with me. I'll take that book to the toilet with me. Yeah. Yeah. L R. L R. I'll take that book to the toilet with me. And don't shout out if you know the answer, cause- No. Nope. No idea, Carl. No idea. Right, okay, so there's one. Right, the second one, F L. F L. This one's actually been emailed in as a suggestion. Okay. Uh, that person who's done that, don't email in, cause you're disqualified. <laughs> from the comp. Uh, so- <laughs> I'd love him to be a teacher. <laughs> so- It'd be great, wouldn't it? Just to see him one day. Can't we do that? Can't we get you a placement somewhere to, for you to teach history to sort of like, you know, 14 year olds? I think like. science, Rick. Science would be good, yeah. Right. Uh, 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 I'll tell you what, Go uh, there, you got a lot of, um, t just quickly, for me, Carl, explain, say, um, what can we get him to explain that everyone uh, learns the kid science? Uh, Photosynthesis. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So, F L, right? F L are the letters and the cryptic clue. Blow the candles out before you eat the cake. Blow the candles out before you eat the cake. Yeah. Blow okay. the candles out before you eat the cake. The letters there, F L. Alright. Right. We've got L R, we've got F L. Yeah. And finally, the third one, N S. Hold on, how many have they got to get? Three. Three. Don't worry, there's no more after this, really. Right. N S. How can I wash up in something shaped like that? <laughs> <laughs> right? That's one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, so very quickly recap, just in case we missed any. Oh. LR is the first one. LR, I'll take that book to the toilet with me. Cryptic clue. N, uh, we had FL, blow the candles out before you eat the cake. And the final one, NS, how can I wash up in something shaped like that? If you think you know the bands, you just email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk, you win the DVDs, the CDs, and uh, that's it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it, it's great, isn't it? I could just, I could sit here and watch him all day do this. Well, wow. um, so ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Uh, and we'll give the answers out just before, you know, we finish, cause okay. then we'll keep them up. All right. Uh, Carl, Brilliant. just briefly, this is, uh, module, uh, 4A. Uh, natural history, yeah. yeah. Just, just briefly explain, um, uh, evolution. So, you know, natural selection, origin of the species, Darwin, like, just briefly describe. That's the monkey thing. <laughs> <laughs> it is, isn't it? Oh, well done. Yeah, go Where on. You, Carl? What, we, don't you have fancy playing? Um, Rick. <laughs> I know you're always keen to rejuvenate the reputations of certain artists when you think maybe they've been kind of unfairly treated in yeah. the, uh, history of rock and roll. Yeah. I'll tell you a band I've always thought has been treated badly. Yeah. The Lemonheads. Go on. You with me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lemonheads, if I could talk I'd tell you. Yeah. He wrote some good little tunes, yeah, Dando, yeah. before he it's went to potty. What would you rather have, right? Hey, Carl, would you rather have a lemon for a head, <laughs> a radio for a head, um, what other band is there with something head? Radiohead. Oh, you've done that? Yeah. <laughs> or a talking head. <laughs> <laughs> right. Third one. No, but you don't know what- it, it, no, because you've got you and then you've got uh, someone else's head on top and it, it doesn't shut up. It's my head. It's my talking head coming out of your head. Yeah, so a radio head, just a radio head and you can tune in, right? You know you said there, Carl, that <laughs> wasps were one of the most irritating <laughs> things on the planet. Can I offer another suggestion? <laughs> yeah. You with me on that? All right, all right. I am <laughs> no, today. go on then. Okay, Educating we, Ricky, we got, we got, we got two left, haven't we? I'm looking forward to this. We've still got these. two more. We've still got, uh, if only it was raining. Yeah. And, uh, what's tomato with you? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I wish the <laughs> listeners could see how happy he was when we started getting emails coming in. Oh yeah, people they're flooding in actually. Yeah, and he's oh, so happy he started pretty... dancing along going, well that proves it's a good competition, he said. Look, look at, at that, look at that. Look at that, mate. What? There's look loads look of that. people that. emailing there. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you what it is, Carl, it's not the competition, it's this, Children of the, the Corn. corn. Widescreen DVD. Corn. <laughs> Next week some staples and pencils. <laughs> I'll tell you what. A piece of carpet. <laughs> I'll tell you what, right. What? 
now we've got them and they're staying, something we, we've still got to do. Yeah. Is, uh... He is running the show now, he's doing well, isn't he? Because I've done nothing, I've done nothing towards this. I'm coming out of my hangover a little bit if you're worried. Remember, remember... <laughs> so, go on. Remember, remember last week we yeah. started a new feature called, yeah. uh, That Song's Got a Good Story in it. And, Brilliant, and I love your catchy titles, they're excellent! Right, and the idea was it was a story in yeah. a song which meant that if it was played on the radio you couldn't just like fade it out because you've got to have the full story. Yeah. Right, well last week we started the feature with Stevie Wonder, uh, Living for the City. Yeah. Right. But you yeah. played the version where it fades out. Yeah, I didn't know there was more to it, so Steve told me what album it was on. Yeah. I've gone and got it, we've got the second half to that story. Yeah. This week. Yeah. So, you've got half the story, what was it, what had happened is like, <laughs> the lad's living in Mississippi, there's not much going on there. <laughs> Mississippi? That, that's uh, someone off Rainbow's mum. Yeah. Um, living, what, Mississippi? Yeah. He, his dad's, was his, his mum was a cleaner. Yeah. Try to get by, they didn't have a great life, but they still looked after the kids and yes. stuff. There's more to it than that. Have you got it ready? There's <laughs> more to it than okay. that! I, I should hope so! We'll probably do it at about half past three. So look okay. forward to that, the second it's half of that. Stevie Wonder's Living for the City, <laughs> a week later. <laughs> <laughs> I love a show that's carefully planned. Uh, so listen, that, no, I, I'm- I- got, This isn't thing. a show, this isn't a show. This isn't a radio show. <laughs> this is- I don't know what this is. No, I don't know what it is. <laughs> we, we might as well start banging tambourines and uh, it's ridiculous. <laughs> this is rubbish, right? <laughs> but why are you like, some people emailed in, <laughs> put him in a wheelie bin, went to Blackpool, <laughs> right? Um, some people emailed in the stories, songs with stories in it. One of them was Babushka and he went, what's that? And I went and asked Katie Bush, I went, what is it? I said, oh, it's about a woman who dresses up as another woman to introduce her husband. He went, they wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Just dismissed it like that. Why do you think it would work? Because you'd, you'd know. I mean, say like, say like, um, right, Suzanne, right, who yeah. I go out with, yeah. right? She can see me from, <laughs> say if I'm coming down the high street, Yeah. she knows it's me by the way I walk. <laughs> right. So, just the fact that this woman went and put a wig on, there is no- <laughs> You haven't even heard the song! I know, but you're saying that she put a disguise on and he's yeah. like, oh, I fancy her, and he takes her out and he, he doesn't know it's his missus. <laughs> You're not, you're not buying it. I mean, I'm, I'm controlling this Where feature. is the flea? Where is the flea with your brain going to Glasgow? Perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Babushka, rubbish. Carl, can we have the tomato story after the next tune? Yeah. Bit of Coldplay? Yeah, love it. Yeah. Coldplay. A scientist on XFM 104.9. Right. Competition, isn't it? Uh, no, it's Educating Ricky Part 2. Oh, okay. is it? Yep. I wasn't even listening. He's doing all the work, I wasn't even listening. <laughs> oh, and he spilled some water down on that. Right, what's this one again then? Right, uh, What's the uh, teaser headline? Teaser headline is, what's tomato with you? Brilliant. Yeah? Brilliant. How excited were you when you came up with that? You couldn't wait to come in and tell us, could you? <laughs> I just, <laughs> I, I think it's things. a good one because you won't forget it now, will you? Okay. I mean, like the worm one. What's so special about the worm? Uh, you know, a lot of people think that if you cut a worm in half, it will, two worms will grow, but no. What happens is if you cut the head end slightly nearer the tail than the head, the tail will die, um, but the worm with the head will be okay. So, um, it's exploded a myth and it taught me something. <laughs> right, so, the second one, part two of Educating Ricky, uh, what's tomato with you? Yeah. What this one's about is, uh, ages ago, <laughs> <laughs> this is scientific. It's never, it's never, there's never a date. <laughs> it's it's never, never a country the location. <laughs> okay, settle down, children. No, this is A level history. Right. Once upon a time. Stop. Yeah, yeah. In a, when a mental place with swords was a king. <laughs> Forget his name, but he was a loony. Uh, yeah. so, and it was we literally ages ago. Yeah. So, uh, good luck <laughs> in the exam. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, like, you know, alright, many years ago. Oh, yes. Yeah, that, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cleared that up. Um, Go on. Um, they thought tomatoes were poisonous. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay. Um, because what- what- Hold on, are they gonna be proved wrong at the end of this story? Well, what- Cause I don't wanna give away the ending, but is it something to do with the- d are they poisonous tomatoes? No. Oh, you haven't heard that. <laughs> I don't believe it. But- Go on. But- Go on. They're gonna be eating tomatoes all this time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Steve, what's tomato with you anyway? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so oh, I'm doing it. What's tomato Let's just recap with you? quickly, recap quickly. Many years ago, yeah. when people thought tomatoes were poisonous. Yeah. Go on, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they, they didn't know they were poisonous then, because they were still eating them, but what was happening- Well, they're not. But they're not poisonous. Ah, but hang on a minute. Alright, I'm just gonna listen. I'm okay, not even gonna yeah, talk. No, okay, I'm not gonna text so, anymore. So, if you remember, years ago, they didn't have, like, pottery plates. <laughs> 
<laughs> they had, they had lead plates, right? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> lead talk? Sorry, what year is this? Lead talk. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> plates made out of lead, and right. what they'd end up doing, they'd, they'd say, right, do you want a tomato? And they'd go, yeah, all right. And they'd put the tomato on the lead plate and cut it, and because of the acid in the tomato, right, it would sort of, uh, sort of, uh, make the lead runny, and the lead would go into the tomato, and they'd say, oh, it's lovely, this, and they'd be eating it. They'd get food poisoning, lead poisoning, what have you, and they'd be really ill. So they thought tomatoes were poisonous, so they didn't eat them for many years. And, and when you say they, do you mean the happen. people of Narnia? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this did not Where was Carl. this happening? Uh, sort of in, in Britain and that. <laughs> On the spot there. Oh, I hope there's no uh, uppity pupils at this school when they go. What do you mean, sir? Oh, if you're gonna, oh, I'm fed <laughs> up with you. Do you understand? <laughs> no. So, so the the no, no, no. You've got no, no, no. Right, right. Okay. First of all, Carl, where do you get this information from? Where Fourteen did times as well. Do you know? Uh, you can't remember. I don't know where I got that from. <laughs> I don't know where I got it from. <laughs> But, but, what, I don't, why don't you think that makes sense? <laughs> but, but, <laughs> what? Someone once got lead poisoning from a tomato? No, not just one, loads, and then all of a sudden. <laughs> no, no, no. Why is this educating me? Because I'm telling you that tomatoes, you but I them. can't take anything away from this. Yeah. I don't know what to take away from this. What have I learned? <laughs> what have I learned? Don't mix lead with tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> why is this educational in any shape or form? What are you what are you telling me? <laughs> a long time ago in the land of Glunk, <laughs> right, where the ninnies did slib, right, they thought tomatoes were poisonous because they ate plates of lead. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, but we all know tomatoes aren't poisonous. <laughs> <laughs> is what are that you, what, is what, are you what we're talking about? The story? Is that the moral of the story? Don't believe these people that I'd never heard of before. What are you talking about, Carl? I just, I think it's a bit weird. It <laughs> <laughs> is it's a bit weird, yeah. It's, it's the same people that were spreading those malicious worm rumours. <laughs> <laughs> My hangover's coming back. I've got to get some water. Play a record that was rubbish. <laughs> I'm eating. Hey? I'm eating. So am I. Carl, you have to carry on. Um. Right, yeah. <laughs> we're all eating. Um, crisps, food crisps. Mm. <laughs> So right. last week, yeah, you were playing your feature, um, that song I shouldn't switch off because I'm enjoying the story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, we played Living for the City, only you played the single mix, which yeah. doesn't have the entire second act, if yeah. you will. Yeah. So, um, <coughs> Carl, you've not heard it before. I've you're excited. Heard it before. You're excited um, to hear the second act. Because as far as you're aware, there was a young guy, he's living with his family, they're fairly impoverished in Mississippi, but, you know, they're happy, they're getting on all right. Mm. But you're not even aware that he's, he's moving to the big city. No, it just fades out. Well, and that's I've, the I've, city in question. I mean, I've liked this song for, must be, you know, three or four years, mm. and I've always listened to the single version. I had no idea that I didn't know the full story. So, um... Yeah. It's not, I mean, it, I mean, and I know you, your, your attention to detail, you like to know the full story, like, where everything well, was. Well, the whole idea it? of the feature is to say, yeah. you know, you've got to yeah, listen to the, the song. Where was the lead plate thing? Where was the lead plate thing? Where was the lead plate thing? That was, like, a few, few years where? back. In, where? In, was it? Where in was Britain, it? In Britain, in Scotland. Yeah. It was a problem all over the world. They had to deal with it. <laughs> You're making it up now. Is so it something you saw in Lord of the Rings? <laughs> 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 yeah. Right. So anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, so the Lion so and the Witch, yeah. Go on. <laughs> Go on. So far then, what what do we what did we learn in the story from We Stevie learned so far from Stevie that there's a young lad, he's as I say, he's, he's got a family, he's fairly happy, except they're very poor and they struggle to get by, but they're happy and they're doing it. Anyway, he's moving to the big city. Mm. Carl, this is the bit you didn't realise. Just play the track. Okay, here we go. So this is halfway through. This is halfway yeah. through the tune now. This is right. you've not heard this before, okay. have you? That's okay. Great. Sorry, I mean, we've accidentally played an episode of Kojak. <laughs> by mistake. <laughs> we were gonna play a song. Carl, what did you make of that then? Yeah, what's happening there then? Eh? He, he, he was living with his family, he was fairly impoverished. He went he's on a moved bus, to the that bus he was on, was it? Right, so. So, so what's your take on it, Carl? After hearing that, what I've worked out by it, the first part that we heard last week, uh, everything's alright, but it's not that great living in Mississippi, right? So he goes, oh, I'm gonna go to New York. There's plenty of work there. Yeah. They'll, they'll sort of accept me as, you know, what, what, and everything. So he goes there, and, uh, the weird thing is, He's hardly, like, been in New York for a second. <laughs> he gets on a bus, all of a sudden some cop is arresting him. He's like, what's going on? And then he's got ten years. I mean, didn't... Well, you can't hear, because the levels are quite bad. I mean, I work with sound. <laughs> I can't really hear what's going on. You're criticising Stevie Wonder, I'm sort Wonder, of then. guessing that he didn't pay his bus fare or something. 
<laughs> and, uh, Ten years. <laughs> he got ten years for that. I, d I really don't know what was going on. Right. Oh. But you're not happy because obviously it's quite dangerous. Do, do you think Stevie Wonder left out some vital ingredients in the story in your, in your education? Like where it was or <laughs> at least he got where it was. You can tell what year it is. It's uh, right in the mid seventies there. That funky, that funky New York seventies sound. All right. Yeah. You're pretty disappointed, aren't you? You're pretty well, worried. Cause so what went on? Yeah. What you happened? know, well, you know, you're aware, Carl, that that because that shows quite a bad image of New York. It's quite an intolerant city by all accounts. They arrested a guy. But it is quite seemingly bad for being black. That's that's one song where you shouldn't go to New York. Killing a Georgie Rod Stewart. That lad, he was doing all right in Scotland, and said, "I'm going to go to the big city." He got done in. Yeah. Seems to me it's that you don't go there if you've if you've got like problems. Don't think New York's the answer. Right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you're saying that if you if you're a bit fed up with your life, but you got you know you live with your mum and she's like really nice and you got friends yeah. and life's not that bad. Yeah. Don't 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 go and have don't go and be murdered or what? What are you saying? Don't go and be murdered. Well, don't go and leave what, home. What, 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 what? Leave home, but don't go to New York. Right. There's mm -hmm. other places. Where would you go? Sheffield. I don't know. Don't know, but yeah. But so you, you're a little, you're a little mank lad, weren't you? You're in, your, you're in your garden. We had your train set. Your brother blew up. There was a horse next door, and you thought, ah, oh, I want to go to London. So, do you know what I mean? You've so, you're 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 like that. Yeah, but you're you're all, in many ways like the fella yeah, in that so song, and like and like um, Georgie. No, because in many I, in many ways you are a bit like Georgie, aren't you? I had a car, so no, are you a little bit like Georgie in many no, ways. I didn't what? get on a bus. I had a car, so I wasn't gonna have the problem he had for a start. Right, but I mean, I suppose there's loads of things you can look at that story and take out of it. That's what I like about the feature, right? <laughs> what? So <laughs> that's what you like about the feature. The feature that we're doing. Oh right. The, that song's got a good story. If you had a time machine, where would you go? What year would you go? Would you probably go the sixties? Okay, would you go forward at all? What's no. your favourite year in the future? No, I don't, I, I, I don't know. If someone could tell your future to you, if someone could, it, you, you wouldn't want to know. No. You, you, straight away, you knew. <laughs> yeah, straight yeah, away, yeah, you yeah, no yeah. hesitation. Yeah, you've thought about this, haven't you? No, you've okay. thought to yourself, if someone could reveal my future, Carl, you've, you've, got, got, to, you've got to do one of these things, right? You know, he's not, you know, like Quantum Leap, like a fella in Quantum Leap. What's his name? I forget his name, but yeah, yeah. And uh, you've got a little fella with Hal, and he's telling you, right? Would you rather go back and you go into someone's body? Would you rather go back? um, you could go back to be, um, uh, a donkey. Donkey that's carrying Mary to Bethlehem. You could, uh, be a Saigon prostitute in 1975. <laughs> All those GIs queuing up. Think uh, about it. Uh, <laughs> or, um, you could be, uh, um, Moby Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Which of those would you be, Carl? Uh, <laughs> think about it. Probably Moby Dick's the best option, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> what what work have we got? <laughs> Yeah. Play a tune car. After this, we need to educate Ricky for the final time. Final time, educating Ricky. We've still got to give away these tickets to DJ Shadow, and we've got to give the answers to your magnificent competition. Oh, we've only got competition. a quarter now. It's not enough time in this show. It's packed. <laughs> Race for the prize from the Flaming Lips. Competition answer time, is it, Carl? Yeah, we did, uh, we did this, like, uh, about an hour ago. Rockbusters. Yeah. Rockbusters. With Carl Bilkington. Yeah, uh, I gave you some initials. The initials sort of, uh, made up a band. We had LR, we had... Uh, NS. Yeah, yeah. Well, give us the clues. Give us the clues and the answers. What? Right. So, LR, the clue was I'll take that book to the toilet with me. The answer Lou Reed. Lou Reed. Good. That's very good. That's very good, Carl. Right. Okay, next one. FL, blow the candles out before you eat the cake. Yeah. We just play them. Flaming lips. There we are. Okay. And the final one was NS, how can I wash up in something shaped like this? Yeah. That was N Sync. Yeah. N Sync. N sync, it'd be a bit. N sync. If you had a sink, you wash up in a sink. Yeah. Shaped like an N, you'd be like, oh, I've got <laughs> everything out. <laughs> so has anyone got that? Wow. Right. Well, so no, there are right answers. I have to say, Carl, you've done very well. It was a, an enormous response. I'm just going to click on one of these emails randomly. I'm not even going to look. Who we got here? We've got. Kath Turner is the winner. Kath Turner gets those great uh, DVDs and just CDs, like this, including Kath watching Children of the Corn. Tonight. Children of the Corn. She was going out, but I imagine she's going to count. She's going to phone a few friends and say, "I can't come out. I'm ill." <laughs> exactly. They go, "You're not. You're not watching a Children of the Corn." I go, "No, 
no, 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 no. And uh, we've learned as well that there are about uh, five other sequels to Children of the Corn, so maybe we'll give those away in consecutive Brilliant. weeks. What else have we got to do? Uh, have we got anything else to do? Quick, Carl, what would you rather be, a tree frog or a tree crab? Quick. What would you rather be? Straight tree away. Tree frog or a tree crab? Tree frog. Why? I don't know what one is, you just said pick one, quick. A tree frog or a tree crab? What would you rather be, a tree frog, yeah? Yeah. Okay, what'd you rather be, a tick or a leech? They both suck blood, there's not a lot in it, leech. go on. Why? Cos I heard they've got, uh, I was reading about them yesterday, they've got 300 teeth, and, and what they do is, <laughs> if they get on you, right, and you didn't get it off with a match or anything, <laughs> it would stay there, and it eat five times the amount of blood to make it five times bigger than the size of itself. <laughs> Scientists. And then it'll just go, oh, I've had enough, and it falls off. Okay. Na naturally. What would you rather be, a puppy or a kitten? <sighs> kitten. Why? Just look better. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Some great adverts there on XFM. I enjoyed it. Point nine. <laughs> Absolutely. We, some, we have to give away these, uh, three pairs. We have to give these away, Rick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've got three pairs of I know, but this, I turn up with, this, this is, is so jam-packed. I think we've planned too much for this <laughs> we show. We have indeed. We next week, this is, I, I think we have a little bit flabbier next week. <laughs> Rick. Do less, do we, less. Rick, can we chill out next week, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go on um, then. So yeah, we, uh, we, uh, any, any ideas, guys? Any questions? Sort of DJ Shadow related questions? Any Shadow? DJ Shadow. Or DJ? Questions? What Carl, does, any ideas there? What does there? the word DJ mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's too easy. It's it? I'll, tell you, I'll tell you something I do know. Go on. Right? But I, I can't really get a question out of it. Go on, just tell us. There's a shadow somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's already good, isn't it? I'm loving it no, already. No, no, right? There's a shadow, I think it was in America. Yeah. And uh, it's on a quiet road. I, I'm guessing somewhere like Boston, that's what I, I well, imagine. <laughs> okay. Right? No, 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 no. Somewhere yeah. like Boston, and People at night used to see this shadow moving about, and they'd go, what's that? Right? And, and it got known, that the town, the little local town got known for this shadow, but it didn't cause any problems. People what are you to... talking about? Well, it was <laughs> Just like... you lost me. What are you talking no, about? No, do you know, like, some places get famous, like, uh, Scotland's got the Loch Ness Monster and that, but, nah, it, doesn't cause any, yeah. but it doesn't cause any problems. It doesn't exist, go on. Right? So there's this shadow walking about on the road. And, what? Uh, what do you mean? No, what, see, again, <laughs> rubbish. Right, so it's Nonsense. walking about- Where did you read this? Where did you see this? It's walking about, this was on the internet, and I'm Oh, sure. sorry! <laughs> sorry! Right. I thought it was shite. <laughs> I didn't know it was on the internet. Right, so this shadow is moving about and God, uh... Independently of and, an object. Yeah, and the, and the local mayor and that is like, yeah, it's a bit weird, but it's not harming anyone. <laughs> <laughs> the mayor involved! <laughs> was he mayor. elected to that post? Hey, hey, mayor, we got a problem down here, seems like a shadow. <laughs> uh, well, it's not causing any problems. No, it's just <laughs> causing any problems. Yeah, go but on. That's, but that's the thing, it was left for years and then it did start causing problems. <laughs> <laughs> I see, that's it. If you leave these shadows to go unchecked, <laughs> Rick, they go crazy. Yeah. You let them run amok in the yeah. city. Yeah. You've got to stand what around on, on Roman shadows. What did, what did the shadow do? It was pushing people off the bike. <laughs> <laughs> it was what? It was pushing people off the bikes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'll, fi I'll find out more for that next week. <laughs> Right, that'll tease Oh, them. you're a maniac! We'll do more on that. <laughs> we haven't had time for educating. Please never have children. Right, listen. <laughs> you are Just a promise maniac. me now you'll never have kids. No. Uh, we haven't got time. Okay, now, listen, so. alright, DJ Shadow, have we got time for these to give these tickets away? Yeah, if they just call up, we'll. No, um, I'll tell you what, I've got a question, right? Go on. Where do you. Th where does Carl think this may have taken place? If you've been listening to the show, where do you think this evil shadow has been running amok? Let okay. us know. The number, Carl? Uh, ooh, Good question. 08 700 800 1234. So, Excellent. uh, but that's it. We are that's actually it. out of time. We are indeed. Now. Have I got, have I got time for a song for ladies? It's a bit tight. I was Why? told to finish now. Too. I know, but we've got to get finished early today, so. Why? Just because we have and we're wasting more time talking about why we have to. Oh, this is pathetic. So, <laughs> the call up. Uh, where did I see the ghost? Yeah. And you've got to pick the tickets up from reception. You can go tonight see DJ Shadow. Shoddy, That's it. this right? is shoddy. Right, see you then. <laughs> <laughs> Doves, caught by the river on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington, doing the button stuff. Actually, becoming a little bit of a producer. Carl, oh, yeah, working hasn't he? He's come up with a few games, and um, we made him. He's getting a bit stressed when we shout at him because the mics don't work or it's hanging off. It was too hot in here. He couldn't get the uh, 
thing working last week. I mean, I, I, I really would throw this studio away and get a real one. Yeah. Well, I'd get one of those ones you can buy for, uh, for like tenner from Argos. Argos, yeah, like Bon Tempe. You, my <laughs> first studio. My, yeah, my first, uh, With a little picture studio. of Carl on it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That'd be great, great pro product placement. What have you got this week for us, Carl? Because again, we put very, we, we, I said I would put, I'm not hungover, but I've put nothing into Rick, it. Rick, have you done any work for this week's show? No, no. None whatsoever? Yeah. No, 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 no. Okay, Carl, what have you got? What have you got? Quick. Keep them, they're, they're, it's five past, they're turning over already, they're finding other things. Oh, melon, with there's right. Melon Sue, there's oh, everything. Well, go on. We've got, um, after the success of last week, uh, Rockbusters. Okay. We're doing that again. <laughs> Sorry, uh, were you on the same show as us? <laughs> I thought it went all right last week. Yeah. Yeah, okay. good. Right, so we'll be doing that. Got some nice prizes, which, uh, Oh, what prize? What well, arbitrary films have you got? Have you got, have well, you got don't, 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 oh, no, don't tell them yet. Don't no, tell them. I'll tell you what, if it's Children of the Corn 2, then oh. can I, can oh. I enter this competition? There you go. Come no, on, no, no, no. What is that? He's got oh. some, uh, different prizes. I, uh, maybe I should, uh, I should just tease the audience with those a bit later, Rick, because okay, there's yeah. some exciting stuff there. It's gonna be yeah. amazing. Yeah. Right, so I, I don't wanna, give, I don't wanna give too much away, Rick, but one of them is a copy of The Office on DVD. <laughs> <laughs> is anything, uh, like, maybe Burt Reynolds' uh, straight-to-video <laughs> film? <laughs> any of those in Sadly, there? Sadly, nothing quite as classy. Fist. Yeah. Right? Oh, so, we've got, we've got that lot to give away. Yeah. We've yeah. got, um, go on. Educating, quick, quick. A, a, educating Ricky, where yeah, teachers go. Because you taught me that people used to eat tomatoes off lead plates in the land of Narnia last week, which was good. Yeah. No, it's only tomatoes they after lead plates, by the way. Why why didn't they think other fruits and vegetables were poisonous? Bec no, it wasn't. It was because tomatoes had acid in them. That was the problem. You see, you don't, don't, don't listen. listen, right? Well, lots of fruits have acid in them. Yeah, but they didn't eat them back then. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't have <laughs> bloody kiwi fruit and stuff, did they? Don't say then. bloody. You're a producer. Come on, you'll start, us start saying uh, shit and cock and stuff, you start saying bloody. Tits. Play, uh, play the... Hang on, right, and- Go on, play keep, the keep him hooked, right? Yeah. We've still got, a uh, Song with a Story in it. Yeah. He don't want to play Babushka, do you? He doesn't like the idea of Babushka. I told him that was a story. Yeah. And, uh, he doesn't like it. Uh, a devil went down to Georgia, someone uh -huh. sent in. You know, he's looking for a soul to steal. Yeah. Doesn't like it. Why don't you like that? Do you know the song? Not particularly. Right, it's a- it's a song about a lad who goes into a pub <laughs> on a, a normal night. And <laughs> it's it. It's in uh, sort of the deep south of America, yeah. New Orleans, something like. That. It's yeah. you know, it, it's not the old Kent Road. Right. Okay. okay go he on. goes into a pub. There's yeah. a devil in there. Oh. He's getting a bit cocky. He's had a bit to drink, and he's saying, "Do you want to uh, sort of gamble your soul away with me, and we'll see who's best at playing the violin?" Yeah. And uh, I think the lad wins in the end, but it, it's not real enough. Where's the one? Oh. What, what? Not like the shadow that got fed up and started pushing kids off bikes? Rick, I think you're in referring Boston. to the stuff that no one made sense of yeah, last week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't think well, we should okay, refer to okay, last let's, week. Let's, let's play Mock Turtles, Can You Dig It? And then we'll come back and we'll talk about that. Uh, and <laughs> I've come to the conclusion, Rick, we should never refer to stuff Carl said in the past because it would just take too long to explain. <laughs> okay, alright, that's fair enough. Right. Mock Turtles. Can you dig it? <laughs> Indeed. What I've done there is I've taken the title and I've done it like I'm talking to someone. Sure. Uh, sure. XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant Hello and there. Carl Pilkington. So, Carl, how excited are you about, uh, Ricky's celebrity boxing match? Are you <laughs> gonna be there? <laughs> are you gonna come along? Are you aware of this? You're aware of all this, aren't you? Yeah, I've heard about we it. We can't, we can't name the opponent, um, oh, cause that is. should be a surprise. Oh. Be, but anyway, it's, it's for, it's for a charity, is it? It's a yeah, charity, uh, yeah. boxing match. Yeah. And, uh. Um, I always wanted to beat someone up for charity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a good cause. But, uh, yeah. the thing about Ricky is, I, I mean, I, just, I don't know if you're aware of this, Carl, but, Ricky's one of these men who, who, you know, he doesn't mind sort of, you know, making a fool of himself on the telly and being funny and stuff, but if people said to him, right, you can either be Britain's funniest man, universally agreed that you're the funniest man in Britain, or you could, like, beat some gangsters up in a pub, he would go that, oh, please, just let me beat people up in a pub, and like, and like, maybe like, maybe like an old man's being hassled, like, by some street youths, and you come in and like, smash some bottles over their heads and sort of okay, sort it out. Against the odds, though. Against the against odds, the yeah, odds. there's sure, about five sure, of them sure, against sure, you. Sure, sure, so, sure, cause he's got this kind Get of- Get to the point, come on. Well, the point is, he quite likes the idea of being sort of macho, and you know what I mean, and kind of a tough guy, you know, cause he grew no, up in a, in a rough- like but, boxing. Yeah, but you'd love the idea of people going, don't mess oh, with Ricky Gervais. Uh, if I someone said don't mess with Ricky Gervais, that would be exciting, wouldn't it? <laughs> Never mess with Ricky Gervais, he will destroy you. <laughs> That's what you'd love. <laughs> <laughs> and, go on. Because you used to do karate, didn't you? You were a karate. Oh, I used to go, yeah, yeah. You, and yeah. you got, didn't you get all the way up to white belt? <laughs> <laughs> No, I was one away from black, and then I stopped, because oh, I was right. to start working nights. Oh, yeah, one, See? one step away from black. I was, yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. So, anyway, um, I was chatting to him last night in the pub, because, uh, obviously the boxing match is in about five weeks' time, I think, isn't it? Yeah, And, well, um, uh, anyway, 
He, uh, was sat there, Carl. I don't know if you know this about Ricky, but, uh, he's taken to smoking cigars. No, I do. Are you the, aware of this? I had the occasional one. He got a cigar, he got like a Monte Cristo out of his <laughs> pocket. It was ludicrous. <laughs> he looked like George Papard. <laughs> for the AT was it? It was <laughs> pathetic, and he was drinking Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> and I was saying to him, "But aren't you doing a boxing match soon?" Hmm. And um, I haven't started training yet. I'm starting training next week. You're not concerned that it's going to uh, going to have an impact? Well, I, I mean, mean, what I'm saying is, you know, like the, the boxers, they, you know, they normally put in some effort and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like years of training. Yeah, I mean, what you know, what getting I mean? up at five thirty. Yeah, yeah. Because you, as you reminded me of um, of Frank Bruno <laughs> when he was preparing for Panto. <laughs> Not when he was- I don't think he even again. smoked then, did no. he, and drank? No. So I don't- uh, what's your thinking, Rick? I'm- cause I'm- cause you know you're gonna get your face pummeled. You know that- I mean, you're gonna- they're gonna destroy you. You haven't got a chance. That's why I left it this long, so I definitely lost my looks. But you haven't got a chance. You're having a laugh. Have you ever been taken- have you ever you're taken a punch to the is face? This, is, sorry, sorry, listen, sorry. But I'm genuinely is, concerned. Is this- is this sort of psychological training, because- No, it's not psychological training, it's a warning. <laughs> I've spoken to your <laughs> friends and your loved ones and they all agree we've got a petition going. <laughs> We're sending it to the BBC. Please do not let this man box. <laughs> Anyone nah. else, please. But you're nah. just, they're gonna beat you. Uh, seriously, are you, I mean, have you ever had a punt, like a boxing glove in the face? No. I think you should let us punch you next week live on the show. You'd like that, wouldn't you? No, because I just, well, because you've got to get used to it. Because I think you're gonna either, um, cry, <laughs> just start crying in uncontrollably, or just run away. You'll just run away. You'll just climb out the <laughs> ring and run off. Yeah, this is the same tactic that Ali used against yeah. Foreman in Rumble exactly. in the Jungle. But I just- Oh I mean, dear. I, Cause I think a boxing glove, cause I know you're wearing like huge, aren't you wearing like huge kind of foam boxing No, we're not, no, I thought, no we're not, we're using um, uh, not a normal, um, uh, amateur ones. Are you wearing, are, are you wearing boxing gloves like those ones they used to have on Gladiators? <laughs> and everyone bites the dust. <laughs> <laughs> Those big foam gloves. Yeah. You neck, just slap each other in the face. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And a big sumo suit. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, yeah, I should be okay. Do you get to, uh, you get some kind of head protection, do you? Do you yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's amateur. It's amateur. So it's, it's, it's amateur, you say? No, I mean- So it's, it's not the no, title. No, 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 I mean, um, I think that amateur is head guards, vest, and, um, 16 ounce gloves or something, as right. opposed to professional, which is no vest, bare chested. Oh, right. maybe I can ask to fight bare chested because I'd quite like to show off my yeah, body yeah. If, I, if I could. I think wrestling is really good <laughs> for you, I think. But I don't mean like those kind of like The Rock and people like that. I'm talking about Big Daddy, Giant <laughs> yeah, Hicks, that yeah. kind of. That would be good. Where you can just throw where, yourself where, on someone. Where they can sort of like be nearly dying, but then they can do a stomach butt. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> stomach to stomach. That's a good move, isn't it? In <laughs> British wrestling. I always like that one. <laughs> yeah, and I oh, think wrestling, like, like two elephant seals fighting yeah. over a female. Is it true that you've spent, knowing you, you've spent more time deciding what tune you're gonna enter the ring to? I wanna come out to California by Tupac and Dr. Gray. I think that'd be really I good, wouldn't it? I think that's embarrassing. And I'm gonna come out with loads of, um, little midgets to make me look really big. <laughs> sure, sure. I mean, I don't know what the BBC think of that, but yeah. it might be a... I don't know. I, 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 maybe we should take some suggestions as to songs that would be perhaps more appropriate. Okay. Um, I get knocked down, but I get up again. A fatty <laughs> bum bum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Play a record, Carl. It is gonna be. He's dissed me. It's gonna be. He's dissed me. Next yeah. week, take a f you take a punch of the jaw. Next week, <laughs> on air. <laughs> <laughs> Cheering breaks, long distance on XFM. 104.9. Mm -hmm. On the way in, mm -hmm. right, you know those little cars? They look like a little bubble car. They're modern ones. They look like half a car. The is, that, is that like a smart car? Is that yeah. What called? They, is look that like, they just look like a, I, like, like a toy car and you can mm. park them sideways. There's only, is there only room for two people? Yeah. 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 yeah it's just like the half of the front of a Volkswagen just cut in half, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And, um, I saw one going on Oxford Street and it's a police car. <laughs> a real police car, right? Really? Yeah. And, I mean, I thought, well, what happens if they have to chase someone? They couldn't, but I don't think that's the point. Because it was written on the side, it said something like, cleaner, something uh, more efficient. So I think they're making the point that we're cruising round in this car like we're on the beat and yeah. it's using less energy and stuff. Yeah. But the first thing I thought of, right, was that those two policemen, they must have been going, oh, Dutch Sarge, don't let us have that one. Can't we have the Granada? Yeah. I mean, it's so embarrassing. It's I know, embarrassing. About, you know, police, they're, you know, they're doing, you know, yeah. But you've got to respect them. Yeah, you've of got course. Street yeah. toughs have got but to re respect exactly. them. Exactly. I just don't know if you have the, to. Well, get the only thing more embarrassing. What if you're really tall and you have to climb out of one and you're a yeah. copper? Are, th are there any policemen out there who have been uh, asked to drive one of these cars? If you're listening, do you think police listen to this? The only thing that would be more embarrassing is if you had to patrol on one of those bikes the goodies used to ride. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's the only thing I think <laughs> that would be or more a, pathetic. A pogo stick? Yeah. It's yeah. so embarrassing. Or on roller skates. Yeah. But not like roller blades. Roller yeah. skates, those really old roller skates. Have you seen that you those- tie, That you tie on your socks. Yeah, have you seen those little bikes that look like clown bikes that the couriers use now? They're about a foot high. They're little I saw them the other day on it. I, my head turned, yeah. But they're really just, bizarre. Just think yeah, they're that. They're the ones that they, they fold up. Yeah. But think of policemen chasing <laughs> yeah. you on that. Well, I always remember that even in America when I started seeing policemen riding bikes. It didn't seem to me, it seemed- Oh, they're quite cool. They're the ones that go through mm. Central Park on the yeah, mountain bikes. Yeah, but they're, that's it. really cool, isn't it? They, you know, they, they- It looks like they should be they delivering newspapers. They whiz along at about 30 <laughs> miles an hour and they can just- <laughs> 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 Do you know what I mean? Because like, on motorbikes, on a Harley <laughs> Davidson or whatever, I'm not messing with a cop. A chips, I mean chips. Now that's cool, yeah. coppers. Yeah, yeah. But people in a smart car or a, you know, know. that's- it is a bit embarrassing. But I suppose it is that or it's better than- Walking, you see. Next, we'll see them in those. Um, if you really want to be uh, kind of worried about the environment, though, you know those uh, little taxis you see that people pedal. <laughs> they pedal around Soho. In yeah, and when it's a, like a, a, a riot squad, there's four in the back. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's the thing, right? If if they need to arrest someone. Yeah, here we go. Go on. No, well, what do they do? Because they do only sit two, so do they have to flag a cab down or something for the it's for the criminal? Point. We'll give what you the you money. Do? Get a receipt. <laughs> take you definitely will go there. Yeah. yeah. You definitely will because we've been caught this way before. <laughs> exactly. The no, last bloke, he just ran off. <laughs> no, I won't run off. Okay. okay. Well, I'll tell you what, um, uh, uh, Mr. Policeman, I'll take your car. Then I'll. Okay, go on then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you definitely yeah. bring it back though. I will. I will. <laughs> well, it, it, there, uh, isn't there something in America where when they arrest someone in America, they don't take them back to the station and fill out all the forms? They just take them back to the station and then they go and fill the forms out in a. Like a cafe or something, so they're still looking out. Yeah. Yeah, Carl told me that. They're what? So yeah. they're still on patrol, is it? Yeah, so they're, they're doing all their paperwork, but they're in the, f you know, a, a cafe window and they're looking out. Do you know, like how they say in this country so much police time's wasted by having to go back to the office? And filling out loads of forms. That sounds like some policeman going, yeah, I could get a lot more work done <laughs> yeah, if, if I was, I was in, the in the pub. Starbucks. Yeah, yeah, no, there's a lot of criminals in the pub and, uh, <laughs> if I would, yeah, you know, yeah. and I get to keep the receipts. Yeah, I mean, what's safest is if I didn't wear my uniform and yeah. probably got drunk. Yeah, yeah, with, yeah. With some mates. Or a lot, a lot happens in, you know, looking out my bedroom window, so if I was just like <laughs> snoozing, yeah, I was exactly. snoozing and when I heard a noise, I just pop, oh, look out, <laughs> oi, yeah. come here, come here. Yeah, apparently there's a lot of crime, uh, in my Bay over the next two weeks. <laughs> you pay me so to if there's a policeman listening who has to drive one of those cars, were you annoyed when you saw it? It is the most embarrassing. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. No, I think the pogo stick. Pogo stick, well, not oh, the, yeah, the, the pogo stick. The, 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 the triple tandem. That's the triple great. Tandem. We should get that. <laughs> we should well, get well, when we do our road, road show. <laughs> Carl does all the peddling. Yeah. I'm in the basket in the front. Hello, like Western is. Superman! <laughs> <laughs> Play a record card, what have you got? <laughs> what do you want? But, um, Mark the Hoople? Oh, Mark the Hoople, yeah. Dug it out of the library. Yeah. It had one, it had one, it had greatest hits, which was enough, wasn't it? What's yeah. What's got for us, Rick? Roll away the stone, I think. <laughs> Coldplay, The Scientist. Have you seen the video for that? No, but- Absolutely magnificent. Is it? It's brilliant. I was always walking backwards yeah. in the woods. Oh, yes, I have, yeah. Absolutely yeah. extraordinary. Well I, I like all well their videos. Well done I think they're great. Yeah. I still haven't worked out how they do that one with the, whether it's a filter, they just turn up the light, cause it gets light. Through oh, the duration I of the video. Along, yeah. Yeah. Impressive, yeah. And it's slow as well, so he must have no, I'd like him to win an down. award. I'd like him to win awards. I like yeah. Coldplay. Yeah, no, good um, luck. Rick, no. can I just sorry, Go I don't on. mean to abuse our position again, but Bruce Springsteen's performing in London tomorrow night, yeah. and you remember I made an appeal to try and get a free ticket. Yeah. Well, I don't even mind paying. I, don't, I, I tried to pay, but that's um, good of you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, oh, I'm a generous kind no, of guy. And I thought you were mean. No, go on. What are you going to say? But you were going to pay for is, ticket. I, I, you what know, face value? I mean, you don't want to be ripped off, do you? No, don't be crazy. You know, yeah. ideally half price. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And I just, I, I, I'm, I'm, I've been chasing kind of my tail, really. I just, I'm. I'm not going at the moment. I'm not going, and I'm desperate to see him. Man, I mean, he's you know he's going to do a great concert. It's mm. his only one in in London. I can't believe that being on the radio, being on XFM, you know, the, the listenership's going up. Apparently, mm. I can't believe I can't get a ticket. I, I've asked Carl. He's done nothing. He's done nothing. No, 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 no Carl, Carl had a very good point. Nothing. Carl, say what you said when he was whinging in no, the but first of all, whilst you're moaning, you also asked in the week for a badly drawn boy album. Yeah, you got in today. Yeah. There's one there for you. Well, yeah, yeah. but it's yin and yang. And it's Carl. like, yeah, but I do, you know, Carl, what's Steve ever done for you? That's what you got to ask yourself. What has Steve ever done for you? Well, he took me to the BAFTAs. Yeah, but only because no one else would probably want to go with you. <gasps> <gasps> I can't believe that. What is I this? I do not believe that. Oh, Steve, I'm going to stitch you up now, Carl, and it's in a nice way. And don't worry, it won't be too bad. He won't take too bad. Carl sent me a little text message today. Right. Um. No. No. Oh, don't. what is this? Um. I. Right. Okay. 
Okay. You know I'm in a very frail mood at the moment. No, no, I'm you're like this, Bruce. This is funny because me and Steve, uh, me and him have been like sending uh, trivia back and forth to each other, which is another point, right? I sent him. Oh well, I'll get to that in a minute. I, I thought he'd really be amazed with um. Right well, while you're fiddling, if you can make my dream come true, uh, to go and see Bruce Springsteen tomorrow, then give us a call on the usual yeah, number. Yeah, but like I said, Steve. What? Right, it's- it's- wouldn't be- right, you just said when the song was on, can't believe it, right, we work at XFM and I can't get tickets for Springsteen, right? Yeah. Mm. We work in radio, we should get tickets. Mm. Right, now think Which of Which I'm willing to pay for. Yeah, mm. but think of the- yeah, but if it's sold out, it's sold out. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but that's just something they say. Right, that's just what they say, is it? Right, so everybody on local radio stations say, do you know, I like that Bruce Springsteen, I, I want a free ticket, right? So another say- I tried to phone, I phoned for an hour and a half, I couldn't get through. Not long enough. I've put the enough. hours in. Not long enough. Not long enough. What are you talking about? I've put the hours in. No. Right? So another <laughs> 400 people turn up at the gig, they cram them all in, there's people being crushed, you know, they've paid the money early, they were up early that day when, when the phone lines were open, whilst you were probably sleeping and that. So they're dedicated and they're the ones at the front getting crushed. <laughs> what? Would you Why mind that be crushed? happy if you were there getting crushed? I don't mind, I'll sit at the side of the stage and watch him. Yeah, but- I the, don't mind. But everyone will say that then. And then what? before you know it, yeah. no one can see anything because no, you're Carl's all on right stage. On right, yeah, I'll, 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 read, right, I'm gonna give you this here. I'm now handing over my mobile phone, Steve, to read the- you can see it's from Carl at the top, but just read it out as you scroll down. Just read it out loud. Is this a text message from- Yeah, this is a text message to me from Carl. Read it out. To see at night as well as an owl, you would need eyes the size of grapefruits. If only Stephen could turn his head right round as well. <laughs> I- Carl, I can't believe it. <laughs> What- what upsets me most, Carl, right, is not the fact that you've been slagging me off behind <laughs> my back. It's the fact that you've got the cheek to come on here and moralise because you've failed to get me tickets and make a dream come true. You've come on here trying to pass the buck and say that it's a health and safety problem, when mm. in actual fact it's a Carl Pilkington problem. Do that, do that, I've got it in a I can't- I'm devastated, I'm devastated, you I know, I- didn't- and then- I didn't felt- let's play a record. I just- I'm upset. I should have eaten this banana. Off air. What's the number? It's uh oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. But if it's sold out, Steve, it's sold out. Oh. A bit of a classic, eh? REM. I bet if Ricky wanted to go, it'd be fine. I'm sure someone could sort it out then. Who? Oh, if Ricky Gervais wants to go, then I'm you can going. come. Are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> you want some tickets, so. yeah. <laughs> You two. Electrical storm. That's great. That's great, I love that. I'm XFM, 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Carl, I want you to tell Steve what you told me in the week. <sighs> about right. the snake, about the anaconda, how to- Right, this is Carl's method. He's not scared of the anaconda, the 30 foot long, biggest, scariest snake. No, you were talking the about world. stuff, weren't you, about in jungles and that, and animals. <laughs> That's what we do. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I remember reading hmm. about Say if you're in the jungle and uh, and you get tired and you go to sleep, right? And you and you sort of wake up and you feel something on your leg and you look down and it's an anaconda, right? Yes. And it's uh, it's swallowing your feet because they apparently they always go f from the feet up. Uh -huh. They never they never eat you from the head. So um, okay. Um, I, 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 should I should I save these points to the end? Cause make that's make a list of the points. Because they, they always eat head first. Because the way the fur goes, where they, they have to take a capybara or even a rat, they, they take it from the but, head but first. Make, make, the, make, 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 make a point. Okay, make some notes. Okay, so that's make, wrong. We'll come back. Okay, to next. Later. Go on. So they always eat from the feet. Go on. So, so they swallow in your feet, and <laughs> it's said on on the on the website, if you wake up and you see this anaconda doing that sort of eating away at your feet, don't panic. Um, don't and panic. I'm don't just writing this down. Don't okay. panic. Well done. Okay, go on. Don't, uh, don't try and kick it off. Okay. Just let it sort of swallow you. Mm hmm But only up to your knees. Okay. okay. Why, right. why not kick it off straight away? Cause it, uh... I think it sort of gets a bit angry and starts thrashing about and it, oh. it can swallow faster, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm okay. guessing that bit. Okay. Uh, just put a question mark by that. Okay, there, pop a question mark next so, uh, to yeah. eat so knees. Yeah, so it's up, eat it, knees. So it's, eat it up to your knees. It's, it's up to your knees. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah, what yeah. you do is you get a knife. Yeah. Okay. And you cut. Oh, and how do you get a knife? Do you do you, do you walk over to the kitchen? I was going to pop over. Get knife. Where's <laughs> that come from? Get well, you, a knife. You always have a knife. Okay. Always have a knife. Of course <laughs> you do. <laughs> Otherwise you're a fool. Always have a knife. Okay. okay. Well, eat, come on. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to go into a jungle, always have a knife. Okay. Always have a knife. Yeah. Simple. Um, can I just suggest something? You know, suppose you've got your wearing combat trousers and the knife is actually in the, the, you know, those, the trousers by the knee, the sort of pocket by the knee. What happens then? You could, I suppose you could still reach in. 
<laughs> into their mouth, couldn't you? So anyway, you've got a knife. Let's well, say you've got a knife. Let's say you've fallen asleep, the anacondas, you're chewing your feet, you let it eat up to the knees, you've got a knife, what do you do then, Carl? Right. So it's up to your knees, and what you do, you get your knife that you got out of your pocket earlier, um, and you cut it at the mouth, right? Do you know, like, either side of the lips? Right. So you're sort of cutting it in half. Right, like a Chelsea smile. And it can't- yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. You can't do anything. Uh, it wasn't ready for that. It can't move about because it's got, like, your legs in its mouth. Uh-huh. Um, and peel it off and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, my- my main point, really, is this, Carl. Never will an anaconda or any constrictor, python, boa constrictor, uh, just start eating a sleeping man. <laughs> he will crush you to death first. <laughs> That's why they're called constrictors. They're not called gobblers, are they? <laughs> or holy swallowers. They're called constrictors. Why would he start eating something? Is that how they t take down antelope? Just start chewing their leg? Oh, it's gone off. I'll tell you what, lads. They get together, this next one, they said, I'll tell you what, we're losing a lot of prey by just living at their ankles. They're running away. Let's crush them to death first so they can't move. Then we can swallow them. You're a fool. <laughs> So anyway, right, so uh, I was telling him this bit of information because we started a feature last week. Mm -hmm. Well, week before. So Sorry, Carl, first. can we just go back to the crushing you to death first? Yeah, but, well, I read it. He's won, he's won there. He's beating you there, Rick. <laughs> okay. Did I'm it say what to do if it starts crushing you to death first? No, 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 no. Did it say what to do if, so supposing it, it, uh, it had this meeting, it had this meeting, and it, it started crushing you and you woke up and it was actually round your chest. And every time you <gasps> try to take a breath and breathe that a little bit, it just tightened his grip because it can feel that. What what what'd you do then? You uh you sort of tighten yourself up anyway, because oh. I've read about that. Yeah. If on. one does start wrapping around you, you sort of make yourself into a ball, first of all. And it'll wrap around you, but it's alright because you're pre protecting your lungs so it can't crush you. And then you just sort of shout for help. And right. you and you, oh, you, you shout shout out with this thirty foot snake. Got <laughs> do, do, do you know how it works? It gets as tight as it can, it can feel as tight, actually as tight as it can, right, with these huge, huge muscles, yeah. right, yep. right? When you <gasps> leave a bit of breath out, it tightens do again. Don't, you won't be that out of breath, you haven't been running anywhere, so you can just go. What, and, and, and when do you get the, the new mouthful of oxygen? Just, just breathe very slowly like you do. How? Do you know what breathing is? Do you know what breathing is? <laughs> it's extending your rib cage, right, intercostal muscles between the ribs, contract like that, Okay, making the rib cage expand, which pulls air in through. It's like a bellow. That you can't just breathe by via the mind. It's a physical process. It's your rib cage. <gasps> well, maybe, maybe I'm special, but I can do little breaths without my rib cage. Play a record, Steve. <laughs> You're special. Play a record. No, 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 no. You you can't take little breaths well, without moving your rib cage. Can I just give you the titles because we're running out of time? We've got a competition to do. Okay, well, right. Let's just leave the anaconda so discussion. That, because Why don't you agree to disagree, and we'll <laughs> see who survives if, we, if you crash <laughs> land in the jungle? <laughs> right. So, right. Uh, what is this? What are we doing now? This is educating Ricky. Right? Oh, good. I'm going to look excellent. forward to this. Yeah, Three Ricky. topics that I teach you every week. Yeah. Okay. Now, obviously, uh, I should just remind people: you normally summarise each of these in a kind of bullet point heading, which you tease us with. So, yeah. what have you uh, reduced them to this week? Right. We've got um, stocking Aiken and Waterman. Stocking <laughs> Aiken and Waterman. Good. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got? <laughs> We've also got. Uh, what else is it? It's not his his vault. Yeah. It's not what. It's not his. Vault. Okay. Yeah. And we've also got get a lobe of this. Get a lobe of this? Yeah. Carl, they're genius. <laughs> Rick will be choosing one of these after new order. <laughs> Oh, Foo Fighters and All My Life on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Jamaica with me, Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, just before we do educating, uh, Ricky, this is where Carl thinks he can give me something of interest and teach me something to take away. Last week I found out that, uh, somewhere in a strange land people thought tomatoes were poisonous because they ate them with lead. Um, things like that. Um, what was the other one you told me? Uh, was it last week? Uh, bit so, of worms, cut yeah. me off. Yeah. Oh, I, I uh, sent him a text message. I was on the train, a bit bored, and uh, I read in I think it was Metro. Scientists have found out that um, uh, worms get stressed, and they found out that uh, the fat ones um, didn't live as long. And when they checked the thin ones that lived longer, they found out they had a gene for de-stressing them. 
Right, Carl, what, do you remember what you said? No. He went, well that's stupid, isn't it? He said, did these other ones die of natural causes? <laughs> I went, yeah, he went, all right. Because it could be that the fat ones couldn't get off the pavement quick enough and got squashed. <laughs> So maybe the scientists go, yeah, we didn't. <laughs> yeah, they come to think of it, they were flat as well as fat. I yeah, think the reason that the uh, worms are getting stressed is because uh, people like Carl are cutting them in half to try and make two snakes. Yeah, yeah, two two worms. Well, yeah, well. that's the concern. <laughs> he <laughs> said, he said they can't even commit suicide if they're stressed by cutting <laughs> their throat. <laughs> <laughs> I also sent um, what I thought was quite interesting that the science have found that um, the elephant hasn't got the best memory. The sea lion has, uh, right. based on. Uh, they've, they've got a sea lion and they, uh, got it back into the old, uh, laboratory. Ten years after it, it taught it a simple trick and it could still do the trick. What did you say to that, Carl? I'd say they don't go up to much anyway. <laughs> so if you do teach you something, it is gonna remember it. Sure. Cause it's got nothing else to do. Yeah. yeah. And then it also, I mean, I like sea lions, they look nice and everything, but what do they do? What was that? <laughs> Sea lions? <laughs> yeah, what, what are they here for? It's another jellyfish so as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> it's like, it's there and people know about them, but what do they do? Mm. Yeah. What, does what do we do? do? What do we do, Carl? Well, what do we do? A, a cat, a cat, first, Steve said, is good for your heart. So you-, you Why is it all geared to what's good for us? Well. <laughs> anyway. Educating <laughs> Ricky. Ricky. Uh, good, we settled that then. Go on. <laughs> the titles that are, yeah. uh, meant to sort of pull you in. Yeah. We've got, if, uh, what, what, what was it? So, uh, Stocking, Aitken and Waterman. Yeah. You've got, it's not his vault. <laughs> and, uh, get a load of this. <laughs> get a load of this. So, uh, which pun do I pick first? Um, I think I'll go for, uh, get a load of this. Get a lobe of this. Yeah, get yeah. a lobe of this, yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's a story about a girl who, uh, <laughs> she was deaf, right, for, for four years. And, um, it happened quite a bit back like this. What year? Or was it? About, what, what, I think it was in, ages ago, was about, it? About, yeah, quite a bit back. Uh, she was deaf for about four years. Having an argument with her mum, it said, which I didn't quite understand. Because mm. I don't know how they do that. Yeah. But she was having an argument. Well, and a man pushed her against the wall. Yeah. And she banged her head and her hearing came back. Okay. Uh, was she wearing a Walkman and it fell out? And she'd realise, well, oh. That's There's why. no explanation. There's no explanation? Well, why is that teaching me something right, then? so I knew you'd say this, <laughs> right? So I thought, right, I'll stick something on it. Do you know that bees are deaf? <laughs> no! No, you can't just, no! <laughs> if no. you ask someone something they don't the answer to, they don't tell you something else. Just, I'll tell you something else then. I can't answer that, I'll tell you something else. Imagine that, if you asked a teacher. How do birds fly? Wow, if you're gonna do that, tallest building is, <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> well, that's that was the equivalent, Carl, of running away. <laughs> <when we asked laughs> yeah, you a question. yeah, the intellectual equivalent. Look, look over there, there's a monster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, what do you mean? What she, okay, so, oh. So she, her there's hearing. There's no came explanation. Back. There's no explanation. <laughs> or you don't know. Well, there isn't one, is there, really? It's a bit what, weird. But the, the doctors, only did thing the doctors that... not look into it? No, I think they just said, oh, that's good. <laughs> But, so, again, I don't- <laughs> where did this information- is that- if you read this on is the that net, it? is that all they put there on the net? There was once a no. deaf woman who hit her head and she and could hear. It was bizarre things about being deaf. Was there three, oh, like- yeah. was there I've three got that book, yeah, it's a good book, that. Was there three yeah. more pages you just couldn't be bothered to read off? Yeah. No, no, it was just a little bit and it- Was there a little picture, a cartoon picture? No pictures, I just read going, it. Ow! Look, ow, if you I don't want to know, if you don't want to learn, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, uh, uh, um, it's not his vault. Let me have it's not his vault. You've got to save this. This has got to teach me something. It'll be an interesting story. Right, it's not his vault. This fella, yeah. um, What year? Ages old, ago? Old times? In, I'd say in the seventies. Okay. Would you? <laughs> Any evidence for that? And, uh... Does he wear flares in the, uh, <laughs> in the story? Right. Is that it's your reason? No, it's, it's a bit like Yori Geller, this fella, right? Where oh, yeah. he's electric. He's electric. And, um... If he walks past the telly, the telly would fizz. Uh huh. If he walked past the radio, it all goes like that. Ooh. His hair stuck up all the time. Ugh. And he'd be having a bath and everything would be alright and then the power would sort of switch on in his body and the electric in his body made him jump out of the bath. <laughs> so. <laughs> what do you mean so? What is that so- what does that so mean? You've given us nothing. You've given us nothing. You'd have to at least give us the scientific explanation. Yeah. Electric eels have 400 volts in them. Oh, is this the running away again? <laughs> what was that one called? 
Yeah, but they, they, they but it's not, a, it's not his vault. But there's a reason <laughs> they, 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 they. <laughs> it's not his vault. It's not his <laughs> vault. I thought it was gonna be something about I think it we should, safe. I think we should do these the other way around. <laughs> I think you should tell vault. us the story and then we'll hear the pun. <laughs> It's not his fault. It's not his fault. Right, let's leave it. Play it. Thank Ricky. We're finished. Uh, we're not doing it. No, we are. Oh. <laughs> what? Don't look at me like that. Oh, Carl, what? you're in a bad mood. The oh, Carl, uh, I'm all dreaming right. of you. Right, do the last one. Do the last one. Carl's saying we're never doing this again because we don't appreciate it. Yeah, Carl, you don't know how good this feature is, mate. Right, last one. Yeah. Stocking Aitken and Waterman. Go on then, tell me about that one. What's that? What am I gonna learn from this? Right, well, do you know the saying, put a sock in it? <laughs> <laughs> I like it already. Do you know the saying? Yeah. Right, well, do you know where it comes from? I assume it's shut up, so I'll stuff your mouth with a sock to well, shut you up. years ago. Yeah. Sorry, am I right? Mm, no, not really. Ages ago. 1970s? Uh, 50s, okay. I'd say. Do you know the old, uh, I'd say! Do you know the old gramophone? Yeah. With, a, with a big horn on it. Yep. Yeah. Right, well, those stereos didn't have a volume control on them, right? So they'd be listening oh, to so the put a sock in the And you'd put, mute. you'd put something like a sock. That's on. a real one, you see. That's taught me something. That's, that's good. That's yeah. excellent, Carl. That is the, that is the only one that counts, like chewing the fat, if they're true. I'm assuming they are. It works. It's of interest. I haven't got it verified yet, but that is educating Ricky. That's brilliant. I will say the other two were more entertaining. So you know, I do don't. You see, do you understand the distinction though between that one and Electrical Man? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, or <laughs> I've hit me head. I can hear you, Mum. Yeah. <laughs> can you see the difference though? Or uh, are not, all, all not three? Because I, when I read all three, I took something away from all of them. What, what did you take, take away, away from the Electrical two? Man? I just thought, oh, imagine that. Imagine how annoying <laughs> that would be. <laughs> That's yeah. not education, is it? And it's really? not taking anything no, but, away. Think about it, right? We take our lives for granted all the time, don't you? You get up in the morning, it's like, oh, I'll, I'll get up and walk for a shower. Some people can't walk, right? Yeah, yeah. This guy, he can't even have a bath. You know what I mean? It's nice to have a bath, isn't it, when you've got time on your hands yeah. and you can relax? This guy can't even do that. He might be alright for a bit, but he's not really enjoying it because at any moment it could strike. Yeah. So, he can't even do that. He can't comb his hair because it keeps going to mess. Yeah. He can't watch <laughs> his hair. Talking you. No, he can't. <laughs> does he, does he fight crime? What do you do with his powers? Yeah. I think he just has to sit around because no one, he can't work with machinery. Right. Because it'll probably blow a fuse. Yeah, so he just sits around. Think about it. What can he do? Mm. What normal things can he do? Skateboarding. Going for long walks. Yeah. Put a wetsuit on. Well, he can't do that. Why? Ooh, water and electric. No, no, wetsuits aren't actually wet. <laughs> They're dry yeah, initially. Just put a whole wetsuit on and walk round with flippers and A wetsuit's not like a dinner jacket that's like <laughs> really wet. <laughs> well, yeah. all, all I'm saying is think, do you know what I mean? Oh, okay. And, right. and what was the and other the, the, the girl's girl death before years hits her head. Yeah. That's just, What uh, have you learned from that? What is that? Well, imagine, imagine how happy you'd be. Remember that time when I, uh, <laughs> I nearly died when I choked on a Mr. Freeze pop? <laughs> Right. No, what, tell what? us that one again. No, I told you, didn't I? Tell us it? again. Yeah, but the people will remember it and then it's- They annoying. weren't, they weren't listening. Go on. What happened? It was ages ago when my mum and dad used to go out shopping on a Friday. 1970s? Get, all, get, all, get the food in. <laughs> get, get a week's load of food in the cupboard and that. And we'd, uh, you know, they'd come in with all the food <laughs> and we'd all be like, oh god, you know, there's no food left on a Thursday really, so we'd all be hungry on the Friday by the time the food got in. Mm. I love that, but they would like, need a, 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 I imagine them like jackal puppies. Yeah. Just like, like, uh, uh, licking your parents' mouth for food as so, they come through the door. So they come in from the supermarket, they're emptying the box. Our kid had got some biscuits and what have you. <laughs> I, I, it's frenzy, uh, just a feeding frenzy, like pigeons. I grabbed the Mr. Freeze Pop <laughs> and knocked it back really quick, but it hasn't, it wasn't frozen, so I knocked it back so it was like a liquid and it went down the wrong way, right, yeah. and I was choking, right, and I nearly died. It, it must have been about, how long can you go before you die? A couple of minutes to do right, it. I reckon about a minute fifty. <laughs> <laughs> right, I was, uh, <laughs> I was really close to dying. <laughs> How do you know you were close to dying? <laughs> me, uh, me. Did your life flash before you? No, but I just was like. <laughs> there is loads of instances of him eating pops. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just, I just, just said forty of those. Whatever, what, right? Anyway. What do you think you'd see <laughs> if your life flashed past you? What do you think? <laughs> which elements would stand out for you? Do you think? <laughs> what? what? Uh, Start now. Go back. Zoom. What do you remember? What's the first thing you remember? As a kid. Yeah. yeah. Just anything right. now. Being in the hall and having our dog licking my face. <laughs> <laughs> That's your earliest memory. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you, what's the next one? Oh, yeah. Right, next oh, one's yeah. probably oh, yeah. what? being at being at primary school with yeah. uh, Lindsay. Yeah, was that your girlfriend? Well, a little friend who was a girl. Sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and we used to have like tins with with letters in, and you'd have to write stuff. But anyway, what are we doing? <laughs> Right, so anyway. I'm intrigued by the dog right. that was licking your face. Well, bin that. <laughs> <laughs> we won't win that. Rock no, it's boxes. a great feature. I just think you need to be a little bit more careful about what, what you consider oh, to be education. Oh, I'm going funny. Right. I right. fell over. All right, well, right. I'll, we'll work on it next week. Play right. a tune and what have you oh. got for us? Because we've got a big competition. Come on. We've got to do the competition. We've only got 20 seconds. Yeah, well, come on, don't worry about it, Carl. Play a tune. We'll come back with Rockbusters. What are we playing? Let's play a bit of Tupac. Oh, that's what I'm coming out to, isn't it? Yeah, fight. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Imagine it. Whack it up. Whack it up. Tupac. California Love. Yeah. And that's the big tune that uh, Ricky will be coming out to when he has his celebrity boxing yeah. match. Yeah. We're all looking forward to that, yeah. Rick. Yeah. 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 Competition time, Carl? Oh, Carl's looking forward to this. He's just getting all stressed about his half hour. Like it, like Pete. Oh, go on. Go no, on, it's sorry. just, uh, we should have done this a lot earlier. Cause Why? Just keep him, it keeps him locked in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, uh, if you haven't heard the game before, I'll give you some initials, bit of a cryptic clue, and those initials and the cryptic clue makes up some band. Not might not be an XFM band, but it's a band or a pop group or an artist or something. Yeah. Uh, it's on What's email. the feature called, though? What's the feature it's called? Rockbusters. Rockbusters. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you want to, uh, will we do this on email? I think we ought to, because you don't like taking calls from the public, do you? Well, you can't work the machine. No, <laughs> that's absolutely yeah. right. It's yeah. not that, it's just that, then ev it's pretty fair for everyone. Because anyone who's like got a computer, you mean? So it's open to anyone who's got, you know, a computer or a laptop at their disposal at this <laughs> precise moment. Anyway, uh, there's some cracking right. prizes, Rick, you'll be pleased to know, that obviously, once again, uh, Carl has, uh, managed to collect together an arbitrary assortment of, it's just uh, looking around, stuff. looking around the office. I, I mean, where did you get these from? Did you just, n did you, wh I mean, seriously, where did you get them from? Because it's right, such what, an arbitrary what, collection. What have we got there? I don't know what kind of a person would want these items. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's such an arbitrary selection, I don't know what kind of a person you'd be. Read them out, <laughs> what have we got? Well, uh, there's a, uh, another, uh, XFM compilation, which obviously you've obviously nicked from somewhere in the office. Yeah, it's Fair a good, good compilation remix to uh, the album. an album here, which is a promo album with two pigs on the front. I think it's the Smashing Punk Friends Live. Yeah. <laughs> I can't be yeah, certain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is the album, didn't we give this one away last week? This well, is yeah. just a, an arbitrary compilation album. Again, one of those kind of, Is uh, that the actual one you didn't send, Carl? No, no. Oh, I've got, got a couple got of them. I've got a job lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, Honest. surprise, The Office oh. on DVD, right. um, which is ludicrous. <laughs> oh, I've and then, seen it from here. What film? If it, like, listen, listen, uh, dear, dear XFM listener, it's half two. You know, it's just, uh, a bit windy out. You're probably gonna stay in this evening. Maybe do a bit of shopping. You, you got, and then uh, in a stand evening. Oh, what film would you really want? No, I mean seriously. Think if you could see one film, right? What would you want to DVD, see? DVD, what DVD, DVD, or releases. Of, yeah, yeah, it's great. It's, put them out of their misery, Steve. They'll be watching this tonight if they're a lucky winner. It's the movie Stigmata. <laughs> Stigmata with <laughs> Patricia Arquette and Gabriel Byrne. <laughs> um, oh, so look forward to that. That's great. That's the big that one. That is brilliant. You play oh, for. look at Carl's face. He's actually offended because he puts. He's the only one that puts any work into this show, and he's got s competitions. He's got educating Ricky, Rockbuster. Got he's the, got, got the song with a story. He's got a song with a story to come that he's like <laughs> trapping. Oh, gone through him. I'm it's uh, unbelievable. Oh. Yeah. yeah, so you're playing for, uh, that collection of arbitrary goodies, plus the big prize this week, Stigmata, featuring Gabriel Byrne. Oh, oh dear. Uh, about Go a woman who I think, um, starts bleeding from the hands. It's a horror okay. film, I think. You'll have to be, uh, 18 or over I've to take it. part. It's not, it's not terrible. Sure. It's all, all right, but Is it better than, uh, Children of the Corn? <laughs> which was a big giveaway <laughs> last week. I haven't seen Children of the Corn. Go on yeah. then. Right, so, uh, so Next where's... week, Teen Wolf 2. <laughs> Go on. Here's, Go on. Here's the, uh, And Tony Banks's own <laughs> solo <Yeah>. album, <laughs> Banks' <laughs> Statement. Tony Banks, remember, is the, uh, uh musician uh, from the Much Love Genesis. But we've got that album to give away. All right then. So, uh, right. To so win I'll, those exclusive prizes. Yeah, yeah, Go on. Yeah, you've got to email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. I saw a sellotape dispenser out in the, uh, uh, there's a well, pair of gloves want. that I don't know who's out, but they're out there and they've been there for a week. So, a pair of well. gloves, a sellotape, a sellotape dispenser, uh, and Tony Banks's <laughs> solo <laughs> album, <laughs> Bank <laughs> Statement. Yeah. Okay, go on. Right, first one. Yeah. Initials JT. Initials right. JT. What's the cryptic clue? Cryptic clue. At the moment, I'm in a river full of logs. Hold on. Yeah? JT, and what's the clue again? 
At the moment, I'm in a river full of logs. Full of logs? Yep. Okay. So, uh, who could it be? JT. At the moment, I'm in a river full of logs. Yeah, go on, right, next second one. one. There's three of them you gotta get. Letter is W. Yeah. Uh, the clue, that lad's got bad asthma. That lad has got I've bad asthma. I've got that asthma. one already. I've got that yeah. one already. W. Yeah. yeah. And okay. finally, the last one mm. is the letter C. Yeah. And, uh, the cryptic clue, is um, Carl is one of these. <laughs> Um, Mousetrap is that musical, isn't it? This isn't a clue, by the way. It is called Mousetrap, isn't it? There's not the, a musical. It's not a musical, musical it's but a it's a, it's a, a right, whodunit right, sort of thing, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Um, <laughs> right, here's a clue. I saw that, uh, <laughs> Imagine <laughs> that. Imagine <laughs> that on the real blockbusters. Yeah, mate. Bob Owen is going, oh, can we stop a minute? Oi, um, you with the nine teddy bears there. <laughs> Mousetrap, that's the show, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> I think so, Bob, yeah. Right, okay, here we go. Right, yeah, so, so, so the camera's back on. Yeah, right, yeah. So, the letter is C, and yeah. the cryptic clue. Uh, I saw that. Mouse trap the other night, uh, but the heating in the in the theatre was what? knackered. What? The heating, the heating in the theatre was knackered, right? Ruined it. Well, we've got that one already as well. Yeah. I mean, these are th th are the first ones are hard, but the so, those two so are just a quick reminder. JT was the first one. At the moment, I'm in a river full of, uh, full of logs. Full of logs. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, second one, W. That lad's got bad asthma. Uh huh. Yeah. And the last one, L uh, C. I saw that mouse trap the other night, but the uh, the heating in the theatre was knackered sure. and uh, it ruined the whole thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, Ricky <laughs> Gervais at xfm no. uk is the email address. You can win. I'm confused. Uh, the various treats, logs, including I'm in a stigmata. I'm in a Gabriel river Brim. full of logs. Yeah. I'm in a river full of logs. Well, we'll do it in about twenty minutes. Yeah, you've got to stay tuned for the answers. It's not, it's not the quickest, so don't go rushing and sort of messing it up. Think about it. And it's random email anyway, so uh -huh. there's no rush, all right? And uh, if you want to email, um, you're welcome to say, please do not send me the prizes, even if I win. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to put that on there if you don't want that junk in your house. Right. The reason we're, you know, we usually sort of play a record out of an outbreak, don't we? Yeah. Carl is so concerned with his little competition, he hasn't got a record ready. Sure. Got one, got one, I got one, I got okay. one. Okay. Sorry, Larry. Yeah. Do you want to do a quick recap, a rec quick recap? Yeah, oh, yeah, I can't yeah, yeah, yeah. even just say it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not, I'm not interested. I'm just not interested. Yeah, go on, Recap. quick. Still send your emails in. Uh, JT, it's some initials of a band, just in case you didn't hear it last week. If I said AK and an exploding pet, that would be Atomic Kitten. Yeah. Right? They know so, what a clue is. So, JT, at the moment, I'm in a river full of logs. Yeah. W, that lad's got bad asthma. And C, uh, I saw that mouse trap the other night. The heating wasn't working, it ruined the night. And, uh, yeah. yeah. That's it. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Yeah. Some stuff. Stigmata. <laughs> <laughs> With Gabriel Byrne. <laughs> Richard Ashcroft. Check the meaning. Oh, I love that. That's brilliant. On XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkerton, who's uh, our producer. Uh, uh, proper producer now. Producer. No, but he's getting. It, but it's, it's more like it now, isn't it? Before he was someone who pressed the buttons. Then he was someone who pressed the buttons who we just made talk like mm. a. Uh, performing monkey. I hear and he's going to be lured away by the Today programme on uh, Radio 4. Because <laughs> <laughs> they've, um, they, they've lost their news editor, I think. Educating <laughs> Ricky, quite topical. Absolutely. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Is well, it? so when you say topical, what do you this, mean topical? this is, uh, what, topical, well, this happened ages ago. Yeah. Y your words, not mine. Have they got a, a Ricky who works there? We can look into that. Um, so, so this Cole's is the big set of got to be given away, Rick. They've got to be given away. This um, is Rockbuster. We've uh, got, uh, obviously the big prize, Stigmata, this week. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna give the prize to, uh, to Ira, I think it's Ira or Ira, but she, she or he, uh, emailed in, uh, the right answers and then said, if you could enclose the receipt for Stigmata, that would be much appreciated. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm amazed by the number of responses we've had. And someone wants a copy of Tony Banks' uh, solo yeah. album, which I was mucking around, so we'd be better buy that in the week to give it away, because I think that would be an amazing prize to give away. If you right, just give the clues again. Do the clues and then just give the answer. Come on. what the answers are. Right, well, the one that everyone was struggling with was the first one. So yeah. I'll save that, so we'll go to the second one. W. Yeah. That lad's got bad asthma. Yeah, we know that. Yeah, what that was it? Weezer. Yeah. yeah. Good one, well done. Uh, the last one, uh, C. The clue was, uh, I saw that mouse trap the other day. Uh, the heating was knackered in the restaurant. Yeah. In the restaurant? In the, the theatre. Yeah. And uh, it ruined the night. Yeah. yeah. So it was a cold play, wasn't it? Yeah, that's a cold yeah. play. Yeah. And uh, JT, uh, at the moment, I'm no, in No, I river. can't think of this one. At the moment, I'm in a river full of logs. Well, I had to say there were some wrong answers. I, what was it again? It was Justin Timberlake. Justin Timberlake. Uh, we had some wrong answers that included Jethro Tull and James Taylor. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't know how that relates to it. I'm annoyed at Lake yeah. when he clearly said river. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's the first thing that cropped up. Not I'm in <laughs> some water full of logs. At the moment, uh, yeah, I'm in some water full of logs. But he actually had to say river, <laughs> so not Lake. That annoys me. I mean, I didn't get it, fair enough. I should have worked out. I should have tried to think like you. A lot of people obviously think like you, which is, uh -huh. which I'm, you know, worried about. But yeah, uh, <laughs> James <laughs> Taylor is great. <laughs> JT, just someone, James Taylor. Just yeah. someone guessing. Yeah, James so, Taylor works. Have we got a winner? Steve, he's I, gonna I, randomly I did, pick I, one. I did have a winner. I've just, um, I've just lost them. Oh. Needless to say, that lucky person. It won't be watching Stigmata tonight. Uh, just randomly get it's, it's just a draw, by the way. It's not the it's first just, one. Okay, I'll just, I'll I, just... I said to Carl in the break, I said, is the first one in? He went, no. I don't want a competition that relies on speed because I don't want to be rushed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so randomly uh, click on just, someone. I'm just going to randomly click on one. Go on. Uh, They've not, they've not put an address. Well, what oh. we can do, we can email back and say, send us your address. Well, of course you can. I think if they haven't put an address. Well, no, t t t okay, read it out. Okay, alright, alright. Yeah. Chris Beaumont. Yeah, lucky winner. Chris Beaumont as Chris one. Beaumont will be watching Stigmata tonight <laughs> with a <laughs> cup of haagen if I'm not much mistaken. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he'll be loving it. Well done to Chris. Need his yeah. address. Right, right then. That's the end of that competition. Right. Can we play a record or something? Well, or... we're on to another feature. Oh, what is this? <laughs> this one is... <laughs> Rick, were you not at the planning meeting? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Go on. This is, uh, that song's got a good story in it. Oh, is this that- oh, God. So tell us the rules. Yeah. Right, the rule is that it's songs that we play on the show every week, and there's a lot of music out that they just keep saying the same oh, thing Oh, just over and over. what is it? What's it's the song, song with the story this with week? A good story. What's the song with the story this week? Just say it. It's Gene Pitney, 24 Hours from Tulsa. Oh, well, I'm really sorry about this. If you're an XFM listener, we gotta listen to this. Go on. Well, do you know what it's about? Yeah, isn't he getting- trying to get back to his girlfriend? Yeah, he's been working away. Um, yeah. lives in Tulsa, he's been, he works quite far away. Right. And he's Will this save us having to listen to the song? Well, it's, it's always good to sort of- Hear, the, hear the story before you hear the story. It's <laughs> like, it's like, you know- sure. you, you, I like this before a film. Yeah, no, go on, go you, on. You, might, you might read the book before you see the film, type thing. Yeah, so, never in my case. <laughs> he's, he's working, he's working miles away, his missus is in, in Tulsa, he's driving back, yeah. And he can't wait. He's only about 24 hours away, and he's, I remember. He's, he's about 24 hours away, and yeah. he, uh, he's a little bit tired on the way home. He's thinking, oh, I don't want to look a mess for when me missus see, sees me. Mm. So he says, uh, right, I'll, uh, stay at a motel, get some energy and that, you know, for mm. when I, uh, see ya, have a Neutral shave. Bar. So he yeah. pulls over at a motel, yeah. and he's locking his car up, getting his suitcase out the back. There's a woman in the car park. He's <sighs> like, oh, she's all right. She looks at him, he thinks- Sex FM 104.9. I don't think the suitcase in the boot is mentioned in the song. I think that's maybe a 12 inch mix or something, I've not heard that. <laughs> well basically, right? Oh, I don't, I don't remember- I'll play the record, for Christ's sake, let them listen to it! I don't remember him saying, cool, she looks like right, in the record. <laughs> yeah, well done. Yeah. 24 hours from Tulsa, Gene Pitney, song with a story. Hmm. You yeah. are quite upset by the, the lyrics of that song, aren't you? I just think it's a bit annoying that, um, <laughs> right, he, he loved this woman. Yeah. Um, everything's going fine, he's only 24 hours away from home, I don't know how, what sort of distance he's done. But, <laughs> but he can't wait to get home. <laughs> and I wait to talk with some woman in the car park to sort of- <laughs> Give him the eye. <laughs> give her the eye. And every, all the, all the, all the, like, the good times he's had with his missus go out the window. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know. That's the dangers of falling in love with a prostitute. <laughs> See, oh, God. What I like about it, I, though, is the fact that he's writing this to his ex-girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. It's like, talking about rubbing it in. <laughs> yeah. I was kissing her and getting off with her, we were having a wild time. It didn't take as long as Carl did explain it, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but did, did you hear the very end, because yeah. he's a loser, because he said, and he can never go home again. Yeah. yeah. So even though he's got this new girlfriend and that, yeah. and he can't see his old mate He anymore. has fallen in love with her. He can't see his old mates anymore, he said! He can't see his old mates anymore! Yeah. I'll it's a sobering lesson, I'll tell you a song, <laughs> next time you stop at the Granada <laughs> Services, <laughs> <laughs> on the way back from, you know, Swansea, <laughs> I'll be tell careful. You, there was a song that was a bit like that by Jim Reeves, um, probably at about the same time a little bit before, right? It was just called, um, just a hundred miles from Mary Ann, right? Mm. And, um, it was him and his horse going through the snow, and he right. just turned He's stopped at a little chef. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's fancied another donkey. <laughs> yeah. No, but, um, it's really sad. It used to make me cry when I was little, because he got there, right, and he, he wouldn't leave old Ben, the horse, mm. and then they, and he dies in the snow, and then so he dies in the snow. <laughs> he's gone again, he's gone again. <laughs> now, I get the same way teary-eyed with, uh, two little boys. Yeah. No, I don't like that. Why not? It's just... 
You think I'd leave you dying when there's room on this horse for two? Climb up here, Jack, we'll soon be flying back to the rank so blue. It was just like when they were playing with the little horse's head, uh, when they were little, and he was a soldier and he helped him and he returned the favour in a war, which to me is a bigger favour <laughs> than just letting him have a go on a hobby horse, but, uh, mm. a lot, lot, lot braver, if you, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, last number one of the sixties as well. Christmas yeah. 1969. And it's, of course, based on truth, that. It's actually, that's a history lesson right there. It is based it on is. fact. It's yeah. a famous, famous it person. I think it was Cromwell. Winston Churchill and Cromwell. It's, yeah, it's Winston Churchill and Cromwell. Cromwell. Cromwell and Winston Churchill. <laughs> yeah, they were both lived ages ago, so they <laughs> lived at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Literally ages ago, so they lived at the same time. Yeah. Well, that's it then. Is it? Yeah. Were you listening to anything we were saying then, Carl? Did, did you understand any of that, that me and Steve were just chatting just about then? that Rolf Harris, uh, did a good song about right. someone who's got to carry on a horse. Right, and what, what, what was about the stuff about Cromwell and Winston? Oh. Which, what do you think that was about? Uh, I missed that. We we're doing humour, we we're doing a little bit of humour. It was a satire on you saying age is not being specific. Do you, um, did, did, do you like that stuff we do? Yeah. <laughs> That's it then. <laughs> <laughs> it's like just a cat looking out a window at a dead m mouse or something. It can't, <laughs> you can go, come here! And it's just looking at the mouse it could eat. You, you wanna, you wanna press the buttons and finish, don't you? Yeah. What are you gonna do, play a record or? No, that's it, it's ads and that's it. Okay. Good, right. Goodbye. Oh, what a wonderful ending. That was the when I was about. And Envy on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Absolutely, yeah, hello. That clang you heard there isn't Carl. No. Carl's away. It's Sturgis. Claire Sturgis is here. Yeah. Hey. You'll know her from the Claire Sturgis show, but uh, we know her from our early days on XFM yeah. and, you know, we're, we're good friends. It's sort of like uh, old times, isn't it? And Carl has uh, had a little surprise birthday present. What's the story with this, Claire? Because I don't well, know Well, do you know, I, I came in on Monday expecting to see his little smiley face yeah. as sure. usual and uh, it's always not here. Uh, yeah. What do you mean? So, but his girlfriend had surprised him and dragged him off to the Caribbean for a week. Wow. No, Canary, isn't it? Oh, Canary, I mean, I yeah, don't know. He, he likes the Caribbean, he likes the crabs. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he was bored of the Caribbean, I thought he didn't enjoy it last time. No, he loved it, didn't he? No, I don't think he did enjoy no, the crabs. No, Tunisia he didn't like. Right. He's but been travelling, hasn't he? I know, yeah. He gets he, a He didn't like Tunisia because there's flies the size of matchboxes. Of course. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, midgets in the kitchen. No, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Midges or midgets? <laughs> midgets, he said. Right. Yeah, it was kitchens. midgets. He wasn't saying anything bad, he said that there were lots of midgets in there. Lots of midgets in the and kitchen. And I thought it was, he'd, he'd gone away to some sort of like theme holiday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> no, this is uh, I think Grand Canaria, all the Canaries or whatever it's And called. how old is Carl? Well, like, 30. Is he 30? Is 30 last week, I think, yeah. Oh, so it was oh. actually a birthday present. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I just so, thought, but, yeah. but, but that's all right. So have you got a competition that you can uh, regale us with, Claire? Because uh, obviously Carl provides a lot on this show. Hold on. We could do what? White Van Clare. White Van Clare? <laughs> yeah. Have you, are you familiar with this? We ask no. you questions, uh, topical questions, just okay. getting your opinion, really, on the, the week's news. Okay, yeah. Um, it's on the spot. You but that. you know I'm a little bit, you know. A little bit simple? That's well, fine. Just a little bit, you know. What? What? I always sit on the fence. Don't oh, I? Well, don't you sit really on the fence. You see, the worst thing there was, she was saying I'm a little bit like, you know, uh, liberal or I was, I I know, I you got... went simple. <laughs> yeah. You well, assumed. I didn't, know, I didn't know. I thought I'm a little bit, what, coked up? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? It's Sturgis. Anything could be possible. <laughs> but, but the other thing is with Carl, we didn't know how good value Carl was until we asked him sort of intelligent well, questions. Well, enough. Because yeah. he, he looks quite intelligent, Well, this is it. I mean, so the thing with you, I don't think we've probed you enough. We don't know what, you know, your views are on a lot of me enough, actually, We don't know what your views are, you know, that's what I'm saying. We yeah. don't know where you stand. I mean, don't sit on the fence. This is the, this is the new Claire Sturgis. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're yeah, gonna dynamic. Find a personality in there, Claire. Let's go back All to right. the old days. <laughs> How about a bit of the Smiths? That was beautiful, Rick. Go on. Oh, you've been practicing. Lovely Gates. Lovely. Smiths. Cemetery Gates. It's a lovely tune. Mm. Lovely song. There's one bit that worries me about it. It's sort of like a, a like a teacher warning. It goes, you must contrive uh, prose and poems, and the words you use should be your own. Don't plagiarize or take on loan. It's sort of like what are you telling us now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sort of like yeah. a lot of people there going. Thanks, Morris. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. See, actually, yeah, that's not mine. That's Wordsworth. Right, I'm gonna write my own. Yeah, yeah. It's weird, isn't it? Queen is Dead, though, one of the great, great I albums. It's not my favourite album. I, I, it was voted best album but of But the all Smiths, time, what I love about the Smiths, they just seem to get, like, the Smiths is that's, just a that's done, brilliant name. Yeah. Don't you think it just captures everything about yeah. them? Yeah. You know. We've got a thing about bad. Bad, um, yeah. Well, I was watching, I was watching, uh, VH1 Classic Smooth <laughs> last night. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, I love it. Absolutely Shade. Joy. Shade always on. You yeah. can always get a love <laughs> bit of Shade. But, um, <laughs> Foreigner were on. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. And, uh, well, I don't know which, I can't remember which tune it was, but, uh, the album I noticed it came from, classy album title, Agent Provocateur. Oh. 
as so oh, mm. it makes my skin crawl. But I also, from the I, album Agent Provocateur. I, I imagine a, there's a, a band called Agent Provocateur, um, and they're from Wigan. It's a it's a girl singer. She's thirty five yeah. in a tight dress, <laughs> and it's yeah. four blokes with ponytails. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Doing covers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, here's what yeah, you they, remember. They, they, they play a wedding. They go, "We're not doing a wedding again." There was people. There was, there was cake yeah. being trodden in. There was exactly. kids. Children yeah. were just sliding across the yeah. parquet floor. Yeah. They weren't yeah. listening to the music. But we, yeah. yeah. Well, we've got a gig at the Marquee coming up soon. <laughs> yeah. yeah, It's uh, endless guest list. Five quid in. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, oh, Agent Provocateur. If your band's Agent Provocateur or oh, Agent yeah. Provocateur, have you ever been in a band? Yeah, called Agent. Yeah, but uh, but that's got to be one of them because it's not. I don't know what that title says. I don't imagine foreigner. I've got that sense of intrigue and well, one of my right, one of the worst names. But okay, to <laughs> pal. But it's <laughs> the worst. This, uh, uh, yeah, let's start worst album titles. Okay, I'll, I'll kick off with to pal, Bridge of Spies. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bridge of Spies. Is that the one that featured China in your hand? I assume so. I don't think I did too many. Um, Bridge okay. of Spies? Who did Bridge this of album? Spies? Who did this album? Um, Beggar on a Beach of Gold. <laughs> Beggar on a Beach of Gold. It's got the likes of Collins written all over it, but I know it's, it's not very Collins. close. Mechanics. Mike and the Mechanics, yeah. of course. I don't know what that means. Good old Mike He's a beggar on the beach of gold. Just look around, there's yeah. some money. <laughs> yeah, what he's saying, mean? he's saying, don't be a tramp, there's, there's some money some there, gold, mate. I don't know what it means. I think he means that everyone else is rich, but he's still poor. Yeah. 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 I l actually, I yeah. like it. Yeah. Oh, it's a bit deep for me, Steve. <laughs> Maybe you just need a little asterisk at the corner and then a little explanation <laughs> at the bottom of the record cover. I'm thinking about this, I'm not quite sure what it means. Oh! <laughs> He's very nice poor one. emotionally. Um, Chumba Wumba. Well, you know, what, what can I- Uneasy listening. Yes! <laughs> I bet it was from the Chumbas. Uh, are they still cracking on? Are they? Because they, they used so. to live in a squat. And They've done about, um, 400 albums, them and the Levelers. Mm. Yeah. Who's the best? Chumba one brought the levelers. So, good question. Thanks for asking that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. What's the t what's the telephone number, Claire? <laughs> it's a uh, oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. Or you can email Ricky dot Gervais at xfm dot co dot uk. Worst album titles ever. It's like real radio. It's isn't just it? like Chris Moyles. It is, isn't it? Exactly. Oh. You've got the big fat guys on the telly. <laughs> yeah. <in here. laughs> You know, and and, uh, uh, he's well. kind of cheeky sidekick. And my uh, comedy Dave. You're almost as funny as Moyles. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed one day. <laughs> right, Sturgis, so you've brought in a record, haven't you? What are you going to play? Well, What's no, this I all just about? Wanna, do you know what, like, a, a bootleg is? Ricky? Oh, what yeah. are you talking yeah. about? Oh, yeah, I've yeah. snapped a lot of them up on white label. Yeah, yeah, yeah go on. okay. Well, no, this is quite a good one that Ian Baker brought in the other day. Sure. It's, uh, it's a bit of Dre, a bit of Snoop Dogg, oh, yeah. mixed in with Crowded House. I thought you'd love it. Oh, intrigued. Right. The juxtaposition there is exciting in itself. <laughs> That's true enough. Play it. The weather episode at Snoop Dogg, Dr. Drake, Crowd House. I love that. Enjoyable. That yeah. works for me, see? Yeah, what do you think? No, it was nice. Well, I she like started it. off all right. We'll give it, should we give her one more go? I like a round of applause for Claire. So yeah, no, that's, that's brilliant. No, that's excellent, that. I love that. Rick, the, yeah, the phone. Oh, it's just gone. <laughs> the <laughs> phone, no, I tell you, the phone board had lit up there, Jerry. Really? There was a call a buzzing call. through on call. A call one. came through. A call came through on line one, yeah. and Sturgis missed it. Carl would never have missed oh. that. He knows how valuable they are. I'm sorry. Yeah. That was probably someone with an amusing album title. No, I did get one, Steve. I what think it's it? one. Someone Do you want to hear it? Yeah, yeah, go on. Um, okay. Uh, this is from Al, who yeah. says, uh, what about this? H to H E, who am the only one. Sorry, H to, to H E. H E. Who am the only one. I don't know what it means. No. Van der Graaff generator. Oh, well, no wonder. That's the thing that you, one of those things at the museum that you wind up and you touch and it makes your hair stand on end. Yeah. That's the scientific thing, in it? Sure. I've given up, Steve. Yeah, no, Do you know, I that didn't really I make me laugh either. I'll be so. honest, I'm thinking that the whole kind of amusing album title thing we should abandon. I, I, I thought that, I, as I, I thought said it. it to be honest with you, I thought it was easier than this. I mean, Chris Moyles makes it work, that kind of crazy comedy okay, uh, let's try radio it. magic. But obviously it's, it, we, and I don't think our listeners are into that stuff. Uh, okay. I just yeah. don't think they can be bothered to get to the phone. I don't think a lot of them are able. I think a lot of them are, you know, <laughs> do you remember still when, smacked up. Do you remember when we spent about three hours trying to get to the Chris, through to the Chris Moyles show? I vaguely, yeah. What was the what was? He was doing this t um, competition, <laughs> and it was um, it was uh, titles, song titles with golf about golf. Like so, we go like drive the cars and yeah. that. And and I was very, I was getting so excited. I went to phone up and go, ah, Duran Duran, golfy, golfy, golf, golf. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, yeah. and I just thought, and, and I, it might have been less to, oh god, yeah, it probably cost me about ages. 30 quid just yeah. to ruin Chris Miles' competition. Yeah. Uh, that was a long time ago. Yeah, those were the days. When we, when we realised, you know, he was a great talent and one to watch. Yeah. Before we'd enjoyed his new TV show. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, anyway. Yeah. Um, that's not. No, that's cheap. It's cheap. It's cheap. Yeah. Anyway, um, what should we talk about now then? Because that was, that, that all went well. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, that's 20 minutes. That's 20 minutes done. <laughs> and we've nailed, we've nailed amusing album titles. We've, um, we've done that. That's fine. So oh, we, we uh, need a new uh, gimmick now. I'll tell you what. Uh, it, it, you know, you know, <laughs> you've got no, something. You've got no, something. Wait, 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 wait. wait. You, know, you know when <laughs> you go comes. out, you take an umbrella you out. You leave the right? house. You've got right, an umbrella. You're going right? Yeah. And it's a really sunny day. <laughs> yeah. And then you go out and you go, oh, I wish I'd bothered with that because yeah. it's in the way. But then, right, imagine when you go out, right, it's and raining, it, it's raining. No, no. You go out without an umbrella. <laughs> okay. And then it rains. <laughs> oh, what's, no. what's going on there? Oh, isn't no. That weird, isn't it? We've so all been there. So, We've so all phone been there. if you've got like funny, weird observations of things that happen, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that about umbrellas or any kind of sort of yeah. accessory or hat. Give them that right again, Claire. This is going to be brilliant. <laughs> this is going to be great. Take this one. Take this one. 800 one, two, three, four. Just comedy observations. Yeah, stuff you thought with. of. Wacky stuff you thought of. <laughs> Just tell us what kind <laughs> of stuff you've come up with. Get the Sony people on the phone. This is dynamite. Swayed. Uh, positivity. Absolutely. They could always do a good chorus, couldn't they? They, they could indeed. Um, I, I think we could play Pink. Is it just, is that really way out? You, you're saying that it'd pink, be wrong? you can't yeah. play Pink. I like that new one. Yeah, but it, whether or not it's in the building. Up, so no, you not that one. Get the that one started. <laughs> do you know who that's written by? Do you know who that's I'm written by? I'm trying to call the nurse, but she's being a little bitch. This that is one. a little bit interesting. You know, um, let's get the party started. I'm coming up. Yeah, you know, that, you know who that's written by. Well, the way you say it sounds a bit like um, is it? <laughs> <laughs> is it Radiohead? Tom York, you're thinking no. No, <laughs> let's uh, get the party started. I'm coming, I'm coming up. Coming up. I'm coming up. Careful, I'm coming up. Let's get the party started. I love it. One more case. Is it Johnny Rotten? Is Johnny Rotten? But this is the truth. It's written by that woman. With the goggles and the big hat that used to be in Four Non Blondes. <laughs> is it? It's written by her. Oh, you're not looking, you're not thinking of Snork, are you? No, 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 no. Splits. No, I oft, I oft got the two confused. Yeah. But, uh, no. Sorry, goggle, it's goggle and the big hat. She had a big hat, didn't I she? Know, and a I pair of goggles exactly and kind of sort what of a sort of jippo look about her. What do you mean goggles? You can't say jippo. What do you mean goggles? <laughs> what's the, what's <laughs> the correct word to say? Gypsy. Jippo is, yeah, it's a terrible derogatory term. It's like, well, she looked like some kind of scrounger. And, um, she sort of had like matted dreadlocks and selling clothes pegs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, lucky, right. lucky, lucky Heather, lucky Heather. Yeah, <laughs> she she had a big leather. Hat. Remember when you got stopped with lucky Heather and you oh, didn't buy it? And then you had some bad luck. I had some bad luck about ten minutes later. Yeah, so I always stop and buy something. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> so I've got on, so shed loads of it at home. Because <laughs> I, I don't know when you got to throw it away. They don't tell you how long you got to keep it for for six, the good luck. Six of January. <laughs> yeah, keeping it after that's bad luck. Yeah. I'm getting confused again, aren't I? Um, <laughs> um, no, what it was. I don't know which myth to believe in. Right, stop it. Let's go back go to. Uh, oh, I've got a party started. So when are you coming <laughs> up? up? Yeah, um, that is. As so Fleagle. Is that her name? No, that's one of the banana splits. Now you've confused me. <laughs> Fleagle's the one with the big teeth and right. the and the goggles. Right. Snork is the one with the, uh, basically. To be honest, I think it's an elephant. Okay. I think they've they've pretended they've made up an animal. There's so they, many people listening who don't know who the banana splits are. The banana splits. The banana splits. <laughs> <laughs> the, right. Listen, this yes, they know the banana splits are, and even people under twenty and over. Oh. Um, uh, Snork, Fleagle, Drooper. Who was the other one? If you can remember the name of that. Yeah, what's the number? Because yeah. I actually want to know this. This is what radio's for. When I can't think of something, they tell me. Yeah. So it's 08700 800 Drooper and Snork. I've no idea. I've God. No idea. Flegel, Drooper and Snork. Da da, da da, Drooper and Snork. Flegel. Bingo! Nice. Well done. Don't bother calling. <laughs> 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 Sorry. That particular uh, tragedy or that has yeah. been avoided. Bingo. I yeah. don't know what Bingo looks passed. like. Yeah. There was one anyway. was, There was one that had sewn up eyes. Drooper, I think. Sorry, go on. No, anyway, um, w uh, my point was this. Go on. Um, Pink. Oh, I can't be bothered. <laughs> no, really? I can't be bothered. I think Pink. we can play that new one by Pink. You can sort of play like, Pink. Why? Because it's too poppy. They just won't allow Pink on XFM. They what? They will not allow Pink on XFM. They what? They Wait a minute, that's red rag to a ball. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always someone's, red someone's ball. telling you that you can't do something. <laughs> that's crazy. Right, let's also get the new Justin Timberlake single. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll the thing what? is, Ricky, you're gonna have to nip down and have a word with Foxy because we haven't got it up here. Really? Yeah. I'd I mean, love, to. love it. Can't you call someone at Capital Radio? Well, you know, can we call someone? No, what's that one by Busted? That's what I go to school for. What about Abs? That's Dynamite. Abs, the <laughs> new one from Abs, Dynamite. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, play a record and we'll discuss this pink thing. We do uh, a bit of Cat. <laughs> oh, Cat Stevens. Yeah, yeah, yeah Cat's Bullet 4. This is Sittings. Lovely. Piano and everything, innit? Oh, this was the tune we were originally gonna use as the theme music for TV's The Office. That starts yeah. again on Monday, I think it's <laughs> right. Just play it. <laughs> Cat Stevens and sitting. I couldn't find Pink, Rick, but I've got the S Club Juniors. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Pink is all right. Magic just because right? it, it hasn't got the credibility of like new punk and new metal, it's cool. a good tune. Uh -huh. It's all right. Don't, don't, we've never been snobby. We've never worried about credibility, have we? Hearsay. 
They're all down there, I can go and get them. I'll tell you what, if you're gonna do that, I'm just gonna play adverts from now on. Can we play some adverts? <laughs> Supergrass. Grace on XFM 104.9. I've been forgetting to say that. Yes. It's all gone to pot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Hello there. Little Carl's not here. Claire Sturgis is here. Absolutely. Hello. Yeah. Cracking. Yeah. Now, I think we can play pink, you know. Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't want to be responsible for it. No. I mean, I don't. I don't have a problem particularly with the lady. You know, she's made uh, a good effort. <laughs> with it, and I think, but apparently, it's it's either number one or it's gonna it's likely to be number one really? this, uh, this week. So, so um, it's not that rebellious. Me it's not particularly this, it? rebellious. No, but um, I don't know. I mean, what worries me is uh, that whether the audience will turn against you, and that you'll lose all musical credibility. <laughs> I've that's the, that's the, no, I did have any. Little, very little. Really? I, um, had a, an email just now and I think maybe this answers why we didn't get very many calls about the, uh, give us a crazy band name or an, an album title. Think about the number? They, no, 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 they think maybe they're all at the, uh, the march, the big march. <laughs> <laughs> Which I makes a lot of sense because I would, I would imagine a lot of the sort of losers that listen to our show. What's the march Probably about? also agree that, uh, they should go and protest about a war. Oh, it's the oh, anti-war anti march, anti -war yeah. march. Yeah. <laughs> it's the gangster war. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Well, I don't really know the ins and outs of this this whole thing, really. Uh, I mean, it sounds yeah. like it's a long way away. I, I, I suppose it's a long way away. Yeah. They, they were asked if they wanted a war, and they said no. Is yeah. that so bad, Steve? Yeah. No, I, I mean, good luck to them. I, I don't think he's gonna have much effect, to be honest. <laughs> You don't think? No, I don't really believe but, but she's I, I don't think he's worried in the light in the slightest. A couple no. of sort of dropouts and some sort of junkies are in the streets, you know. Well, you you, you say that you ladies. say that, but what what's their names? Um, specials, Free Nelson Mandela. Eight years later, he was out. <laughs> That's true enough. So <laughs> That's absolute. I forgot I, about that. I think they were and yeah, well, and and uh, Live Aid sorted out world <laughs> hunger. Yeah, that, that, that went into that. So that was. Uh, but um, I see the difference there is Ebony and Ivory, no more racism <laughs> now. <laughs> but musicians- That was done. Rick, you see musicians were involved there. Yeah. I don't think any musicians are involved this time. I think, well, I think David Albarn's there, they but- prob They've probably taken their, their bongos and their didgeridoos. The tablers. Is you can see they're, they're walking down now, loads of ponchos. Yeah. You were gonna wear a poncho once, you thought it'd make you more of a hit with the ladies, well, weren't you? Oh, no, but they're so I mean, now, ponchos. They are, in top really. shop, they are so now. So you'd have been ahead of your time. Uh, yeah. As ever, as ever. You see, I think if you wait a couple of years, those clogs are being. Exactly. This is what I'm hoping. You just- What about this pipe? I like to think that they're going to- the pipe- the pipe is definitely on the way back at some point. The yeah, the pipe with What the do you children. think of a lady- uh, uh, sorry, as a lady, what do you think of a man who smokes a pipe? I think it's lovely. Do you think it's quite yeah, sexy? Very sexy, yeah. I think it's quite I wouldn't want to snog It you takes though. your breath away. What? Because I've given up smoking, Steve. Yeah, it takes- it takes- Well, I- <laughs> I won't be giving you a blowback. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that phrase is, Rick. I- I, I gambled with that phrase. <laughs> I don't know if a blowback- I don't- that could be obscene. <laughs> I've got no idea what a no, blowback is. No, I think is. it is very- very sexy in a sort of a Val Dunican kind of way. He never smoked a pipe. Not Did he not? No, he smoked no. a goat. Oh, right. Well, he sang about smoking a goat. But what about Paddy McGinnis' goat? You know, if you look at pictures of the great sort of thinkers of our time, and you know, maybe at, their, at college or university in the sort of 1930s, mm. you've got those great, you know, the great thing of people who became the great artists of our century, and yeah. you see pictures of them in Oxbridge when they're in 19, they're all smoking pipes in tweed suits. Yeah. No young people now are smoking pipes. I fear that it's gonna be dead in like 15 years. I don't think anyone's gonna be smoking pipes. But I they're, think again, you're I feel like maybe it's me with a certain profile. Yeah. Maybe I've got to yeah. try and bring it back. Bring it back. I you think know, so. And then we could be seeing kids in Top Shop on a Saturday. Yeah. And let's not forget sniffing Snuff. <laughs> Some snuff. <laughs> I, I, my nan yeah. used to sit there with two brown stains just dribbling through her nose. Lovely. Sit, uh, sit, yeah, oh. and that bit of snuff and some gin. Well, this uh, is it. I, but I, cause my friend always said if he won, um, millions of pounds, he'd spend it all trying to bring back as a fashion accessory the cape. <laughs> the cape? <laughs> cause I think See, the cape. I quite like cause the you cape, can make such it? an entrance with the cape. And a cane. A cape and a cane, yeah, and a top hat. I wish people had to wear hats now. I'd see, I, 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 I can I carry off because my shape and size. I look like Bertie Bassett. <laughs> Whereas <laughs> you'd look, you look Basil Rathbone. I'd, well, or I'd look you'd, pretty good at all sort of you'd cut a good, Yeah, yeah. Look, wow. You but I'd, could I sweep into a room? You I know. know. You yeah, see, I think you look like. Don't, don't get this wrong. Don't take this wrong. Like <laughs> we're mates. I think you look like a freak with a cape on. <laughs> okay. So all right. Well. And at which point would you take it one <laughs> step further and add the deer stalker? You know, and go the whole Sherlock Holmes. So like, yeah, I'd have the cape, the pipe, the deer stalker. Yeah. And I'd solve crimes. <laughs> it looks great. Right. It looked like uh, as some sort you of. You could be my fat companion. <laughs> <laughs> I could be. What I'd sort of like get padding and stuff. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, I like that. Yeah. 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 I'd yeah. like to solve- I'd like to solve more crimes, if I'm being truthful. I'd like to- I would love I, to know, solve I, crimes. Just to solve one crime would be oh, great. I wouldn't- I wouldn't matter if I solved it. If I- please came to me and said, I went- I'd just look at the first one, i go in. 
Yeah. Just get it off the streets, you know what I mean? Just like, tick, done that. Sure. Yeah. But you I know. just feel there'd be something, I, th I feel like maybe I, cause you know like in, in TV shows, it always used to be, you know, they were a, like, they were a doctor who also solved crimes, they were a plumber, they solved crimes. Quincy. Quincy, Quincy. you know, oh, yeah. yeah. But, you know, a couple of sort of BAFTA winning writers. What did Heart to Heart do? Also solve crimes. That's kind of, be good, that'd that'd be great. What did Heart to Heart do? They were just millionaires. They were just a couple, a millionaire couple who would invariably sort you know, uh, uh, what was the, they, Murder they, She Wrote? They did that every week though, every week Heart to Heart. Murder She Wrote. She wrote it and she solved it. She always solved it. It's brilliant. Murder She Did wouldn't have been such a good sort of no, like thing. No, no, no. 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 Um, but this is what I mean, you don't seem to get that anymore. You know, people who uh, do one job for a living. You know, DJ who also solves crimes. A was it, a, what, the DJ who solved crime that was um, shoestring. Was he a DJ? Yeah, he was. He was Eddie a private ear, was 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 wasn't he? He was, was a, a private DJ ear was also a on private the radio. Eye. Is that what that was? That the thing yeah. they did? Not private eye, private ear. Is that what they said? Yeah. And how did he solve it? He worked out clues yeah. for call-ins and stuff. Yeah. No, he used to leave the building. <laughs> 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 but he didn't just sit there and play records and then try and guess. <laughs> That's so, great! <laughs> give us a call on the usual number <laughs> if you've got any idea, uh, who murdered. Uh, uh no, it's snitch hour. Got yeah. a letter here. Who well, reckons I she knows? I know a lot of my friends are, uh, big fans of Midnight Caller. Was, do you remember oh, Midnight Caller? Yeah, was yeah. he a he DJ who solved crimes? Yeah, it was one of those late night things in America, wasn't it? But did, was he a DJ? He solved crimes, didn't he? I don't know if he'd solved crimes or just solved- If you've ever solved a crime, email solved us. Solved puzzles. <laughs> he, had, he had one of those puzzler books. Weren't you on the front cover of Puzzler once? One of those things you get, weren't mm. you? Puzzler. Were you? Was I? No, no. I don't think so. Oh, it was your other friend, a friend who was of mine, a DJ, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, it was, yeah. Magazine. That's it, yeah. So was, was Puzzler a rude thing? No, no, it was one of those things that those you Those puzzle books you can you, buy you, in you, oh, DJs. Oh, actually, it's a puzzle. You do oh, for coach see. journeys. And they just put- They just put- It was pitched on without permission. Yeah. And I think they're just like, well, I didn't give permission. They just, they just find, like, um, like celebrities and they just get their picture and they stick them on the well, front. Well, they would have yeah. used me then, would they? Well, I, I forgot. I didn't, I didn't. Hey, Pink. Should we play Pink? Yeah. Oh, man. I don't live by the rules. Be on your head. Here we go. That was the strokes and <laughs> kids are <laughs> kids are mental. Yeah. That was no, you're all right. No, shut up. No, the thing is, I, I think if we'd introduced that as just <laughs> and we didn't mention who it was and we just said this is the new one from one of those trendy new bands, you know, the Boomtown Rats. <laughs> 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 and, um, ah, I'm sure they, these oh. listeners would have happily accepted it. Yeah. As it was, they knew it was pink, and the, the phone lines have gone crazy. We had upwards of two four. calls. <laughs> <laughs> we had, I'll tell you this, we had between two and four calls. <laughs> And, um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and they've not, they've not enjoyed it. Why do we do it. this show? They've we don't need it. to do this show. <laughs> because you we, love us. We could be on Radio 1. Oh, man, I like We could be on Radio 2, probably. Yeah. I don't know. Virgin, uh, uh, I think, called once. Yeah. Um, Someone just ago. emailed, they just said, uh, Pink Sounds Like Run For The Sun by Bucks Fizz. <laughs> 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 I can see what they're thinking. <laughs> uh, what do they want then? Well, yes. Okay. F cool. What's the phone oh, number again? Be, you know, you know what people <laughs> like. They, I never. Do you? Know, I never understand who phones already. Who tries? It took us like two hours to <laughs> fail to get through to Chris Moyles. <laughs> what phone radio stations? Can you please play the new one by The Strokes? You just buy it, or you'll have the album. Why have you got to hear it on the radio? What difference does that make? Some guy talks at the end and the, and the beginning of it. Yeah. Partially ruins the song. I, I can't understand who phones up for a request. We're really alienating our listeners yeah. now, aren't we? Nice We're going, one. we don't care what you think, go and buy it. We're yeah. going to play what we want and we don't care. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're not being particularly funny or interesting. Oh. We haven't even got that to fall back on. I'll tell you what it is, we're arrogance. <laughs> Laziness. When you've got a, when you've got a, a hit TV show on your hand and you've won the awards and you're doing and you're <laughs> make, you're making the kind of money that you are at those <laughs> massive corporate gigs, yeah, where they're paying yeah. you thousands of pounds to turn up for ten minutes. You, you don't need this. You, I mean, Steve, and, uh, Steve, don't don't you get that then? I'm afraid I don't, Claire. No, I I no, we we no, we, no. Uh, we oh, carved it up early on that. Um, Steve would not be making the sort of money that <laughs> I would. Yes. And, uh, he shook on that. That was, that was written contractually. <laughs> yeah, <in those> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I think- Oh, uh, so you it, did shake on that? Oh, yeah. yes. It oh, would yes. be, and it would be horrible to go back I don't think he realised quite the difference. Yeah. Um, but, but you know- huge success. I, I don't think yeah. he'd want me to Welsh on it. Right. I don't <laughs> think he'd be happy with himself if yeah. I gave him any- I would couldn't it? live with myself if you <laughs> gave me some of that cash. <laughs> well, what should we play then? What should we play some- Should we, we play the strokes or something? playing the strokes? Oh, yeah. then, that's it. Oh, thank God for that. Electric soft braid. Same way every day. Is that what you want? Is that what you want? Do you mean St me or the listener? The listener. Sure. Is it- uh, what? So they didn't like- so they want good music, they see? But apparently, Rick, they, so, wait, they would prefer, uh, good music to They pink. want good music, do they? Are you sure they want good music? They, they, they appear to want good music, Rick. Why, right. wait a minute, what are you thinking? I was thinking of playing a really good record next. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. They, they've woke me up now. They Go want on. good music. They don't want, right. So, 
I will do a little deal with them. Okay. <laughs> I will play them a fantastic piece of music. As long as they promise to turn the stereo up to number ten. <gasps> wee, wee, yeah, wee, 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 yeah, wee. What about yeah. the neighbours, Rick? Think about the neighbours. What? You think they'll annoy the neighbours? They may annoy Steve, the maybe I want them to annoy the neighbours. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> what, what? Rick? You know what that was? What? It's the sound of the rule book being torn up. Yes! Yeah. Rick? Yeah. Yeah, you think I'm playing with fire? It sounds like it. Maybe I like getting burned. <laughs> oh, <laughs> careful, Rick, careful. Because you could scold your hands, but what about your elbows? <laughs> <laughs> you know what that meant? I wish I knew what I meant. I didn't really think right. that through. This is a great piece of music by one of the greatest bands ever. Okay, it's one of their best songs. Yeah, that's okay. true. Okay. It is long. It's a long but tune. What, you know, what, what? What, you can't handle what? it? What? You can't, you don't want eight minutes Ooh, of you don't want eight minutes of cracking music. Yeah, listen to this. Please switch off your radio. No, seriously, turn the radio up. Turn, turn it, it, crank it turn up. Turn it, crank it up. Go. Rock it up. That makes up for pink, doesn't oh, it? Oh, man alive. Oh, that's It's an amazing track. Out. It's incredible. And that, it is, I mean, Incredible! It's textbook but, rock and roll. But that uh, when I was growing up, I had two favourite lyrics all time, and uh, one of them's in there: "Meet the new boss, same as the old boss." Yeah, it sends a shiver down your spine. It's fantastic. And the other one was um, "It's on America's tortured brow that Mickey Mouse has grown up a cow." Nice. You know that is nice. Who? Phone in. This would be a competition. What should we give away? Um, office. <laughs> we haven't got any, have we? Just why don't you just sign that's your like signature on a piece of paper or something? That's got to be worth something in a couple of years. Four quid. Yeah, <laughs> four pounds you get on <laughs> it eBay. Would cheapen the piece of paper. <laughs> yeah, not if it's a rubbish bit of paper. I've had an which, email which I probably would sign. There's an e email here from uh, Davy. Look, it's lit up. No, wait a minute. Look at that. Oh my god. They've gone mad. They uh, answer it. Put them live. Oh. They might know the answer. Hang on. We'll give them. We'll give them some. We'll give them some CD. How do you? How do you? Oh, why do you figure that out? Let me just read this email. Go on. Yeah, if you're having to play, it says here, if you're having to play extra ad breaks and eight minute long songs, it just goes to show who provides all the material for that radio show of yours, uh, did Carl secretly write The Office as well? <laughs> and I think to myself, <laughs> it's like, what, what do you oh, want from us? We'll just see if <laughs> That's one of the most incredible rock and roll tunes ever laid down on vinyl and you're whinging. I know. Because you'd rather have our inane banter. What kind of a person are no, you? No, they'd rather have Carl's inane well, banter. Clearly. Don't, don't big your I roll just, up. No, they don't want that at all, Steve. I've just had a phone call from a very nice girl saying, where's Carl? I said, well, you know, he's back next week. Well, what's wrong with me? She went, no, you're lovely, Claire. but Carl calms the other two down. Sure. Really? Sure. Can, can we can just see if someone's on the phone? Is yeah, go on, there? Have we got? Right, what are we going to give him? We're going to give him we some CDs. So we're running on well, take the name. Right, right. Anyone there? Hello? Hello? Oh, God, there's someone there! Oh, I've got to put my headphones on. Oh, hang on. Oh, uh, God, what was the, uh, what was the lyric Stay again? Stay there, please. All right. It's on America's tortured brow that Mickey Mouse has grown up a cow. Life on Mars, David Life Bowie. on Mars, David Bowie. Oh. It's easy as that. Nice. What's your name? It's John Ball. John Ball. John, I'll be honest with you, we got nothing. We got nothing to give uh, you. That's not good enough. No, no. we'll get him some. We're giving him, yeah, we're giving him an office CD. He doesn't, we some... can't keep doing that, Rick. It's We've got nothing yes, else. They don't, give, they don't give us anything, do they? They don't, they, uh, oh. <laughs> it's a wonder we get into the building. No I one's know, around on Saturdays. No one cares. Office I mean. DVD. Yeah, what, okay. what would you really like, though, if you could have anything? Yeah, Office DVD. See? There you go. Uh, Brilliant. Okay. Stay on the line, mate, and I'll get you details, okay? Excellent. That was a competition. We did- that was like real radio. Well done. It was like real radio. Now we've got to play David Bowie, haven't we? That's what they oh, do. Don't, you Foxy. are, I can see what you no, mean. No, but Foxy would have it well, you're lined gonna have a, up. you're gonna have a heart attack. Am I? Like, <laughs> live on air. It'll be <laughs> yeah. dramatic radio, and that's Sony Award winning, I know that. Any kind of- <laughs> I think you remember when Tony Blackburn had his breakdown on there. I think, did he win awards for that? I mean, it was pretty impressive Probably. stuff. It was pretty intense. <laughs> yeah, what, well, what, breakdown yeah, award? have a breakdown, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, the, the, uh, this year's best breakdown on radio. <laughs> Tony Blackburn. Yeah, but, um. Or Tessa, Tessa, marry me. Yeah, it was something like that, wasn't it? Yeah. Can you play the same song again and again and again? Must did have been fascinating radio. Uh. That <laughs> sounds like Capital Now. <laughs> Is that satire? Uh, high five. Is that nice We've done there. Oh, well done. Well oh, done. Are we owned by Capital. You've, you've got, got yeah. <laughs> yeah we, remember what happened last time? Sure. And now Richard Park, who owned Capital, is is the grand master. What? The grand master. <laughs> his grandfather. No, he's a headmaster, um, headmaster of um, Fame Academy. Oh, is he? Yeah. Okay, let's play a record now because you you have to lie down because you're, <laughs> you're just getting so worked up now. I can tell when there's an excitement and enthusiasm and sweat, beads of sweat run down. Well, your it started off so badly. We had nothing, but then I did a competition, gave away some things. You've got an email that really annoyed you, haven't you? Well, we can talk about that later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, whenever I see beads of sweat, I know because that's Jeez. not the Ricky Gervais I know. <laughs> okay. It worries me. You never work yourself up into any kind of sweat. Okay. So let's let's play. Out, let's, um, we're going. So well, aren't we? What about a bit of Beck? Was that a lovely bit of Beck? Just yeah. to everything out. Just yeah. calm everything yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Relax. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're there you are. Yeah. You're gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beck. Beautiful, that. Good tune. Brilliant. Good tune. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Lost Cause. XFM 104.9. It's going well, isn't it? Oh, I'm loving it. Go right, Let's do some else then. Yeah. Adverts. Yeah. Adverts. I'd love to hear some adverts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, please. There it is. Life on Mars. With that great lyric by David
The chances of anything coming from Mars are a million to one. one. And yet they come. Yeah, and still they <laughs> and come. And still they come. And oh, still I know what you get. Would you get that? A lab rock. I'd like to A million yeah. to one. But it's, it's yeah. a million to one and still they come. Clint. Yeah, and yeah. Still they they yeah, didn't yeah. know the odds. <laughs> I go, what are you doing? It's a million <laughs> to one. <laughs> it's what? <laughs> Some guy There's a that. million to one on you. We should have put a bet on you. Didn't, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't tell me you were coming. You notified us. We could have split we it 50 50. I could have made it a little bit. I could have gone, wow. I could have probably got them up to a million and a half. Four. Now you're here. We're never going to get good odds. Oh, Gorg, the chances of that. Gorgie! The chances of that happening were a million what to What have you come for? They've probably come for that <laughs> Well, why didn't you sneak in? They've come for that quash drink, haven't they, again? You could have snuck oh, down. Oh, what are you, you could doing? have snow and flown back uh, and then made another You know, you know that fella? We come for that drink you call quash. I bet he'd get off with snork. <laughs> Wouldn't well, he? He'd meet are you thinking fits. of weird stuff again? <laughs> you're, you're thinking of crazy <laughs> ideas again. What about those, oh. uh, those smash aliens? Or, you got something on them, have you? The yeah. Little, you know, uh, the, they like, went out, right, without an umbrella. <laughs> oh! Poured down. It rained. I knew it would. <laughs> yeah! I knew it would. Anyway. Oh, anyway, well, David Barrett. Now, beautiful. look, this is spiralling. Can I just mention Lynn, who's just phoned, because she was queuing up all night outside the Apollo for Bowie tickets, and she got a pair, so oh, she's well, dead well, happy. She, can you dedicate that to everyone who's queuing up, so... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Best so of luck to them. Jeez. And I wanted to tell you about the time Bowie came into XFM to talk to Zoe Ball. David uh, no. came in, did he? Was this recently? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm not going to mention her name. She works in the office, Charlotte. Uh, when he walked by her desk, which you have to do when you come to the studio, she didn't actually meet him, shake his hands, or, or make eye contact, but she actually cried because he was in her vicinity. Really? And she, wow. she actually burst into tears when he walked by. Isn't Rick, that? I I've made that. women do that. <laughs> 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 so. You know. You've got something in common. Well, a little something with in common with David Bowie. But they, yeah, but they, they, <laughs> uh, uh, they whimper and weep when you're in. Mm. You know what I mean? It's sort of like... There's <laughs> a lot more screeching, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of screaming. Tell them about that emo you just well, got. But, guy... Right, I've got to tell the, the uh... The, I, was, I nearly said the fans! <laughs> <laughs> People who happen to be listening to XFM waiting for the yeah. person after us. Who's on next? Natasha's Natasha. Natasha. With the football yeah. show. Right, the right. Um... Uh, Steve was genuinely annoyed. I laughed, right? <laughs> Steve was genuinely annoyed. He doesn't like, he doesn't like rudeness or people insulting him from I a distance. I can't I'm not sure I can find it. Oh, uh, what was it? Oh, you gotta find it. Well, hang on, let me, uh... Oh, uh, hang on. This is good radio as well, the sound of a, a <laughs> mouse clicking in the distance. Well, I'll just keep talking. I'll just keep talking. Can't what was, can come up with some was, magic. What was Scooby-Doo all, all about? A talking dog is a bit weird, <laughs> isn't it? Oh, what are the... Um, and then, right, what was that? Wacky Races? Uh, I don't know if, I don't know, wait a minute, no, wait a minute. So why did they run, the cavemen, if they, uh, the car? I've got it, I've, I've got, got it. it. Right, okay, um, <laughs> this is an email, this is an email that was sent through. Right. Uh, and I, I th this is my feeling, I think if you're gonna email an insult, <laughs> you've got to at least be clear what the insult is. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you can't make me do the work. You can't make me try and guess or figure no. out. No. It's like sending someone hate mail and they have to pay postage. Yeah, exactly. You exactly. go, well, if you're gonna s- what yeah. you me Exactly. Or making, yeah, an obscene phone call, but correct. Yeah, uh, correct they, call. yeah, yeah, the, uh, the postman just asked you 25 people before he handed exactly. you a letter yeah, bomb. Yeah. Go on. It says, uh, Merchant. <laughs> merchant! <laughs> it opens with Merchant. <laughs> Who are you, call sad, exclamation mark. <gasps> At least my mother still don't cut my hair. Merchant, who are you call sad? At least my mother still don't cut my hair. Is it an anagram? I don't know. I, I feel like it's been translated from the <laughs> French. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a Japanese fellow yeah, who hates exactly, you. Exactly. And he's he's There's got a a, shit, yeah. he's got a Japanese English dictionary. It's just it's just literal. Yeah. <laughs> so um, how does he know your mum cuts your hair then? Have you said, you've never said that on there, have you? <laughs> It's not true, Gervais. <laughs> 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 can I just say, uh, I think your hair looks really nice, Thank Thank I've known you for about <laughs> no, five does. years now, oh, no, it's it, lovely. Uh, I, la I laughed at you needing someone to say it, it looks fine, yeah, it looks good. What do you mean it looks fine? <laughs> <laughs> it does look good, it looks good. He's got a little bit of product on it, hasn't he? <laughs> he <Yeah. laughs> has. Maybe I have. Maybe I have. <laughs> a little bit of hair gel, what maybe, do you uh, Maybe Gavin had his fingers all over it <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Yeah, I have my hair cut by Gavin of, uh, West Hampstead. Is it he called, is that, is what it's called, Gavin, or is he a bloke who works in- It's Gavin who works in- Do you use stuff. that fudge right. stuff on Sorry, is that- No, no, but seriously. I use a form of clay. A moulding <laughs> clay. Yeah, that's, yeah. Mad. Gavin, Gavin it's recommended mad. it. Yeah. Gavin recommended it, and I've been very happy so far. <laughs> Hold on, though. Rick, what do you use? Uh, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Don't, I just sort of- Well, that's obvious. <laughs> no, I just sort of, like, comb it back and whatever way it falls, really. Yeah. Um, but, um- You had more questions about Gavin? 
Yeah, no. I was up seeing Gavin yesterday, um, just having a haircut. There's no, nothing untoward. <laughs> and, um, and I was, and I went, I thought I popped past Habitat. There's a Habitat, and it's quite a trendy kind of, um, uh, designer furniture shop or whatever. Sure. And I thought I popped in there. I thought I'll pick up the, uh, the sort of brochure, the, the catalogue. There was a big stack of the new catalogue. You were stunned by the prices you're gonna tell me, aren't you? No, I'll tell you what, I was about walking out with the, the guy went, oh, hey, where are you, hey? Where are you going with the hair? It's a great looking haircut, but where are you going with that catalogue? I went, what do you mean? He went, it's two quid. You've got to pay two pounds for a catalogue from Habitat. And I was, and I said, well, I could go down to Argos, I can get as many as I want for free. I can go crazy in Argos, I can get them Littlewoods, the, the mail order people, yeah. they'll send it to my home. Yeah. I gotta pay two, there's lingerie in that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've just got like some furniture and stuff. <laughs> And I'm paying two quid for me. If there were some ladies draped over the kind of filing cabinets, <laughs> I'd be interested. I'd I pay two quid. I love the fact that you, you- what did you say that you didn't say I can go down to Argus and get as many as I like? What I did, did you say? Yeah, I did. I did. I said, I said, well, what are you talking about? This is, I, what, what, I'm, why am I paying two quid? That is weird charging for a catalogue. But this is a catalogue just said, to, just to tell me what I might want to buy. It's sort of their calling card. It's like paying for a poster or a sticker. Exactly. This something. is what, it's just like, it's almost like paying an entrance fee to go into the shop. Yeah. That's it, a good idea. It's a good idea. It's a good, I mean, because it's good to just walk around and browse. So, <laughs> I mean, I'd pay a quid to uh, walk around a really yeah. good shop. Yeah, but I'll tell you this, the, uh, yeah, if Habitat maybe had some kind of, like, sort of centrefold. Why don't you do I'd this? I'd be interested. I'll tell you what, in a great shop like Habitat, you pay a pound, right? If you buy anything, that comes off the thing. If you don't buy anything, you've, you've paid a you pound to stop quid. wasting their time. It's an incentive to buy. I wouldn't like it. Sure. I wouldn't go in there. I think it's a terrible idea. <laughs> well, what anyway, we, uh, that's that's. What should we play? That was a sideways look at the, <laughs> the world of high street shock. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, you should play the award-winning Ms. Dynamite. Yeah, oh, yeah go she's on. cracking. Yeah, Ms. Dynamite. Good, that isn't it. It's cracking. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, Mercury award-winning. Absolutely. Well done. Yeah, good luck to her. Good luck to her. I must admit, I went in the streets, but I yeah. she's, she's a very good second choice, and mm. uh, you know, wish all the. Luck in the world. All the luck in the so world. You're, I'm looking at your hair. It's not right? bad, is it? And you've, you've, you have bigged it up, so you're quite, so I, I assume you didn't go to a barger, barber. You've got this, this, this is a hairdresser's. This is right. Gavin of Westminster. Okay, I'm gonna ask you now, yeah. right? And I'm not gonna take the mickey, even if it's a hundred pounds, I think you're a fool, and I know you wouldn't pay that much, but it's obviously more than the fiver then, isn't yes. it? Yes. How much do you pay? Ricky Gervais, for this haircut, I paid the princely sum, and I was proud of it, twenty-two notes. Mm. But, That's right. but I went up to 24 because I was pleased with what I had. <laughs> Little tip for him. <laughs> Two quid tip. Two quid tip. I could have just given him one of those Habitat catalogues. <laughs> <laughs> he'd have been pleased with that. I love Just slap that on the desk. Yeah, and he'd have gone, thanks very much. Oh, so you'd have to go, I'm going to be honest, Gavin. <laughs> that is not free. <laughs> exactly. If that had been an Argus catalogue, then throw me out of it, it'd be an insult. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look at the price. Go two quid, yeah. yeah. That two quid is yours. That's <laughs> yours. You're would taking you, that home. Would you prefer the money? <laughs> what should we do? Yeah. I got, oh, um, We've got, we usually play a, a new one around this time. Um, what new adverts have we got? <laughs> <laughs> got plenty here. Oh, Excellent. come on, let's come on. Are you in any? <laughs> no. <laughs> Badly drawn boy. I imagine that starting a British film. Do you yes. know what I mean? They're jumping on a London bus and they're going around London. Well, of course, uh, the film about a boy, he did the soundtrack for. So if you were a little bit more up on films and stuff, you'd have already yeah. known that that <laughs> idea's been done and you wouldn't have embarrassed yourself and there wouldn't be egg on all our faces. Oh, but no. But thanks very much. Sorry about that, I'm eating. <laughs> 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 I'm very messy, aren't yeah. I? Yeah. What have you got, Steve? What have you got for Rick, me? I'm glad you've asked. Thanks for asking. Um, this is a Stevie Wonder track. Now, mm. I hope people aren't as offended by Stevie as they were by Pink. I'm sure they won't I be. I mean, for goodness sake, he's one of, uh, 20th century's greatest artists. Yeah. Um, this is from an album, not one of his more famous, Fulfilling This's First Finale. Yeah. And this is a track, um, called You Haven't Done Nothing. But Rick, here's a little quiz for you, a little pop quiz for you. Oh. There is a very famous, um, backing vocal group here. I mean, they were famous in their own right, but here they're doing backing vocals. I'd like you to identify them. And there's a, <laughs> there's an Office DVD winging its way to you, Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> if you can spot who it is. Right, okay, it. the pressure's on. <laughs> oh, magnificent. Do you not Brilliant. enjoy that? Excellent. Yeah, Fantastic. Stevie Wonder, you haven't done nothing from, uh, fulfilling this as first finale. It's quite tricky, that, the backing vocals. Well, They're I not particularly that. prominent, well, are they? Well, I can't, and it could be anyone. That's why I'll just go for someone that's a vocal group that, I don't know. Uh, is it obvious or is it's it? It's very obvious. What, that it would be that they would back him? Uh, it's not obvious that they would back him, but it's uh, obvious that, uh, who, I mean, they are huge stars, or they were huge stars. And what is, was it, was it, so, what, mid 70s? Early 70s? I'm talking mid 70s. 1974 is the album. There's an office it's not, DVD uh, winning its way. Not the Jackson 5. It's like the that. Jackson 5. Is it really? Oh! There they are. Well done. Well, there, there you go. You are, yeah. Well I mean, that's done. how big Stevie was that you could ask the Jackson 5 just to stroll in. There you go. For some fairly nondescript backing vocals. First, first, uh, 
album I ever got, Jackson 5. Was it? Which yeah. one? It was the one with Rockin' Robin on it. Nice. <laughs> did you rock to that? I imagine you I, did. I, I walked around. around to that. How old were you? What, 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 <laughs> I was about, uh, I suppose, I don't know, eleven or twelve, and I had one of those little um, cassette players when you had to press down play and what's it, and I had a little handle that came out. They're brilliant, yeah. And I had one CD with it. Well, one tape, one tape, yeah. Sure. And uh, <laughs> and you bought it yourself, did you? Or no, did no, you? that was a Christmas present. Lovely, lovely. Yeah. And that was the the only one you had for like I uh, imagine like a year or something. Just well, that one tape. Yeah. Endlessly playing. Like, what yeah. was your first uh, record purchase? It was uh, a Disco Fever compilation. Well, actually called Disco Fever, and I got it because I, I loved. Yes, wait, sir. Wait, I can. Wait, what, are you embarrassed about having your mobile on or what? Oh, Something's oh, vibrating, that? and I'm Sorry. assuming it's a mobile. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so it's my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I did turn the ringer off. <laughs> oh, <Okay>. sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, what, well, is a Disco Fever compilation? Yeah, yeah, featuring Baccaray, Yes Sir, I Can Boogie. Cracking. Yeah. And, um, Space Float On, I think, which is what I want, what I want. Float On, that Yeah, one. that's one, yeah. That's the floaters, isn't it? The floaters. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Always uh, made me laugh. Larry, yeah. my name's, yeah. I don't know. Magic if... Fly by Space. All oh, right. Do you what? remember that no, one? No, I don't. No, yeah. no. Okay. I don't know if my first purchase is cool or not, really, because I suppose it, it seems like it was. It was the uh, greatest hits of the Stranglers. That is so oh, cool. Are the Stranglers quite cool? That's yeah. scary because uh, I yeah I finished school by the mm. time that that came out. I think mm. that's scary. The greatest of the Stranglers. No, I, I never was well, that, never I think a that's Stranglers more to do with fan. the fact that my parents didn't have any records in the house. They had I think they had the Jeff Love Orchestra plays big war theme tunes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyway. so they had one of those Top of the Pops albums with a woman wearing a neckerchief on the cover. Yeah, and um, and that was pretty much it. That, they, and the eighteen twelve overture, you know, played on the fiddle those, or something. I had one of those with Mozart Mozart's fortieth on it because right. that was that was released at the time. The oh, that was obviously Mozart's fortieth birthday. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a wild swing. If he'd made it that far, that would yeah, have been a wild swing. That would have been great. I'd love to hear that on, uh, on record. How old was he when he died? He was quite young, wasn't he? He didn't live long. 18 years old? He was a genius. No. He was a boy wonder. Yeah, he's one hundred. <laughs> what people don't realize—it's like Alan Jones. It was all over by the time he was eleven. What a lot of people don't realize about Mozart was that he also, in his spare time, used to solve crimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was why he was so. That was what, musical crimes. He was <laughs> concerned plagiarism oh, issues, circle, things like that. We, we have indeed. We've yeah, brought yeah. that right back. We should. Actually, yeah, I hate to interrupt you, boys, on, but we, we have got to uh, squeeze one more song we'll in. Before okay. we well, well, uh, what should we do? But, uh, what should we have? What have we got there, Claire? Well, I've got this one I want to play you. I want to play you. By the Electric Six. It better be good, because if you end a show with it, I mean, we've had lots of faux pas and really bad bits. This is going to be possibly the biggest song of 2003, you think so? Rick. Go on then. Man yeah. Alive. Yeah. Right, Electric well, Six. Yeah, thanks very much indeed, Claire, for Cheers, coming Cheers, thank, thank you. Thank you. No, it's a pleasure. Is Carl back next week? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, just Lee doesn't care, does he? Uh, yeah. Can we just quickly say, so you're on Parkinson tonight, then, Ricky? Yeah? Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. And the office starts. What is it? Monday. This is easier, this, isn't it? And there's a DVD winging his way. <laughs> yeah. 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 I guess I do want one. <laughs> See you next week. Richard Ashcroft. Check the meaning on XFM 104.9. We're back, Steve. It's Saturday. That's true enough. Uh, Steve Merchant, that is. Hello there. I'm Ricky Gervais. Obviously. Hello there. Carl's still away. Claire Sturgis is back. That's Hello. absolutely true. Yeah. Hello there, Claire. Nice to see you. So I think well. a lot of people were hoping that Carl will be back this week, but yeah, uh, we're pleased to were. have you. No, they were actually. I did get some emails during the week. Really? Saying what? <laughs> Just saying it's really nice to you know hear you again on the Saturday afternoon. It's nice, and um, but but you're not really very funny. And when's Carl coming back? Oh. You know? So it's sort of being sure nice it wasn't to, to us. No, no, it was d definitely because they think that as well. Yeah. <laughs> but no one can compete with Carl. They we, can't. Well, we used to sort of like. Um, Come in and uh, with the, when we discovered Carl early on, we just thought this is comedy gold. Just let him speak his mind. Mm. But then we started thinking, oh, we can't follow him though. Yeah. So I remember Steve going, look, we've got to come up with some we stuff. Need, we need to chat. If anything we've got to say to each other, we've got to say that in the first twenty minutes, and then you just unleash Carl. Yeah, because like it's, it's, it's just you can't follow him, yeah. and he's he, he's off on one. And they have stories of um, upbringings with bizarre creatures that <laughs> lived in Manchester that were half mm. human, half bat and frog mm. and things. I'd love to take him back to Manchester in some kind of TV documentary. You know, when Carl <gasps> went home and just fond about maybe try and find the uh, amphibian twins or whatever those yeah, people were. They weren't, they, 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 yeah, so there was two two boys, both had big heads and webbed feet. They weren't related. They did they didn't hang around with each other. That I was went, all the information we had. I went, why so. not? He went, it, that would have been too obvious. Yeah. Like they yeah. look at each other across a room and go, yeah, yeah you think if I'm coming to see you just because we've got <laughs> just because yeah. we're a similar species. Yeah. You're mistaken, mate. Yeah. 
You make your own friends. One starts to walk over, the other one shakes his head and just mouths too obvious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't do it. Too out, obvious. out of one of his mouths. Yeah, that's what they're expecting. Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it, <laughs> don't, don't, don't do it Webby. Yeah, but anyway, he'll, he'll be back sure, uh, shortly, I'm sure. He phoned me, um, uh, his dad's, um, ill. Uh, his dad's in hospital, so Carl went back to sort of look after his mum. He was so sweet, he said, I'm back here, just driving my mum around. He went, he said, it's so unbegrudging, he just went, um, it's like old times. And, uh, I said, ah, oh, so, sorry to hear that. He went, that's all right, yeah. Um, and, uh, I think he's gonna be fine. Um, and I said, how was your holiday? He went, yeah, it was good. Except <laughs> it were a nudist beach, didn't you <laughs> tell me? <laughs> I went, of course it was. Oh, what do you mean? He went, well, uh, sitting on the, I, I don't know why they have to do it. I don't know why they have to do it. Why do they have to do it? He went, Suzanne said they think there's nothing wrong with it, like being a transvestite. Right? <laughs> right? I went, I love the fact that your girlfriend has to tell you what's wrong and right in the world. And he went, well, we're walking along the beach, fella coming towards us with no about. I went, oh, what's going on here? <laughs> right? <laughs> and he said, and he said, uh, and cause it wasn't all nude, He's walking round, he's stark naked and he wants the freedom of that, but he's got a big rucksack on his back with his clothes on just <laughs> to get changed. He went, so what's the point in that? <laughs> right? And I went, he should just carry the book. He went, what, and covered it up when he went? He went, oh yeah, good idea. <laughs> See? He went, but I wasn't happy. He says, and that was the first day, so we didn't go there again. <laughs> <laughs> so I, just, see, like I just imagine his little face. <laughs> yeah, he's just going, oh, all right, that. that's out, yeah. that's out, what's that doing out? Mm. Why has mm. he got his out? I imagine Carl sort of dressed in a suit, <laughs> in a sort of safari <laughs> yeah. suit, done right up with a cravat. I'm not, I'm not undressing, I don't want people seeing the flesh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, that's for you, that's for you, love, and no one else. But I love the fact that I just see this girl and goes, Carl, they, they don't know there's anything wrong with it, they're just mm. happy that way. <laughs> and, he, and he, in his own mind, just goes, like being a transvestite. <laughs> <laughs> he knows there's nothing wrong with that. I'm always a little bit suspect about people who like walking around nude. I all think the you time. mean transvestites. No, no, n nudists. <laughs> what? Hold on. Can you what have a, you can you be a naked on, transvestite? What are you then? Yeah, I suppose you're a. When Eddie Izzard's naked, is he a naked transvestite? That's an interesting the metaphorical, is... uh, metaphysical question. Yeah. Yeah. On XFM 104.9. <laughs> if you know the answer to that <laughs> metaphysical question, or indeed any of the famous ones, uh, if a tree falls in a forest and no one hears it, has it fallen over? Any of those. That's brilliant. brilliant. Yeah, if you what, leave the room, Rick, what's the does sound? it get quieter? Yeah what's, yeah, what's the sound of one leg hopping? <laughs> exactly. Uh, what we got there, Claire? Um, do you want some music? Or yeah, I'd love to hear it. What you got? Yeah. I've got the vines, actually. Oh, I'll play, right. it, play it, play it, play nice. it. Hey, Claire, out of the way. <laughs> no, I'm not talking to you. It's the, uh, it's the name of the, uh, the song by the Vines. <laughs> like, so, excellent. Yeah, uh, oh, X-Men 104.9. Right, <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. Richard Mays with me, Steve Merchant. Hello there. And, uh, Claire, Claire Sturgis. Sturgis. Have you ever been to, have you ever been to a nudist speech? Has, have either of you been to a nudist speech? Uh, yes. I found, have you really? I, I... No, last month I went on holiday to Antigua and then I went on the nudist speech. Really? I wanted an all over. Sure. Because mm. I, um, I was with my, uh, <laughs> family once when we went on holiday, family holiday with, uh... I just heard you going on and the, and the inspector coming on going, and the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> and the glasses. And you, and you don't wear them there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um... No, I went there with, uh, it was some friends of my family, it was like family friends, you know, like kids, that, so it was kids my age and my sister's age who, uh, and parents were all friends, you know, da, da, da. Go, to, go on holiday to this, uh, end up on this nudist beach, not, not a nudist beach, but where people sunbathe topless or whatever. Or maybe, oh, yeah, maybe course. it was just uh, because, oh. maybe it was just because it was France. Where well, I yeah, think a lot of that exactly. goes on. Generally. Yeah, all, all, all yeah. beaches in, yeah, mm, yeah. Uh, I mean, semi no, but that's different. The, the new beaches are sort of, they're cordoned off. Sure, they're, they're, yeah. yeah, with the, the cocks and everything. <laughs> <laughs> we can't say that. You can't say cocks. Or did you mean the chicken? Do you <laughs> mean the chicken? There's a lot of, a lot, a lot of, of naked got people, farms, a lot of French male farms. birds around with There them. is a lot of poultry. And by male bird, I don't mean transsexual. You don't mean, no, I don't want to, because that's also, that's yeah. also offensive. <laughs> that is also offensive, so be careful. When, yeah. whenever Please be careful. Claire, like, so, be careful right. what you're going to say on that. I just want to say to careful. the radio authority, or anyone listening, when we say cock, we are referring to a male bird, and, and... There is no yeah. discussion there, there's nothing, no, there's no other not. issue, there's no, there's no other no ambiguity. Issue. Okay, go on. What are you talking so, um, there's people walking around with their birds and, 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 uh, and often they got their knobs out as well. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, so they, 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 it, was it was just a topless, it was just a topless beach. So we're all on So holiday. there were tits there as well? There were some tits. Uh, yeah. we, we've got, we've got a family of tits that come and eat the nuts <laughs> that chew I on think, my I nuts. Think Go on. We're confusing, we're confusing. No, so no, we have. Like, we're got, we're, Jane's got a little, um, bag of nuts. That right. she makes me hang out of the window. <laughs> right. So. So you'll often be hanging your nuts out the window. And the tits So the tits can. <laughs> Sure. God, I don't <laughs> know what- <laughs> Please! Go, go on with this story! Sorry, you, so what please. I'm saying is- God! What I'm saying is- Yeah. We went on her, there was family there. Yeah. There was some tits. 
There were some cocks. <laughs> and, uh, okay. and I found it all a little bit, cause I was about 14 or something, I found it all a little bit disturbing. I, cause yeah. I hadn't been introduced to this sort of thing before. Yeah. And obviously my dad was having none of it, like, a bit like Carl, and obviously my mum wasn't up for that as so, uh, But the person we went, the, the mother of the person we went with, <laughs> she, uh, she took her top off. And I was like, I was, I didn't, I, I didn't know where to look. Cause I didn't want to make an <laughs> issue of it, I didn't want to make, you know, I didn't want to, but it was like, cause I was with my mate, I was going, well, I was like to say, well there's your mum with her knockers out, really. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's, uh, your, that's your mum over there. Hello, Dave. Well, oh, 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 there, there's your mum's, there's your mum's, there's your mum's knockers. Um, oh, oh, there you oh, go. Yeah. You've oh, there's your dad, there's your dad popped out. Yeah. Popped out his he's little, got little the, man, his little, little man. Fella. Um, his little fella out your there. Your dad's fella's there, he's wandering about. And, uh, <laughs> he's, he's having a, and your mum's got the, uh, he's getting a the tan old, on his little fella. The old milkers out, so, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it was all, um, it was a little bit disturbing. And I've never quite got that, that image out of my head, really. Cause it was, it was all, but I didn't know where to look. I didn't know what to do. My, a friend of mine, I won't say his name is, right? Um, uh, he's about 25 now. When he was, I think, 14 and 15, I mean, the worst age, he went to a nudist holiday with his parents <laughs> and, and his, and his sister and some of her sister's friends and he absolutely hated it. Yeah. It absolutely Well, that's, it, I, 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 it, it makes me, um, sort of queasy to think about yeah, it. Especially yeah. if you're with your family and friends. Yeah. Because it's... I don't mind looking at nudie ladies that I don't know, really, but I don't want to look at relatives, <laughs> you know, or people I've, gr I've grown up with, or <laughs> indeed the likes of you. I don't want to have to see that kind of flesh, and I don't want to. I don't want to know what's going on underneath those clothes. You know, oh, you're I keeping did. them hidden from me. Well, you haven't. You've, <laughs> you've shown me much of it <laughs> in the time I've known you. So well, sometimes there's I'm not. So do you know, there's not a bit of your body I haven't seen <laughs> at some point. <laughs> you know, you'll have got your trousers down. Look at the arse. That was, you know, thinking that was hilarious. Or the old, you know, yeah. the uh, yeah, Johnson um, the, feeding the the birds on the mm. windowsill. Mm. Um, mm. But uh, yeah, no, it is, it is strange because there, you know there isn't there isn't anything wrong with it. Let's face it, there isn't anything wrong with it. But um, I know what you mean. I think it's it? because we spend so long. We spend so much of the time covering it up. You know, it's like, it's like in the summer months when girls start wearing kind of short sleeve, uh, t-shirts or short skirts, you'll have blokes just going mental. <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think it's cause we spend, Hormones. women spend most of the year cause, in w cause it's so cold here, covered up, that men forget what's you know, under there. You know, and when, then when, well, when summer when, comes when around, they can't believe it. When do actually just hang out of a car window or hang over scaffolding and say, get your tits out, mm. I wanna go, has that ever yeah, worked? has it ever worked? Has, have you, and what's your success rate with that? In well, well I was off to my big job in the city, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I got 20 minutes, why yeah. not? Shall I come up there or are you gonna come down? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh dear. Extraordinary. Oh. Right, what we got? What we got coming up? What we got coming up? Quick, keep them hooked. <laughs> well, you know, Rick, We've uh, got some songs and some more chat. There'll be some, uh, chitter chatter and, uh, there'll be some songs. We had an email last week from a fella, uh, calling himself Paul, I don't know if that's his real name. <laughs> he said that sometimes- I'm suspicious. Uh, I'm already suspicious. <laughs> yeah. He said that some time ago we played a, a cracking Johnny Cash cover version of U2's oh, One. Oh, Remember that? I think yeah. maybe the last time you were here, Claire, oh, maybe. Oh, class. Um, and he says, uh, he's, he's been trying to track down that album. He says, unfortunately, like an idiot, I didn't listen to it and I, was, I didn't catch the name of the album. Could you buy any chance send me uh the album he's having a laugh he's having a laugh <laughs> <laughs> what for free yeah so that's well, not gonna happen so, uh, actually email him back say paul can i do it now give us give us eight quid for no reason i've also i've also called him some quite offensive names <laughs> it's good to that. i'll put uh from gervais Oh dear. He's not gonna yeah, like that. That's pretty grim. Nor's his mother. No. <laughs> he shouldn't have brought her into it. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Johnny Cash. Oh, I don't know. Johnny Cash. Change from a Durex machine. Forget <laughs> it. Oh, that's classic. Johnny Cash and his cover of uh, U2's One, magnificent tune. Um, that's from the album American Three, Solitary Man, that was released in 2000. And, uh, I've just checked that email that Paul, if indeed that is his name, yeah. sent us, Rick, and he didn't ask for a, a copy of the album, he right. asked for the name of the album. Right. So, um, I feel a little bit bad that I, uh, <laughs> sent that email back insulting him and his mother. Yeah. Uh, and also, of course, I CC'd it to his mum, <laughs> as well, <laughs> yeah. and many of her friends. <laughs> so, Send um, another one. I feel, uh, I think we can get around this. I'll tell you what Paul would like, if that is his if real name. his name, yeah. He'd like some adverts. Oh, he'd love some bloody adverts, Paul. Oasis, little by little, on XFM 104.9. I'm just moving the mic there. Hold on, I'm getting comfortable. There you go. Right, sit up. I was laughing. A lot of people do that. that. A lot of people do that during the song. A lot yeah. of the old pros. <laughs> no, a lot of the old no, pros I like, like Foxy song. and Tyrant and the like. Oh, uh, um, uh, they were on, uh, Top of Pops yesterday, but they, um, they did, uh, My Generation. Any good? Yeah, very good. Mm. I mean, uh, you know. I was it, was it close to the original or did they make yeah. it their own? No, it, 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 both. It was pretty close. They did, you know, musically it was close, but you mm. know, they had a certain- Was it Noel singing or Liam? Uh, Liam. 
very, very cool, very mm. cool. Good no, swagger, it's, it's attitude back. Yeah. I think back on form. Well, people tell me though that uh, if you go to any of these big stadium gigs they do now, it's an absolute nightmare because a lot of the fans are really grim. I mean, I've spoken to two people independently who've both been at gigs where there have been fans weeing on other fans' shoes. That's not what I want from a that's gig. That's not nice. No, they own them then. Well, yes, apparently. That's yeah. theirs then. Yeah. Oh, well, if you wee on something, yeah, that's you own it. That's it. Uh, cat yeah, because cat law. Yeah, cat yeah. law is if you wee on <laughs> yeah. something, then you own it. Yeah. yeah, I know you live by cat law. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, you do live because I. Yeah, no, yeah. I've, my wallet. I think you own. <laughs> yeah, and um, <laughs> several telephone boxes. Yeah. Much um, of my hair. <laughs> um, uh, what were we talking about? We were talking about nudie beaches. Uh, yeah, because I just I still can't get around. I don't know why they only play volleyball. No, that's all they do, then. Surely there's other games you could play. I think mm. French cricket would be slightly more. All the pictures I've ever seen of, uh, news colonies always seem to be quite attractive women and some r fairly grizzled sort of 45 year old men. I don't know if that's generally the clientele. That, you know, it just happens to work that way. But I'm quite looking forward to getting to around the 45 <laughs> mark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just cruising down. Uh, happy birthday. Right, I'm off. <laughs> exactly. Where are you going without your clothes? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And at what point, I mean, you can't, you can't go into a nudist colony, can you, without taking your clothes off? <laughs> you can't. I, I don't know if there's a, a door policy. <laughs> no, where there's that sort of no I think there is, I'm sure. I'm oh, actually, no, because when I went to my nudist beach, there was actually a security guard. Stopping you from- Naked? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> now, Claire, That's very would it be strange. possible for a bloke who was, say, a fairly good swimmer to swim up to the beach <laughs> in a wetsuit and not France. have to come- yeah. Okay, well, I- <laughs> Yeah. Let's say, just say for, for the sake of it that this person, you know, had some time on his hands in <laughs> a week. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, yeah. and he was, he'd, he'd made he'd, quite a bit of money. He trained, he trained nine hours a day at the lengths in the pool, yeah. thinking that if I, I can go, I can get, yeah, yeah. to the Eurostar <laughs> de France. It could work, it could work. Yeah. yeah. So what was your nudist beach experience? This was not, a, no, this was not a colony. No, no, a colony it just nudists. was a choice that this, this place had a few beaches, one of them was a nudist beach. And could you, you see the nudist over. beach from the regular beach? No, you couldn't. You right. see, it was just round the What corner. about with binoculars? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> <Okay>. yeah, possibly. <laughs> but you see, my, my, my worry is, as, as, um, a healthy young man. Yes, um, you're not if, a healthy young man, are you? No, no, but I'm talking about you two. You're right, sure. You're pretty healthy young men. Mm. Well. How, how awkward it must be for you on a nudist beach if you do happen to see a very good looking naked lady. Mm. What you do if you, mm. Well, that's the reason I, that's the reason I've not gone to any. Okay. Uh, just exactly that worry. Because it is very off-putting. Yes. If you had, you it sounds like this is a confession. So we, exactly, yeah. Go on, that what did happened? actually happen to us. Really? A, an older gentleman. Go on. An older gentleman obviously was enjoying his time on the beach. Right, explain more. I and then came over to chat. And you just don't know where to Sorry, ha so hang on, so he, he approached you. Yeah, for a chat, as you do. People are friendly. Right, without wishing to get too lewd within a state of arousal. <laughs> Is How that the far case? can we go down? This? No, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not trying to sort of. I don't want to get too kind of, you know, graphic. <laughs> Or gynecological. Have you noticed? Gynecological. Oh, I was going to say how how yeah. quiet Ricky was keeping. But so he this came point. over. He came over. Well, I'm worried about this. I'm <laughs> I'm worried about telling this story. But I think it's an interesting. I'm interested. I think yeah. this is an interesting point. Yeah. Because it's a. So he came over and he was just chatting away. Yeah. Quite proudly. Yeah. <laughs> well, standing eventually your attention. got quite proud. <laughs> yeah. And what was? Oh, why God. was this? Time? I mean, not wishing to be disrespectful, but you know, he's a I man. He's, know. he's been around a bit. Were you reading erotic poetry? <laughs> what were you? <laughs> no. I was talking about the weather. Right. About how nice it was today. And he tr and he approached in pole position, or did he? <laughs> no. Or, or God, did he? I don't like it anymore. Oh, Fine, okay. I don't God. like it anymore. Right. Let's leave it then. Let's but that's leave what it. I did. I, I actually ran away. You ran away. That's I terrible. I went swimming. Was he French? Was it was it quite tricky to speak to him? Oh, no, no, he spoke perfect English. So right. uh, during the during the break, <laughs> like Claire said, oh, 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 well, I won't lose which ones, right? And this man came over, uh, an old fella. Um, and, uh, I said, and she started off, and left I said, he had the biggest knob I've ever seen. <laughs> and then I laughed, and then she went, and then he, uh, then it got no, bigger. No. And I went, you can't tell it then. I was worried about that. But she left out the funny bit and just went, you just went all <laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, play I Bob Dylan. Only Bob Dylan can get us out of this. Uh, this is off, um, his, uh, his last album, uh, Love and Theft. It is the only track I really like, I'm afraid. I didn't get on with the rest of the album because it was too, it was too hoedowny and country blues and stuff, which is, it's just not my sort of thing. But this is a, this is a nice track called Mississippi. Bob Dylan. Mississippi. Um, off, uh, of the album Love and Theft. Uh, I must admit, not not my favourite Dylan album, but um, that's a nice track, isn't it? It's a lovely track, actually. I just noticed there you've uh, you've brought in three CDs. Yeah. Um, you bring those three in every week, don't you? <laughs> you just play 
from those three CDs? Or, 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 well, you substitute the Dylan for different Dylan albums, yeah, and the so other two remain the same. Well, no, I've got, no, I've got, I'm playing a different, uh, different Cat Stevens. I've got T for Tillerman. I've never bought that in before. Yes, different you have. Album altogether. No, I've seen it before. No, I've never bought in, I've never played anything off T for Tillerman. I've played it off, uh, Catch Bullet 4, Teaser in the Fire Cat. Um, Do you, you don't have a sort of deal with Island Records to try and keep, like, Cat <laughs> Stevens' no, back Jimmy catalog Webb. afloat? <laughs> <laughs> no one's really shifting it. <laughs> I think it might just be the CDs that are in the bottom of a bag. This is why I'm, I'm so lazy. Yeah, it's just you've got I'm one carrier with... bag that you bring back and... Exactly. Sure. Yeah. 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 Well, we'll look forward to those later. Yeah, go yeah. on. No, 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 no. I was just, I was just really wondering, Rick, and I don't want to put you on the spot, but could I have some adverts? Yeah. Feeder. Come back around on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Hello there, Steve Merchant here. Of course you are. And, uh, and, and so's Claire Sturgis in a way. <laughs> <laughs> That's true enough. So. That's true enough. Yeah. Um, Rick, uh, oh, I parted till it was, I parted last night, Rick, like it was 1999. Really? Uh, all well, over again. old fashioned sort of way, some yes. records. Yes, yeah, yes, okay. yes. On my own. <laughs> 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 in my flat, crying. <laughs> just like 1999. Yeah, just like 1999. Now, uh, I went to see Prince at the, oh, yeah. uh, at the Hammersmith oh. Apollo, and I'll tell you this, I mean, if that's a man whose career is going down the pan, then I'm sorry. Then, then I hope ours does. Then I hope ours does as excitingly as that. <laughs> does. Because Did. he was stunning. I yeah. mean, he is, I d a lot of people I know have seen him in the, in the, in the eighties or whatever and his, when he used to descend from a ceiling in a, a little I red know. Corvette and stuff. But he is breathtaking. He is I, like, I thought, I always he's like he what it must have been to see Elvis Presley. Well, I yeah, really no, no, I've not I, seen anyone who's electrifying on stage. I mean, I, I think like most people had a bit too much for him. And that wasn't because he's, it was going downhill. It's because he churned out double albums like most people churn out singles. And you don't know what you should. You can't take like, it all in. I, there was just too much. Yeah. I didn't like the, you know, the, the sort of the end of the 80s phase either too well, much. Well, that whole period when he was fi fighting with Warner Brothers and he was, he started wearing masks. And, and and got, I think everyone just thought, I'm not interested. Yeah. You know, you're, you're potty. But and he's, he's going to come out the other side of that. Great tracks and, um, though, great pop tunes. And he's written, so, you know, I think well, he's brilliant. I, I mean, I, you know, I don't bandy this word around, Rick, as you know. Go on. But I'd like to use the word genius. I thought you were going to say I'll pay for that. No, 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 no. Genius. Oh, wow. Genius. I, cause I would That's say- strong words, Steve. They're strong words. It is a strong word, word Rick. It is a Can strong word. Can you back it up? Have you got any, any example of his work that we could play now on XFM to show that he is a genius? I, well, I will in just one second. Thanks for asking. But, um, <laughs> Can I, can I try and justify that? Can I just, cause it is a controversial phrase yeah. to use, um, Prince is a genius. And yeah. let me tell you why. On his first album, or maybe on a couple of his first albums, he played all the un instruments. Brilliant. Like Squidly Diddly. <laughs> exactly. In, in one episode <laughs> of that I saw. He, he <laughs> was playing the piano. Diddly was Excuse playing the piano me. with his two tentacles. But then he was like playing drums with two tentacles at the back. He was standing on two tentacles which was the other one free for trumpet. That so, sounds like genius to me. Yeah. Oh, That's what Mr. Prince. So, the only thing I would say about the concert last night, three hours, he played for three hours yeah. non-stop, well yeah. almost three hours, non-stop, didn't take a break. A cracking band, only five people. Imagine <laughs> taking a break, just reading the paper, having yeah. a coffee. Going, what are you looking at? And also, very I've witty. Got 20 minutes, by very law. <laughs> very witty as well, because a lot of people imagine him being quite dry and quite sober. It was, yeah. it was very funny. But, sadly, Prince now, well, I don't mean to be offensive, but, but as so far small. as I'm concerned, what? he, you know, he's now a Jehovah Witness. Is he's he? now a Jehovah's Witness. So and he's gonna come round tonight. Well, no, but at the end, he did sort of spout on about, uh, you know, his beliefs. Yeah. Uh, and I felt a bit like I'd sort of, do you know what I mean? Like I'd sort of paid 40 quid and I'd queued up and I'd sat for three you hours to then, quid. to then be, to then be preached at a little bit. So that was anything that, that, that put Well, I'll tell you what, me. good job for him. He was good value because he'd have got an earful from you if he did. <laughs> oh. Imagine if he'd not played the singles exactly. or he did like 20 minutes. Yeah. Well, I'd have been livid. <laughs> I'd have stormed out. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but, um, but I did, cause so, I don't know Prince, when it, So, you've had, uh, yeah, that, interesting, uh, Steve Merchant says, Prince is a genius. This is XFM 104.9, coming up to two o'clock. <laughs> Prince is a genius. Can we open the phone lines, please? What's the phone, uh, number there, Claire? It's 08700 800 1234. Me and my mate were talking about when people say genius, and they do bandy it around willy-nilly, and it's sort of like, um, a, a, a comedian or something, they go, he's a genius. And we think that there's, there's people in cancer research sort of laboratories and age, and they're going, <sighs> We lost another one to ITV. <laughs> yeah, Why yeah. didn't he go into science? <laughs> he could have been the new Newton, but no, he's getting the ratings up for five. <laughs> exactly. So, but, yeah. but Prince is a genius. Uh, is he? Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk if you'd like to email. <laughs> <laughs> Prince 
Thanks, genius, old little fella. <laughs> it's up but, to um, you. But when you are Jehovah's Witness, I don't know. I don't know much about the uh, the faith. But um, right. you are you are you obliged when you sign up to sort of do your time going door to door? Because it would be I amazing. Think... Imagine Prince turning up at your door and just, "Hi, oh, can I come in?" Well, or oh, no. <laughs> and it, you know, and just coming in and uh, well, I'll sing you some of the hits, but I'd like you to buy a copy of this afterwards. I'm not really interested. Why are they... Which ones are you going to play? Which ones are you going to play? I'm not a big fan of. I don't like uh, if I was your girlfriend. Did anything from Diamonds and Pearls? I'm not interested in. So shoot off. Yeah, I quite. Because like... I thought they were going to start Could selling the Watchtower at the end. The most beautiful. I like that one. Yeah. Well, there's the, those. Fat people, in it. Does it make it? Image, does it make him a genius? Oh, call up one zero two three five <laughs> nine six four two nine. <laughs> Prince, genius or bloke with hair? <laughs> well, this has got to be proof of his of his genius. One, he played it last night, and it's just dynamite. One, there is strawberry scar. <laughs> <laughs> Prince, of course, and Raspberry Beret, one of the tunes he played last night, and. uh Breathtaking, I have to say, I can't sing his praises enough. Although, uh, didn't manage to get myself into the after show party where Prince is often renowned for playing with the likes of like, <laughs> jamming with the likes of uh, Rolling what, Stones. What, what would have been your uh, your approach? To Hello get there, in? Uh, Steve Merchant here, XFM, Ricky Gervaisia. Um, any chance <laughs> I could come in <laughs> to um, your party? To your party, please. Uh, I'll be honest. Um, uh, can I can I call you Lanky? Well, if it help me get in, yeah. Um, it, it, it won't, but thank you anyway. I'll be honest, Lanky, your chances are slim to none. Four eyes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I, I enjoyed the concert, if that is any... Okay. I'll, I could talk I'll, about it on the radio. I'll I'm talk about it on the radio I'm gonna tomorrow. I'm going to take away that slim. Okay. It's none now, <laughs> right. freak. Okay. Okay. All right. So go away, yeah? <laughs> Cheers. Okay. Oh. Was it something like that? <laughs> it was not dissimilar, it. Really. <laughs> there was a lot more profanity last night. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> And punches <laughs> were thrown. Was it last night? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, it's breathtaking. I, um, how's it working out for you, Rick? How's it working out for you being a celeb? How is that working out? How's that panning out for you? Is that all right? Well, is yeah. that working all right, Rick? Is it? Hey, all the fame and everything. How's, how was, how was David Bowie on Tuesday? I read about that. Why, why did I have to, why did I have to read about your presence at the David Bowie gig in the Evening Standard? Why do you keep that from right, me? Okay. Why do you keep that from me? Right, okay. Right, I know what you're thinking. I got an invite, it was freebies and I didn't Because I discussed you. this in the past. I said yeah, if you get no. invited to David Bowie or any of the big name yeah. concerts, I gotta go as well. That's the right, rule. Right. The rule is that we make the TV show, you're in the show, you become famous, fine, yeah. but I need to be able to also get the benefits of that. Well, I didn't go. Was Did you read this in the standard? Yes, I did. Yeah, no. It said... Well, I, uh, it was in the paper, It was in the paper. It said, present at the concert. It's absolutely true. I'm not, I'm not bullshit. Uh, absolutely true. Um, in the concert were Ricky Gervais and uh, Jonathan Ross. Now, we were invited, but we, we couldn't go. Neither of us could go. So right. they just... I just think they must have seen a copy of the guest list or someone said they were coming. Or they just guessed. But I didn't go. I couldn't go. So there you go. It was Wednesday and I couldn't go. If I'd have gone, you'd have been there, mate. Rubbish. <laughs> Because what worries me is yeah. that you what, you you were invited or or you requested tickets and then you didn't go. No, no. Um, what happened was that the um, uh, Bowie's uh, people just said that you come into the concert tonight, and I I I, I said I I couldn't. But, but let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Wait to, a minute to get you off this track, right? The next night we did go to dinner with Bowie at someone's house. Well, look, wait, right, listen. It was a very, it was a small affair. It was, it was, um, me and Jane, Jonathan, uh, and Jane. It was, um, David, uh... First names. Yeah, no, no, and, uh, it, I think it was it, 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 old friends of the family. It was a, it, a beautiful house. And, um, it was just us lot and, um, Richard E. Grant and, uh, Pete Townsend and Charles Sarchi and that. And it was just, just, you know, I think it was, it's... <coughs> and it was set places as well, so I couldn't have got another... It was weird because we got there. We, I mean, it said eight for eight thirty, and I got there at like five past eight. And Jane, but we can't go too early. And we went in there, and we, um, the, uh, the, 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 the servants, um, got, gave us a, a, a drink, and we were standing there. And I was looking around. It was an amazing house. It was a beautiful house, and there's Damien Hurst paintings and Lucian Freud. And I thought, well, when the host comes in, I'm going to go. You didn't tidy up for us, did you? But I was actually so overwhelmed. And uh, in through the door, let himself into the door. Was Richard E. Grant, and I went. All right. He went, yeah, I'm Richard. I went, yeah. All right. And, uh, I, I went, just, just let yourself in. He went, yeah, I live next door. I went, oh, okay. And then, uh, and then David Bowie came in and he came over and spoke to me and he, he went, I've just seen your video and, uh, and then, um, this isn't helping, is it? Because you're, you, 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 this isn't helping. Well, when you, I mean, the phrase I, I was just going to pick you up there on was, I've just seen your video. <laughs> 
Um, cause, cause what, what, no, I just feel that what... No, I, sh no. Just, just for a second. <laughs> what, what I feel, what I feel that David should know is that it wasn't made sort of solely by you. No. Or, or no. written entirely by you or directed entirely no, by you. It, no. it happens to feature you amongst a, a myriad of other actors, all of whom are brilliant and equally worthy of an invite. Uh, yeah. to that particular do. Yeah. But, but you'll notice that the, the person that's representing the show, what got you a pl place around this table, you notice the one person that was invited is you. Yeah. Just, just you, just you. Yeah. Well, there's a very good reason And a that. woman, what do you know, who wasn't involved with the uh, show? Your well, girlfriend. Well, we've got partners, you've got, you know, that, that's well, it. It's, it's, yeah, it's, but it's, once again, she could have stayed at home. <laughs> you could have gone up Hello? <laughs> <house. laughs> <laughs> well, I did actually say, if ever I get invited to see Woody Allen, and it, it's two people. That it would have to be you and Jane that went, because you're both bigger fans than me, and yeah. I, I promised that. And so, um... She went along with that. So David enjoyed the show, did he? <laughs> he did, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he did, yeah. And, uh, and how did the evening pan out? Was it suitably rock and roll? Um, it was very nice. It was really nice. A pleasant, um... What did you have to friends. eat? Um, I had, uh... It, there was nibbles sort of coming round, nice, and then, um... Yeah. They fed you the food, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you... I bet they fed you the food. <laughs> and then, um, we had, uh, um, oh, what was it? What was for starter? Um, oh, it was like a, a ravioli thing for starter. I thought, I won't have too much. I filled up the, for the fish dish. The fish was lovely. Then there was a sort of chestnut mousse. And what did you talk about with David Bowie? Um, just, you know, you know, music. Yeah. Music. You appearing on his next album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, what, seriously, what, because I'm interested to know. It was, it was really nice. He's re he's really so nice and normal. And, uh, he actually came over and, it, he said, I've, I've just seen your video. And, the, uh, and then he went, he said, are you gonna get the band back together? <laughs> he meant he'd seen the Room 101. And, right. uh, he was basically taking the mickey out of me. Mm. Mm. And he was going, no, I thought it was really good. Uh, and, uh, uh, Because <laughs> you were just a sort of Bowie ripoff exactly, on you, essentially. Yeah. And, yeah. And, um, no, it was, re it was really, really nice and normal affair. I, I, uh, seriously, it was just really, I mean, I was going, oh my god, they're so-and-so, they're so-and-so. Yeah. Um, but it was really, re we really enjoyed it, it was really pleasant, and, uh, everyone was, you know. And at the end, um, uh, the, 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 the people whose house it was, who's a friend of his, like, a lot of sort of really old friends of his, got out a photo album, just like you do, and those pictures of, like, David Bowie, and, uh... Dave, yeah, sure. Well, it, no, I mean, that's the that thing about DB is he's, he's... No, no, and, and Iggy Pop when they're cooking, and, and Dave was sort of going, look at Iggy cooking. And yeah. he was laughing like you do a mate you haven't seen. It was yeah. so sweet. It was just so nice. And then, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna see, uh, we, uh, play a record, Claire, because yeah. it is actually a little bit annoyed with me. Play a record. Then Robert De Niro popped in. <laughs> yeah. And it all got a bit depressing. And Woody Allen. Yeah. And he went, do you know anyone that likes my work <laughs> more than you do? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Carl. Dreaming of You on yeah. XFM 104.9. I'm yeah, one of, the, uh, one of the only tunes on the album I think worth listening to. I haven't heard it. Oh, it's rubbish. Is it really? But everyone's singing its praises like they're the saviours of British rock, but it just sounds like the inspiral well, carpets, that, and I don't mean that as a good thing. <laughs> we were <laughs> <laughs> Skeleton know, key I, as well, Steve. That's not too bad, yeah, yeah. but the rest right. is rubbish. I think it's not, I think it's more sort of like 19, sort of 78, 79, sort of those... Mm. I don't know what that means, Rick. <laughs> well, I, I don't think it, I don't think they've ripped off the nineties. I think old hat, you mean? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. like it. Let but me just return br very briefly to your oh, uh, your. Um, God. No, I don't. I, I'm not going to embarrass you, but uh, just returning very quickly to your uh, your dinner date with uh, David Bowie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what what intrigued me, as you said, is that when you um, no, it wasn't it wasn't because of the office. It was through um, the, uh, I think because oh, I met him with Jonathan Ross. Sure, no, but times, what, what I thought was interesting is you people he'd met over this time. So I think he was going back to America. Of course, but I like the fact you say that he over to you and said, um, I saw your tape last night. Because yeah. I just like the idea that people are sort of saying, uh, you'll be having uh, lunch tomorrow with uh, Ricky Gervais. I don't know who that is. Well, uh, there's a tape, watch <laughs> yeah. that, and you'll be able to engage in some conversation. <laughs> he's a minor celebrity here in Britain. He's, uh, had a relatively successful TV show, but we think he's a bit of a one-trick pony. Probably won't be able to repeat that success, so, uh, probably won't need to be eating with him in the next five years. But be polite tomorrow. Uh, he was a big fan of yours. Uh, he used to embarrass himself in the 80s, uh, doing a sort of vague pastiche <laughs> of you. And, um, other than that, there's not much else to say, really. Uh, just be polite to him and then then move on. Okay, who else has got- you know, it's just sort of- yeah. it's very odd that he was given a tape. It's like someone, uh, you know, if you were doing a, a chat show, you imagine Michael Parkinson would be given a tape. I know, yeah. Just, just watch this, David. Oh, actually, he's, I think he's been a fan for a long time. <laughs> oh, what? I, th I think he's followed my career from the 80s. Sure. No, yeah. I, uh, yeah, the, uh, when you put it like that, it's not as flattering, is it? It's very But he was very nice and very polite, and, uh, we got on like a house on fire. Sure. No, he's great. He's did you do really your impression funny. of him? No, of course I did. Did you not? Did you feel like the urge to snap into it just occasionally? Uh, 
And I didn't, I didn't, I was just going, that's David Bowie, that. Yeah. That's, oh, that's still David Bowie. <laughs> that's David Bowie talking to me now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's David Bowie talking to me yeah, now, yeah, yeah that looks yeah. like David Bowie. Yeah, yeah. That was what was going through my head. Yes. And we're talking about his songs, and like, that was bizarre. Mm. It was, it was quite surreal, and, uh, you know, and I do know a lot about his stuff, because I, I mean, yeah. he really, he, I mean, he's quite a musical hero of mine. Yeah. And that, so it was- You didn't, you didn't mention Tin Machine. I didn't mention Tim Machine. Because I'd just no. be there just thinking, don't mention Tim Machine, don't mention Tim Machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't even bring it up, see, don't even, see, don't, don't even say you like it, because you don't think, know what he feels about it. You see, I think if people listen to this show, they go, don't invite Steve Merchant, because he's insulting. <laughs> He insults people, he sends emails to people when he reads them wrongly. Yeah. He, he'll, br <laughs> he'll bring up a period of your life you don't want to talk about. Yes. Get the little short fat one. He's, he's, he's a lot more polite. Sure. Leave out the lanky yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. But they probably wouldn't say lanky, Rick. But, um, they don't know what I look like because <laughs> they listen to me on the radio. <laughs> I, don't th I think they're insulting. They might say, oh, you know, West Country, Oik or something. Yeah. But, uh, who was yeah. it I was listening to so, some, yesterday? There was someone had a, um, a Bristol accent. Fascinating. And no, but no, I think, oh yeah, it was some, um, one of those, uh, um, the Fame Academy. Disappointing, but I think you'll have to get into it. Um, bit of a sham was the moment, but I mean, no, there's no investment, I didn't know them. And one of them had a Bristol accent, and I just thought, it really is a stupid accent. What have we got lined up, <laughs> Claire? <laughs> what have we got? Well, a bit of John Spencer Blues Oh, explosion. I love this, I love this. Yeah. This is an old classic right. I uh, brought in today, and I think you'll enjoy it. Hello, welcome. Don't you can start on that, Rick. There's so much I could attack you about. <laughs> I mean, look at you, look right. at you, you're laughable. <laughs> John, John Spencer Blues oh, Explosion. Oh, you do it. Well, Sorry. no, I, you know, I just thought I would. Yeah. On account of, I brought it in. And then someone was complaining that we speak over each other. Yeah, we had an email saying uh, we gabbled too much. And, and we you know, and we both went, I don't think we do. Yeah. <laughs> Did you say that? I didn't hear you. I was talking at the time. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, right Place, Wrong Time by John Spencer. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I, yeah. I don't, mm. We also had an email. <laughs> you didn't enjoy it? You didn't enjoy nah. it? No, no, no. no. Um, uh, we uh, also had an email uh, saying, uh, uh, again, uh, no, go on. I won't, no, uh, this, go on. Sorry. No, no, you... You can see why that would annoy me. I know. You can see why that might annoy me. Take and... your headphones off then, because that's, it must be louder in your headphones, because I don't wear headphones. No. I'm not so much thinking of me as the people listening at home. Okay. The people who pay our I wages. Think, go on then. It, we had an email that said, uh... <laughs> but I, d I don't know who's the victor in this, Rick. I don't know who's winning with you making that noise. <laughs> what, you're the only person who's enjoying it. <laughs> But well, yeah, but I only do this for my. But there's right? a handful of people listening. Rick, <laughs> <laughs> who's who's <laughs> who's Saturdays, Rick? Are empty. They've got nothing. Okay. They're running on empty, and this okay. is all they've got. Okay. And they they they, they want conversation. Okay. They want well, an what are you going to say then? It depends if it's interesting or not. Well, let me say it before you make the judgment. Okay. So, let, all right. What about this? If you don't like, if it's not interesting, then you make the noise. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So this is just. Uh, we had an email. Right. It said, "Is Claire Sturgis drunk when she does the show?" <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, that was a real email. I've, I've lost it now. But, really? um, so does that warrant the noise, or? No, that's right. That's okay. quite interesting, that's, yeah. yeah. quite interesting. No, email. she's not. No, she's not drunk, is she? Bit yeah. cooked up. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. Yeah, just it's a bit. It's not true. The old Charlie. No, no, not true at all. No, you don't, you don't do drugs, do you? Claire, you're not no, into drugs, are you? No, no, no. Yeah, we, you're we, clean now. I am now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How did now. that go for you, the detox? It was yeah. great. <laughs> Good. Mainly thanks to you two. Yeah. yeah. The support At least you don't, at least you don't have to steal so much now to, exactly. to feed yeah. the habit. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Are there any drug addicts on this station? No, not anymore, no. But you, because I bet there are. I mean, you don't have to name names, but what mm. about initials? <laughs> <laughs> Who's, are, there, are there any skag eggs, any, any smackheads at all? <laughs> Seriously. Because I'm intrigued. Not anymore, no. Can you tell me off air who's, who's a drug addict? Off air, addict? I'll be happy to tell you. you there are anymore. some of Yeah, there were. Not anymore. What do you mean, they, what, they, what, they no, got rid of No, there weren't. <laughs> the, stop this. Are there any people who, like, no. they think that they've got it under control, <laughs> yeah, but they haven't exactly. really? <laughs> it is, yeah. they are some, aren't they? They, go in, they think that no one will notice, but they've got no pupils. Yeah. <laughs> and they just stare at you for ages and go, what? At the end of each <laughs> sentence. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's a couple of drunkards, I know, but there's no... <laughs> it's boring now? Okay, play a record, it's boring. <laughs> Richard Jay's telling us it's boring. <laughs> Queens of the Stone Age. <laughs> there. No one knows. It's going well. I would join it. To go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Adverts or what? Um, what do you reckon? <laughs>
we love them. Getting away with it from Electronic, of course. Fantastic right. tune, yeah. No, it's That's a, a, a mutual favourite of ours. We, we both like that, don't we, Steve? We do indeed. We yes, like we are mutually appreciative of that track. Ricky yeah. Gervais, of course. Friend of the stars. <laughs> Claire Sturgis is here. My name's Steve Merchant. Ahoy. Yeah, XFM 104.9. So, uh, I um, saw you the other day, cos I, I haven't seen you this week, but I did see you, uh, walking down the street holding a gum shield that you just bought. How'd that work out for you, the, uh, the boxing? Oh, it was really good, Cos like. we talked about- are you aware of this, Claire, that he wants to become a boxer? <laughs> this is something that Ricky <laughs> talked about the other week on the, on the air. He suddenly <laughs> yes. decided at the age of forty-something that, uh, boxing is really- Well, no, hold on, right, forty-something means forty-seven. <laughs> I'm just forty-one. Okay. I am forty-something, but, uh, forty-something is like a euphemism for near a 50. Yeah. So don't say 40 something. Okay. Say 30 something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah, he's taking up, but apparently there's something called white collar boxing. Yeah. Did we mention this last week? No, you didn't. No, but I, I didn't know something about. I think you mentioned it yeah, he, um, last week. White he collar boxing. Yeah, it's it's basically yeah. it's like a kind of it's like an, uh, a classier version of Fight Club, <laughs> the film Fight <laughs> yeah, Club. Have you ever seen that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. um, instead of they don't meet in sort of dingy cellars, they no. meet in what office blocks? Or? And it's usually for charity at the Grosvenor or some or a big hotel. I don't know. And uh, you just have like a bill on there, and uh, and uh, you punch each other. <laughs> For charity. Serious? Yeah. But anyway, I've been training. I've been training <laughs> boxing for for a while now, just like, you know, the pads and everything. And last week we started on, uh, sparring, and it is a different level. Honestly, I mean, I can work out now for an hour on the pads, and I did about one and a half rounds, and it was like I was asthmatic. Because you're also, the trainer, who is a, who's a, you know, a, a boxer himself, put the gum shield and he goes, okay, I'm not gonna, and I was giggling with fear. I was giggling with fear. And he said, you've got to get a gum shield just in case. And that's where he saw me. I'd, I'd gone to the Lonsdale shop. And I got a, a gum shield. I just, I, I said this before, Claire, is that I just don't think it's a good idea. I mean, you know Ricky, you've known him for a while yeah. now. He's not, he's not mentally tough. Which yeah. is a problem, I think. You're not, he's not, sort of, psychologically, he's quite, un he's quite weak. <laughs> like, he's scared of a lot of things, you know, <laughs> cars. Spiders. Um, I mean, he'll get, I, I've seen, yeah. like, edgy, like, if a car blows its horn and he's in the house. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And he'll hear it outside, you know, eh, what's that? Is it coming through the door? Is it? <laughs> no, it's all right, Rick. We're, we're on the eighth floor. And it's across town, it's um, fine, don't worry. I don't like crossing roads. No, he can't, I mean, I've I never like seen a man so uh, terrifying. On the motorway, if uh, someone's going the motorway, well, I'm looking at the speedo, and if it's like 86, uh, 76, then I'm going, well, let, you know, just, let's go in the slow lane. And I'm looking, my eyes, like saucers, <laughs> just taking all the information. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because he can't drive That's as well. That's a rational fear, though, isn't it? R roads but I think are scary. it's because you can't drive. Yeah, possibly. So, for instance, yeah. the fact that you're, you know, I've seen, I mean, he. Actually, because right, I can't drive and I do exactly the yeah, same thing on my own. Yeah, that's alright, yeah. But do, you, but do you do this, Claire, which is when you're in the back of a cab <laughs> and you feel the cab's going too fast, despite the fact that you're, say, driving up Shaftesbury Avenue in rush hour. <laughs> yeah. So you're never going to pick up a great deal of speed. Yeah. But Ricky will, he won't mention it to the driver, I feel you're going a bit too fast. He'll whisper it to me. No, he's basically suggesting that, no. to me that I should that I should say something. Because <laughs> I'm Ricky Gervais off the telly, I don't want to cause a fuss. You better do it, Steve, because you're nobody. That's <laughs> basically what he's no, insinuating. Roads, roads so I've always got to sort of make the complaint, or yeah. I've got, you know. And but uh, you're terrified of, yeah, you're terrified of, um, of that. You're terrified of spiders, as we know. Yeah. Um, cobwebs. <laughs> It's well, terrible that's rational, pictures of spiders. That's, there's no smoke without fire. <laughs> yeah. I know who made those webs, Steve, <laughs> and they live there. Yeah, it was you that got the certificate, wasn't it, raised on the Spider-Man film. <laughs> <laughs> so they couldn't show the trailer before, you know, you'd gone to bed. <laughs> Are you scared what, of Spider-Man? Does he tell uh, No, I'm not scared of Spider-Man. No, I'm not scared of anything. Uh, but I got, I'm quite I used to the, uh, you know when I'm a celebrity, get me out of here? That one that kept walking off the stream. I got, got used to him. I got, got to know him. Barry Geller? <laughs> Yeah, he yeah. was all right. Yeah, yeah, he was all right. I'm so you're, you're scared of that? Tarantulas aren't as scary as the bath ones. Tarantulas are sort of like more furry. But, but what um, about these? Because you know these programs where they have they'll have people on and they'll sort of they'll they'll sort of like I saw a show once where it was about phobias and a woman was terrified of dogs and a psychologist yeah. kind of got her to spend some time with the dog yeah. and slowly you've you've got no urge to sort of try and have that that therapy done and so you can maybe deal with your uh, your which is basically let's be honest uh, a, a woman's <laughs> concern <laughs> it's a it's a woman's fear like, isn't it essentially <laughs> like I stand on a chair exactly exactly yeah um, no but I saw one um, what's that one um, he's really nice he's not Jerry Springer, he's really nice and he has, you know, weird people on it. What's is it? Montel uh, Williams? No, no. Montel Jordan? No. <laughs> about 50. Um, Maury, Maury. Yeah. Maury Povich. Maury Povich. Yeah. Maury Povich. yeah. yeah. 
Is it, he's the one without glasses, isn't he? Yeah. Who cares? Okay. So you saw Mori Povich. Yeah, and there was, like, these women on there, right? And the, you know, sort of, you know, trainer trash. And, uh, they were going, just get snakes, aren't you? And then a woman would go on a snake, and she'd be screaming, knocking things over. And, uh, okay, well, that's not doing anyone any good. <laughs> really? Yeah. But that's just for the audience to prove our point that she's terrified. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it was like tinfoil, and someone brought on millions of bags of tinfoil, and she was screaming, what, hugging she was him. scared of tinfoil? Yeah, that's worse, isn't it? Scared of tinfoil is pretty mad. Yeah, well, there's, I mean, there's, it's irrational. You, you I can't know somebody who's, who's afraid of buttons. Oh, you buttons. Yeah, you, anything. Afraid of buttons. Yeah, because afraid there's some weird going on in your head, and it? it's uh, some sort of but, weird symbolism. But I, so. I understand the snake, uh, the snake one or the spider one because I understand, you know, there are poisonous spiders and snakes. Well, but, also, but it tin also foil could be sort of like buttons? chemical memory. Yeah, that could be, you know, but it's usually some, you know. Um, but how do you? Because I don't know. I that, see, yeah, because I don't have any irrational fears yeah. particularly. Well, don't, I, don't, I, yeah, don't, don't confuse. Except, uh, except when with... you're flatulent. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm terrified of because yeah. you never know when he's going to spring. Because he's not got any of the social graces, Ricky. He'll just think it's funny to just pass wind. <laughs> you know, dinner. I don't imagine he did it during dinner with Bowie. But if I'm having lunch with him, oh, it's because he'll just start grinning. And you know it's on the, <laughs> you know it's on the way, Claire. You know there's something in the post when Ricky starts just- when a little kind of- when his lips curl up, you're having lunch maybe, here it comes, here it comes. Uh, and it is- I tell you, it is eye-watering stuff, I mean it's intense. Oh, tell that story when you're on the, um, the train. There is the, there is only one smell that is worse than Ricky Gervais' flatulence. I was on a train once and, um, a dog was on- a guy was on there with his dog and the dog <laughs> passed wind, right? I don't know what he'd been feeding it, like sheep or something. <laughs> You know, cattle. He must have been feeding it some- you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> intestines or something. It was intense. This smell pervades the carriage. You know, cause they're all like air- they're all kind of air conditioned or they're, yeah. they're tight so there's- there's nowhere for the, s the smell to escape. So it's just- it's just kind of spreading, like, in this kind of invisible <laughs> sort of stench that fills up the carriage. I tell you, people's eyes were bleeding. Do you <laughs> know what I mean? It was like, that's how- it was just- it was unbelievable. I felt like my face was melting, like that bit at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> that was how it felt, right? And the bloke, who was obviously a bit embarrassed, said, uh, oh, <laughs> oh, I don't know sometimes. I don't, I don't know, uh, I don't know who's worse, you know, with their flatulence, you know, people or dogs. And I wanted to go, I've got an idea! <laughs> how about dogs? <laughs> what about your dog? <laughs> it was unbelievable. <laughs> but it's that, try, let's try and make a joke of it. No, get off the train at the next stop. <laughs> It was just, I mean, oh, I mean, I don't like people uh, with dogs anyway, just generally. You know, you'll see people, oh. with, no, Rick, when you see people walking down the road with dogs and they just let a dog, you know, do its, its ones or its twos on the side of the road oh, and then they just walk on. I just don't know what that is. No, it's you're like, not meant to, it's that's wrong, it's, yeah, No, but yeah. it is right and it really winds me up because you'll see people, it'll be like old ladies or kind of toffs. <laughs> or something like that. And they were the sort of people that will complain about, you know, bad language on TV yeah. or youths, you know, or ne'er do wells hanging out by bus shelters. Yeah. But as soon but they're happy for their dogs to, you know, go crapping on the sidewalk. <laughs> it really it, they anger me people with dogs <laughs> who just are irresponsible like that. Do you no, know what I mean? agree. Well that's not, that's nothing to do with liking dogs, is it? That again, that that's arrogance of people to think it's But there are work. a lot of people, as I say, who are kind of who, you know what I mean, who think they're better than they don't have to worry. They don't have to bend down and scoop it up. I know. Which is what they should do. Yeah. Anyway. Well, that's, I got uh, that off my chest. Yeah. <coughs> Play a record. <coughs> you two, Electrical Storm, they've done it again. I thought that is beautiful, that track. I know you used to disrespect you I two. I just didn't like them for ten years and then, uh, All That You Can't Leave Behind came out and I, I sort of thought, well, I could have been wrong and that's brilliant. So Rick, you know earlier I mentioned, uh, you, uh, Prince. And yeah. we asked the question, is Prince a genius or yeah. not? We've had a lot of response, What's mainly above, by, by email. Interesting, Rick. Some people think he is and some people think he isn't. Oh. Yes. Mm. Well, this, this debate will rage on. Can we have some adverts? <laughs> well, in the last half hour, Steve, they've heard, they've heard Nirvana, they've heard, um, Oasis, they've heard great, they've heard Dylan. We've got, coming up, we've got Cat Stevens, we've got Tom Waits, you know yeah. what I mean? Now- It's great music. We're playing a lot of music and talking less in the last bit. Now, some people, Right, would say that's because we run an empty and we ran out of things to say at twenty past the first hour. Yeah, right. I say it's because we want to get in some great tracks. <laughs> well, that's my excuse as well. What's next? Cat Stevens off Teeth of the Tiller Man. I've got nothing, Steve. You're I've running. I know. Nothing, okay. Well, it's the noise. I think the noise um, was the, the lowest point. Is it the noise? The noise was really. Cat Stevens 
from Tea for the Tiller Man. So many people, Rick, haven't even got a Cat Stevens record in their collection, and you hear tunes like that, you, you just think, why? why? Think of them. You think, why? I think, why, Rick? So we just had, we just had someone phoning up saying, um, they want a bit of, uh, psychedelic furs, and Claire said, oh, what's your favourite track? And we both went, it'd be pretty in pink. Of course. And it was. Yeah. But you know, you know, you meant to say, um, uh, like, a uh, like on Heart or Magic, you're told to say, coming up a classic by so and so, and people stay, Watch it in case it's their favourite, and if it's not, you don't give that away. But it doesn't work when it's things like, I hear things all the time, like, uh, and, uh, after this, uh, a classic from Men at Work. <laughs> That'd be down under <laughs> yeah. then. Yeah. Coming up next, a beautiful tune by Danny Wilson. Mary's Prayer. <laughs> it's Mary's <laughs> <Yeah>. Prayer. <laughs> it can only be Mary's Prayer. Yeah. No. So it, it doesn't work with those, that they've had one hit. Yeah. Or a tune from, uh, Hearsay. Oh, I hate them all. Nice. You're like, like rock oh, and roll on, that Steve. We Don't kick them when they're down. Yeah, it's true enough. Come what other pop that do thing, we hate? You know that thing, um, um, yeah. Oh, no, we all hate pop music, don't we? That's yeah. why we're alternative stations. I could do rubbish. <laughs> oh, I hate it. Russ Abbott, atmosphere. There's no atmosphere in here with that playing. Oh. Um, <laughs> last night, thing started, the Fame Academy. And I, I've been, I'm quite a sad telly watcher, and I've been looking forward to that for about two weeks. I fell for the hype. I can't mm. believe it. I love Pop Idol. I love Pop uh, Stars the Rival. I love Celebrity Fit Club. I, I, I love all those things, right? Um, but um, dis disappointing because they'd already picked them. I think it's it's investment, and uh, I'll be honest. I think the, the standard was poor. The standard was poor. I think so. I and are these people with different uh, abilities, or is it all singing? It's it's all singing. It, it's it's rather like. It's rather like they've got us down to the last twelve of Pop Idol, say. It's like that. You yeah. come in at that level. But, but but to be fair to the program, I think it's all about what happens next because like, now they get voted out like Big Brother, right? Um, and and so do they do they write their own material and stuff, or they'll be just taught to do that? They've got the whole team together and everything, so they're 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 um, filmed. You know, like the weather, twenty-four hours a day and everything. And so uh, I think you've got to get into it and get to know these people. There's always a few. There's already a few. I go right. She's annoying. Yeah. Right. Vote her out. And they have to. There's three that the 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 teachers say each week. Okay, you're up for, on probation. And then you you vote them out. And it gets to, it gets it down to one person. But the interesting thing is, um, it's not just they get a record and they release a single. They live the life for a year. Right. So they get this beautiful sort of pad in Notting Hill Gate. They get a sports car. Right. right. And it says they get to go to parties. They're already set up to go to the FA Cup final, uh, the Brits and all those things. Dinner parties with yeah, about it. Yeah. Meet all these people and then after a year it's taken away from them. Wow. They just take everything back. And you don't like this because you feel it cheapens, like, your celebrity lifestyle, which you've worked for. <laughs> no, but, but, um, the other thing is, uh, of course, they could be big stars by then and that they just have to get their own car. But, uh, how do they, what? That are psychologically we, is going to be grim. But are, are we going to follow it up for that year? Are we going to, is it like... Well, that's when it becomes interesting. I mean, now, camera crews following hearsay, now that's interesting. Yeah, I know, and that like, what Jay did what next, yeah, so exactly. it, when they actually, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. but I, I don't know how they're going to do it. Do you, how long, Jane, uh, Jane, why do I call you Jane? There's so many, the name Jane's been mentioned so many times. You can call me whatever you like, um, Steve. Uh, love. <laughs> 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 well, how long do you reckon Ricky would last in the Big Brother house? <laughs> <laughs> if he was in Celebrity Big Brother, how long would Ricky stay in there? <laughs> well, you see, as a- Well, it depends, you oh, see. Go no, on, you answer. One. No, because as someone who was b would be watching Big Brother if Ricky was in there, I would make sure that he stayed in right till the end, just for of comedy course. value. Well, of course, because you know he's irritating, he's a sort of- So I'm Chris but Eubank, You're the Chris Eubank of the house, but right. obviously a lot of people tend to vote out the most irritating, annoying, most loathsome person. Well, they want to get rid of me, but the public presumably yeah, the might public want me in there as- As a <laughs> irritant. You know I think the public would turn against you as well. <laughs> <laughs> I know you, Rick. Um, right, well, that's it would like expose it. you for the charlatan you are. Go uh, on. Uh, we haven't played a song for the ladies for some on. weeks because oh, yeah. I just keep forgetting to bring I one in. I need one. I need one. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I uh, I thought you know I haven't played Tom Waits for a while, and this is you know one of his classics, and it's just beautiful, beautiful tune. And, and however many times you've hear, heard it, it's still brilliant. Downtown Train, Rick. Oh, I can't believe it. Uh, we're That's back it. next week, and Carl hopefully is back with uh, us. Uh, Carl, I think will be, yeah. Um, well, we don't know, but- Let's uh, hope everything's I'm okay, sure, I'm, I'm sure it is, and, uh, we'll see him next week. Thanks, Jay. Bye, everybody.